Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this running of the Hunts Kart Racing Club Championships here at the very sunny Kimbolton. My name is Chris Sora, and I'll be taking you through the afternoon's race action, starting very shortly with the Junior Rotax, who we can see right now in the waiting zone, ready to make their way out. I am solo today because my colour commentator, as it were, Charlie Ellis, he is not here today. He is racing his Fiesta down at Brands Hatch, so uh, certainly wish Charlie the very best of luck so we'll certainly miss his insight but we'll see him back of course in june at the next round of the championship in the paddock and of course with the british championships coming up here next month at uh, right here at kim bolton a lot of drivers looking to uh, get some last minute race preparation ahead of the big events next month so certainly in the rotax we've got a lot of drivers actually three groups of drivers having three heat races drivers being split into a b and c groups Race number one is about to get underway, it's Junior Rotax, and same with the seniors, there will be an A versus B group, later on B versus C, and A versus C later on, so three heat races, this is how they're going to line up for the uh, the first race of the day, with uh, Joshua Smith from Tavia and Alvarez, Carl Poster, Ben Horner, further down the field, ones to look out for, Fletcher Jameson in there, Toby Bedford, Oliver Smith, Joel Dixon-Cohen, John Richardson, Owen Keenan, Jason Duchess and Jack Owen Drawbridge, another one to look out for as well, of course. Uh, James Philip King, Rex Ashley, John Bennett, Blake Southern, Alfie O'Brien, Toby Farthing, Ryan Rapini and George Phillips on row number 12. And as they make their final preparations, green flag is about to go out and the drivers will make their way out onto the circuit for their sighting lap. The track looking in excellent condition today, as always. A lot of hard work going into the preparation of the circuit by the Hunts Kart Racing Club. And some improvements off the track as well. We've seen such things as the uh, improvements to the paddock area and the waiting zone. There's new buildings up there just to make it a bit more organised behind the scenes as well. So they come the uh, Junior Rotax out onto the circuit now. Track looking, as we say, in excellent condition. Uh, the weather certainly blessed us today. I would say closing up on perfect conditions for racing today. Bright sunshine may cloud over a little later on according to the weather forecast, but certainly no rain forecast, so we haven't got a repeat of the wet meeting that we had in March. Totally different conditions today. And with the temperatures around about the low teens, you would say, not too warm for the carts either, so... Uh, pretty much perfect conditions for racing this morning heading on to this 32 race program here at the Hunscart Racing Club our finals of course later on this afternoon but we're about to get underway with our first race of the day Junior Rotex A versus B let's hope for a clean start they make their way over the rolling grid and it looks good here they come charging into the first corner so Joshua Smith up there taking the inside line Alvarez right there with him and will they get through cleanly they make their way through Stowe Corner looks like everyone's okay it looks to me like joshua smith has emerged as the early leader grabbing that inside line we'll wait and see as they make their way through towards derrick's corner and the dan weldon corner at the top of the circuit i think there was a spinner at the back but nothing too serious the rest of the field go charging through dan weldon corner for the first time and there we saw the number treble seven matthias jedvambi at the back of the field the leaders meanwhile charging through in towards the Kimbolta corner, final corner of the circuit, and over the line goes number 15. The cart of Joshua Smith, Alan Foster close behind Ben Horner, to be an Alvarez right in there as well as they go charging through Stowe Corner on their first full flying lap. Ben Horner then in third position, moving up a few places. Daniel Lamore, number 41, is in there as well, moving up to I believe that'll be fifth position now, and uh, charging through quite nicely. So, number 15, Joshua Smith, your race leader. Alvarez in there as well. And the number 15, Joshua Smith now making his way through the Kimbolton corner. To be an Alvarez then in second position. And through the first corner they go, so Foster there with Ben Horner close behind. Paul Dixon going starting to make inroads as well, a little bit further down the field. But uh, Joshua Smith looking good so far. There's the number 86 right in there as well, and Tobias Alvarez trying to uh, get in there with Ben Horner and Charlie Neve as they make their way down towards the Kestrel corner. 
through into the final corner they go still Joshua Smith leading the way and starting to uh, make a small gap at the front so Callum Foster still in second Ben Horner in third Alvarez need Daniel Amore, Charlie Cox in there as well, starting to make a few places. Joel Dixon Cohen, number 67, starting to make his way through the field as well. And the 29 of Owen Keenan starting to make moves as well. As you can see, the lap times we're looking in the uh, already into the high 41s. The pace very quick up there, even this opening race of the day. With Joshua Smith looking comfortable so far as he makes his way down towards the Kestrel corner once again. Although that chasing group is just starting to close the gap ever so slightly. Callum Foster, 92, Ben Horner, Alvarez, 86, Charlie Neve, Daniel Amore right in there as well as they go charging through into Stoke Corner once again. Heading towards the Willows, this sweeping chicane section where the drivers take a nice smooth line through there. And they can see the race leader in that green cut there, number 15, Joshua Smith. Danny Mitzi straight and through Derek's corner, one of the more technical parts of the circuit. Now Foster is starting to close the gap in second place. Ben Horner tagging him in there in third position. And down the TKM straight they go into Kestrel once again. And through that final corner. There's your race lead. He's led pretty much the entire race there. Joshua Smith, 69, close behind him though. Callum Foster, Ben Horner tagging him in there as well. Number 92 in third. But at the moment, I would say Joshua Smith doing a great job here of holding on to this race. We've still got just over three minutes plus the one lap remaining. So Smith down in towards Derek's corner. But all the time, Callum Foster watching his lines, looking to try and find a way to close the gap as they make their way up towards Dan Weldon corner, heading down towards the TKM straight. There's the number 92 in third place of Ben Horner. And Horner just trying to close those few tenths of a second to get him up there with the leaders as Joshua Smith comes round the final corner. Still there in second place is Callum Foster. Horner charging in third, Alvarez fourth, even fifth, Danny Lamont, Charlie Cox not too far behind in sixth. And we've got Joel Dixon Cohen continuing to move up the field, the number 67. Change Hardier, Oliver Smith, Finley Jamieson, Toby Bedford, Owen Keenan and Jack Owen Drawbridge a little bit further behind. Jason Duchess, John Rickerton and Dejuan Bennett in the midfield a little bit further down Harry Russell starting to make up some places in that mid pack as well we're focusing on the number 69 here Callum Foster as he tries to close up whole train of drivers behind him now as time running out now 2.14 on the clock plus one lap remaining so you would say these drivers second through to about seventh place looking to try and work together here there's not much racing going on here and I think the drivers just looking to drive as a train and try and close up on Joshua Smith to try and uh, make something happen in the last couple of laps of the race maybe we've got 155 plus one lap remaining at the end of the timer so still a couple more laps to go here Joshua Smith doing very well leading this whole train of drivers I'm sure he knows that there is pressure behind him and all the time look at the number 69 there Callum Foster 92 Ben Horner right on his tail not sure that Horner nor Alvarez neither more any of the chasing drivers looking to uh, get too aggressive at the moment it's all tactics I would say right now there's your race leader Joshua Smith looking good a little bit of a move there with 86 I believe that was uh, Alvarez and uh, Charlie Neve moves up to fourth position now and number 60 just trading a few places behind there all the time though Callum Foster just keeping an eye on the race leader Joshua Smith number 15 going down your Mitsu straight through Derek's corner once again 92 also there as well still there Ben Horner just having a peek down the inside not really going for a move right now and just starting to put the pressure on as they make their way down Dan Wilden corner and what's he going to do down TKM straight he's just tagging on the back of the second place 69 who we're looking at now Callum Foster Joshua Smith still your race leader as they make their way through Kim Bolton corner the final corner on the track got 40 seconds to go on the clock pretty much they cross the line so it's going to be tight now as to whether next time round will be on the uh, be the last lap I'm going to keep a close eye on the start finish line at the marshal there to see what uh, what happens technical flag further down the field for Matthias Jadvami number trouble seven He's towards the back of the field but uh, will be out of the race with a technical issue so here we go time panting down and I think it's going to be one lap to go next time round when they make their way round to the final corner of just over 10 seconds on the clock. But they've still got to get through the uh, Kim Bolton corner. That's news that if that, ha that does happen, that will suit 
Joshua Smithley. Well, here we go. And the last lap board goes out right on cue to our race leader. Smith leading, Foster second. Charlie Aven up to third now in number 60. There he is with the fluorescent helmet. Starting to uh, put pressure on Callum Foster in second. This is very good news for Joshua Smith, the race leader. As they start to fight for second place, this is just going to allow him to pull a few more tenths away. He's leading by three tenths of a second at the moment. But they, I would say right now that Callum Foster is having to work very hard to uh, deal with the advancing Charlie Even third. Here they come, back down the TKM straight for the final time. Heading through Kestrel into Kim Bolton corner. Anything happening for second place here? Oh, it's going to be tight, but up the front, Joshua Smith, number 15, takes the checker flag. Callum Foster in second, Neve in third, Ben Horn of fourth, Charlie Cox, Daniel Lamour, Toby and Alvarez, Joel Dixon going. Great drive for him into the top 10, number 67, as is Oliver Smith. Shane Chandaria, 156 from Fletcher Jameson, just on the edge of the top 10, Toby Bedford, Owen Keenan, and Jason Duch is just a little bit further behind. So, uh, close, exciting race there to kick things off. Race number one, Junior Rotax. Group A versus Group B, as we say, a big group of drivers this weekend here at Kim Bolton. Over 260 entered across the various race classes. And such is the uh, the amount of drivers that have entered that there are three heat races for the Junior and Senior Rotax, respectively. Senior Rotax, as you can see, in association with Innsby Plant Hire, who once again have done a great job of sweeping the marbles and the debris off the track ahead of this race meeting. So, as with all of our sponsors, thank you to Innsby Plant Hire for their continued support. Senior Rotax, Group A and B, about to make their way onto the track. There will be, of course, later on the repercharge races for the drivers who fail to uh, make their way through to the A final. They will get a second opportunity to try and qualify for that all important A final later on today. Some of the drivers to look out for Guy Connington leading them away from Philip Ross and Ethan Martin, Pearson Bullock Carter, George Donald in there as well. Michael Morgan, Ralph Younglin back on the track as well, fifth on the uh, fifth row. Alexander, Adam Zachton, George Allen, Harry Wall, Peter Jurovich, Reese Lomax further down from Samuel Cornwell, Jack Spencer, Sean Rashid. And the likes of Noah Ospal and Elliot Pugh down there as well on row number 12. Of course, the drivers will start on various points on the grid during the, uh, during the heat races. The drivers towards the sharp end, of course, looking to qualify directly into the A-finals later on this afternoon. But for those who miss out in both the junior and senior Rotax classes, there will be the, uh, the repercharge charge races later on today as well. Uh, with those repercharge charge races, the top four from those heats will qualify for the final. And as we saw in the previous rounds, they will be a uh, very important race to get on with. But right now, we're going to focus our attentions on race number two. It's the senior Rotax groups A and B out on the course right now and we just saw uh, club secretary Jamie Rowe there keeping a close eye on things as the drivers very slowly make their way around Dan Wilden corner forming into line now and uh, let's hope for another good clean start look at this they are going to burst into action now a very tactical start from Guy Connington and Philip Rawson as they charge down drivers just about keeping on the track limits there's a little bit of smoke flying into the first corner but they ooh, just about squeeze through okay looks like Connington's got the jump on the field from Philip Rawson Ethan Martin Pearson Bullock Carter in there as well good clean start as they make their way through Derek's corner for the first time our senior Rotax making their way up towards the top corner now to Dan Wielden and through they go nice clean start there they um, very slowly made their way off the grid, it was an explosive start, you would say. And here they come through the Kimbolton corner for the first time on this flying lap. So Guy Cunnington leads. Great start from Charlie Webb in second place. Philip Rawson drops to third momentarily, but hanging on in there as well. We've got to Ethan Martin Pearson, Bullock Carter. To look a little bit further down. Bit of an incident towards the back of the field there. I think that was the number 133. Lucas Theo and uh, Noah Osbaldiston. And out of camera shot as well, number 35, sit trouble as well in the midfield. Machet um, Borovia spinning towards the back of the field. There's a warning flag out there as well for the uh, 18 of Alexander Adams Acton, so being warned by the marshals. There's the number 33 of Borovia getting back on track after spinning out as the leaders go charging over the line once again. And a notable driver out of the race right now is Ralph Youngling who would certainly be one to look out for as the day goes on. British driver with a German father. 
And you may have guessed with the name there, named after Ralph Schumacher. But to Youngling looking very good in the earlier rounds back in January, making a guest appearance here once again. But uh, apparently out of the race, so uh, he'll have some work to do later on. Later on, meanwhile, Guy Connington looking very good as we've got a stranded driver on the infield there. Just trying to get the number on that one, maybe number 51. Theo Stanislas, who was in 23rd in the midfield, getting some assistance from the marshal. As you can see, the uh, wave yellows, the orange iron, be doing a great job. As Guy Cunnington continues to control this race at the front of the field. And that, uh, that stranded driver was indeed the number 51 of Theo Stanislaus. The uh, driver appears to be okay. Gone down to the infield where the leaders are going through right now, actually. So it's still Guy Cunnington leading the way, but look out for number 24 there. The machine of Charlie Webb as they go charging down the TKM straight. Just starting to put the pressure on Cunnington a little bit. Philip Rawson hanging on in there in third place. Pearson Bullock Carter right in there in fourth as they go over the line. Lucas Ellingham, Ethan Martin right in there as well. George Allen starts to make moves as well as is uh, Peter Jurovic, Harry Bloor and Liam Hartley just on the edge of the top ten making their way through the field. Reese Lomax on the uh, 157 also on the move up to 15th place. And a little bit further down in the midfield the number 20 of Alfie Bushell is doing very well also making up six positions up into the top 20. As we look a little bit further down at that midfield scrap, meanwhile back to number 19 there, Philip Rawson in third place, keeping the pressure on Charlie Webb, who's had a good strong start to this race. As we look at some of our midfielders still making their way through the Dan Weldon corner, there's the number 62 in there. Max McGilvery currently in 21st place, battling with Alfie Bushell and Elliot Pugh right in there also. Meanwhile Guy Cunnington, this race turning out a little bit similar to the junior Rotax, I would say. The leader grabbing the lead early on. Managing to establish a small gap at the front. Cunnington currently leading the race by six tenths of a second. With the charging pack just doing all they can to keep pace with the leader. Still number 24 of Charlie Webb in third place. Philip Rawson still chasing. And then we've got Pearson bullock Carter, who's remained in fourth place in this race. Ethan Martin just behind number 55, dropping a couple of positions. With Lucas Ellingham and Ewan Richards keeping the pressure on in 6th and 7th respectively, leaders over the line once again, the race drawing to its final few laps now, just under 3 minutes plus the 1 lap remaining, as the drivers on the edge of the top 10 make their way through, there's Alexander Allen, Adam Zachman was going through that, Ethan Martin, Reese Lomax, Michael Morgan, and we seem to have lost uh, Ewan Richards from this race, the number 29, who was in the midfield there, just looking to see if he's still in the race, I think he's stranded up at the Dan Weldon corner, the leaders coming up to wave yellow flags right now, they all go to, well, you see the stage in the yellow now, the cart has been taken off the track, so it shouldn't affect the racing too much. That was the uh, 29 of Ewan Richards, who is in trouble up at the Dan Weldon corner. Driver OK and out of the cart, but looks like his race is over. That won't bother Guy Connington, though, the race leader, who charges through to complete another lap. Two minutes, ten on the clock, plus one lap remaining, so uh, around three more laps to go. Charlie Webb in second, Philip Rawson still chasing. Pearson, Bullock, Carter, Luke Sellingham and George Donald. So it's still pretty much as you were with the leading group. As the drivers are a little bit further down on the edge of the top 20 making their way through. I think we were looking there. Max McGilvray, Alfie Bushell still moving through the field. Uh, Samuel Cornwall, 168, currently in 18th position. Sean Rashid and Ryan Hedge just a little bit ahead in 16th position. Leaders, meanwhile, making their way through the... Kim Bolton corner as the mid-pack still charging through. There's the 204 in your inset there. It's James Henson currently in 23rd place. So that midfield group just making their way down towards the uh, Kestrel corner. The leaders, meanwhile, already making their way through the, uh, the Willows onto the Mitsu Strait. Well, I have just seen on the um, on the race control, there's a warning flag out as a driver under investigation is the number 99 just at the edge of this little group here. That's the machine of Lucas Ellingham. So, uh, something happening up there that the, uh, the race stewards may want to take a look at. Leaders now making their way through the Kimbolton corner once again. Our midfield is still charging in that close battle on the edge of the top ten going through the uh, Dan Weldon corner right now. There we just saw the uh, like 35 of um, Achet Bavoriak, who's making his way through the field up to 24 after that trouble at the start of the race. Guy Cunnington, meanwhile, leading the race as they make their way through towards the uh, Derrick's corner. And there is our chasing group, Charlie Webb, Philip Rawson, Pearson, Bullock Carter, that midfield strap. Still charging away, Cassius Gep, James Henson, 
Thanks to Gobe, Elliot Pugh all fighting in the, uh, the midfield positions. So on the clock now, we have 15 seconds. I think they're going to squeeze through just before the last lap board goes out. So there we go. We're going to go effectively now for another lap. So the seniors just a few seconds quicker than the juniors at this stage. Judging by the lap charts there, they've just about managed to get through before the, uh, the clock goes to zero. And even if it's two or three seconds, they'll still go through and complete another lap. So uh, a bit more work to do here for Guy Cunnington, 52, your race leader. Charlie Webb hanging in there, still in second place. Pearson Bullock Carter, number nine, the driver you're looking at now, has now moved up to third place, getting past Philip Rawson, who started second, dropped to fourth, but still running, uh, still running well there. There's the 157 in the midfield. Just looking further down, that's 12th place, Reese Lomax, who's been slowly but surely making his way through a few positions. Now we're on to the final lap as number 52, Guy Cunnington, Controlled the race well at the start and has pulled the gap to 1.4 seconds right now. So on this final lap, he's just got to keep it together. There is a slower driver ahead of him, but shouldn't really affect him on this final half lap. At the moment, the battle seems to be on for second place, though, with Charlie Webb. He's had a good steady race, making his way through to second place. We've still got work here as Pearson Bullock Carter keeping that pressure on, going into the final lap as they make their way down TKM straight for the final time. There's Cunnington. And down into Kim Bolton Corn he goes. Has a quick glance over the shoulder, he knows he's got this race under control. And Guy Cunnington takes the first senior Rotax seat race. Charged the line for second place, but it's going to be Charlie Webb from Bullock Carter, Rawson. Ellingham in fifth place, but is under investigation. George Donald, George Allen, Harry Bohr, Alexander Adams Acton, and Peter Jurovic rounding out the top ten. Liam Hartley and Reese Lomax both having great races there, making it for a few more positions. Trouble for Ethan Martin has to settle for 13th, dropped a few places partway through the race. And there is the number 35 there. Asiet Bavoriak, who in the end got through to 22nd position after having to uh, fight his way from the back of the field, so a good comeback for him. And all those points will matter as they look to get through to the all-important A final later on this afternoon. Race number three is about to get underway as we uh, cut back to the number 29. And that was Ewan Richards. And he was up at the uh, Dan Weldon corner. As you can see, driver OK. But uh, the long march back to the paddock, that's pretty much about the worst place you can break down or hit trouble, I would say, Dan Weldon corner. It's going to take quite a while to get the cart back to the paddock, but he's got a bit of time before he's out later on. The second group of races later on, of course, we've got uh, the B and C groups also in action later on today. The driver's waiting in the waiting zone right now for race number three is the Honda 200s and just cutting back to of course these drivers three rounds into the championship right now and the Honda 200s still uh, fairly nicely poised you would say when you look at some of the drivers towards the front of the field uh, leading the championship right now is the number 50 of Kevin Ivanov who's been on top form 292 points after three rounds Riley Blakemore in second not too far behind on 271 and the driver who was in top form last time Bo Winslade moving up to uh, third in the championship on 255 points and Winslade you may remember in that wet mating in March won this Honda class and it wasn't just winning the class that was impressive it was the, the lines he was finding out there he was making that cart do things that other drivers were struggling with so uh, We'll see how Winslay gets on in the dry conditions. But uh, then we've got Jack Paul, Bracama, Theo Hamilton, Elliot Bork, uh, Soy Henderson, Jackson Heath, Ollie Knox, uh, Jerry, and Reggie Duffersey, who debuted in March as well, making up the 11 drivers in the championship so far. And as we wait now for the number 29, the unfortunate Ewan Richards this is not how he wanted his day to go. We've got the cart on the trolley now. The, uh, the grass at least is a bit drier, so they can get the cart down towards the central part of the track. Give you a little wave, and that's where I am. Right above the start-finish line. Nice and warm up here in the commentary booth today, I would say. It's, um, let me say, about 13 degrees on the track. Still, as you can see with the marshals, I think coats are the uh, order of the day. But he's going to have a bit of work to uh, get that cart back to the paddock. Like I say, it's uh, the... Uh, Dan Weldon corner, not really where you want to be breaking down. It's a long drudge back to the paddock, so uh, we'll certainly see him later on today as the Honda 200s make their way out onto the circuit. 
And once again, much like the uh, much like the Rotax Classic, good entry of drivers here. We'll have a look at how they line up. Riley Blakemore from Ralphie Branscombe, Ryan White, Elliot Bork, Kevin Ivanoff, Theo Hamilton, Majiris Kovecis, and Jack Bulbrakama, Ollie Knox, Soy Henderson, Otto Amy, Jackson Heath, Aurora Joel, Bo Winsley, George Johnston, and Jerry Duffersey on row number eight. Rebecca Restall, Reggie Duffersey, and William Davidson making up the ten rows of drivers. This must be, I think, our biggest entry for the Honda 200 class this season. Drivers can get the all-important experience in this third round of the championship. Brought to you in association with iZone Driver Performance. We've had a wave round here, so uh, very early that start was called off, and they're going to go around once again. So the grid not really in position there, one would say, and they'll have another lap here just to uh, get the tyres warmed up. Headed by uh, Riley Blakemore with Ralphie Branscombe alongside. So let's hope for a clean start this time round. This is the first of uh, two heat races for the Honda 200s, and they'll have their final race 24 later on today. And here they come up to Dan Weldon corner. 68, Riley Blakemore on the inside. Branscombe alongside White and uh, Borg Kevin Ivanoff, Theo Hamilton a bit further behind as well. So we've got some uh, some of the championship front runners starting in the midfield in this first heat race, which uh, could make things interesting. Seven minutes plus one lap. So the first few laps, very important indeed. Coming up next after this race, we have the KZ UK, the shifter carts, and a guest class for this fourth round of the championship, the 210 challenge with the old Villiers. Air-cooled two-stroke machines. We're looking forward to that one a little bit later on. But our focus now on the Honda 200s. They look a bit more in position this time. It's a clean start, and away they go. Everyone charging down the inside to guard that inside line into the first corner, but sneaking down there looked like... Uh, I think it was Riley Blakemore got a good jump through the first corner. Very close, though. I think it looks like Ralphie Branscombe has held on, though, making the uh, repass there going through the willows. They make their way down into Derek's corner for the first time very close at the front here as again we see Branscombe and Blakemore fighting for the lead there's number 14 getting in there as well Elliot Bork great move for him up to second place as they make their way through Dan Weldon corner down the TKM straight for the first time all very close here at the start of this one and it's still the number zero I would always say it's a commentator's dream when these drivers have bright day glow helmets. It really stands out. That's the uh, number zero of Ralphie Branscombe there. The race leader just waving those other drivers on. They're looking to maybe he wants to try and work together a bit here. As they all set themselves down in position. So it's Branscombe from Bork. Good start there. Elliot Bork there. Ryan White, Kevin Ivanoff up to fourth place from Riley Blakemore who lost a few positions at the start there. Drops down to fifth place. Theo Hamilton. Dovichis, Fulbrakar. Now, Ralphie Branscombe, the race leader under investigation, according to the uh, the race control. Not too sure what that's about, but uh, maybe we were banging and buffing on the first lap, possibly. But we'll look at that as the uh, the race goes on. Soy Henderson, Otto Amy, Bo Winslade up to 12th position. Aurora Joel, Jackson Heath, and Rebecca Restall making a good start to the race up a couple of places. Jerry Duffersey, George Johnson, William Davidson, and Reggie Duffersey rounding up the field as they make their way over the line. Good clean start to the race here. Well, let me say the race leader, according to our uh, live timing, is under investigation. Not too sure what that's about, but um, we'll see if anything happens as the race goes on. But uh, moving up now is Elliot Bork into the lead, number 14. And it's looking close at the front here. So Bork leading and on the move here now is the number 50, the series leader Kevin Ivanoff, right behind the number one of Ryan White. They make their way down the TKM straight heading towards Kestrel corner and it's still the machine number 14 Elliot Bork that leads the way it looks to me like Ivanov has secured second place here looks like he's made the move stick yes he has so Ivanov up to second right on his tail is Ryan White Rafi Branscombe drops to fourth now with the pink helmet but still hanging in there and Theo Hamilton in fifth from Riley Blakemore has also dropped a few places there number 68 currently in sixth position but hanging on in there with number 15 here is Kovacic right behind, Jack Bulbakama, Oli Knox and Aurora Joel. Uh, there is a warning flag then for Ralphie Branscombe. The, uh, you may see it on the track, so usually it's on the digital board nowadays, but the black and white diagonal flag, so indicating that the driving standard's not up to scratch, maybe a bit of bumping out there. 
Just a warning though for the time being. So number 12 they're going through there, Jerry Duffersey, one of our newcomers last time out. A little bit further down, currently in 16th place but still running well at the back of the field. It's all very close at the front here as they make their way down towards Stowe Corner. Still ball clean, but is uh, Kevin Ivanov going to have a look in second? Not quite yet, so of course the two teammates. Oh, a little bit of a nudge there. It's getting tight at the front. And they are lying a stir now. They don't want to be hitting too hard to damage those nose cones, you would say, but uh, very close bit of banging and buffing there at the front. Oh, look at this, three abreast through Derek's uh, corner. The... Uh, Oh, it's getting tight here, but Ivanov's got the line. This is getting very close. Oh, and uh, forced wide there. I think that was Elliot Borg. Forced onto the grass, recovers and loses a few positions, but he won't be too happy about that one. It's getting uh, very tight out there. Quite a bit of banging at the front. So the marshal's keeping a close eye on this one. I think we might be seeing a few uh, warning flags going up. There is another one for Amy Otto down in the midfield. Um, Otto currently in 10th position. I don't know what the stewards are going to uh, the marshals are going to make of that a previous lap there. It was a little bit tight out there and uh, quite a few drives at the front trading paint right now. But uh, Kevin Ivanov, number 50, now emerges as the race leader. But having a look in second place, the number one of Ryan White. It's all very close, number 13 up to third position now, Theo Hamilton. And still hanging on in there in fourth position is the number zero of Ralphie Branscombe. And Branscombe could very much still be a part. Let's have a look at the replay on this uh, previous lap here. You'll see coming down the straight and There in the, the midfield there was the bump that uh, knocked Elliot Bork back when he tried to rejoin the track fighting with uh, it was Jack Paul Rakama. Oh, and uh, over the line they go. They're not still leading. Although now it's the uh, number one of Ryan White. Uh, just uh, distracted momentarily at the, um, the race control. And have been told there's a black flag for the number zero of Ralphie Branscombe. So whether it was related to that incident with Elliot Bork, maybe, but the driver in fourth place has unfortunately received a black flag. So Ralphie Branscombe will be out of the race. He'll receive that when he goes over the line next time round. We're looking in the midfield there. That's the 21. Currently in 10th place, Ollie Knox with uh, Amy Otto, Jackson Heath and Bo Winslade in there as well. There's the 28 of Bo Winslade. The driver, you would say, is the uh, the Regenmeister of the Kimbolt Circuit from last time out. There's the number four hand up and uh, a little bit of a oh, why me sort of thing as well. He's out of the race, so uh, Ralphie Branscombe, as you can imagine, not happy with that black flag decision, but uh, leaves the track and sadly for him is out of the race. So that changed things now. It's a three-way tussle for the lead and it's still the number one of Ryan White leading the way, but it's tight for second place been a very close race and uh, well like we say we lost Branscombe sadly but still this one wide open as we look at the number one guard in the inside line there of Ryan White still that midfield tussle there on the edge of the top tempting Nolly Knox Otto Amy, uh, Amy Otto uh, so Otto Amy Jackson Heath and Bo Winslade so Ollie Knox now we just saw the 77 of Otto Amy fighting and we'll get into the top 10 of course now that we've lost uh, Ralphie Branscombe Drivers making their way down towards the Stoke corner now with two laps remaining, including the one that they are on. And Kevin Ivanov back into the lead right now, but oh, right on cue, Ryan White is there again. And look at this, the drivers behind now, Kovic is Blake Moore-Bork, Barbara Karma, all being dragged into this fight here. They're training paint at the front. And all this is doing now is drawing the rest of the carts in. So we have got one more lap to go at the end of this one. And we could be in for a very close finish here. Ryan White is driving defensively at the front now. Here they come down towards Kimbolton Corner for the final time. We've got seven drivers in here now in this group at the front. And as they go out to the final corner, now it's the last lap. Here they come over the line. It's going to be a drag race. Look at this, two abreast, three abreast almost coming into Stoke Corner. And uh, Kevin Ivanov getting his elbows out there and taking the lead. So Ivanov leads. Still White in second place, and having a look now, number 30, Theo Hamilton, as they make their way into Derek's corner. Hamilton into second place, number 30. And uh, what can he do? Right, Ryan White is fighting back here. But no, it looks like Hamilton's made the move stick. That has allowed Ivanov to pull away ever so slightly. That could be all that matters as they make their way down towards TKM straight for the final time. Still that midfield tussle there with Knox, Amy, Heath, Winslade all in there. But the leaders now making their way into the final corner. 
And Kevin Ivanov out to the final corner he goes in what's been a very close Honda 200 heat race. Takes the chequered flag. Hamilton second, White in third, Blakemore fourth from Bork. Kovacic in sixth position, Paul Bacama. And that fight on the edge of the top ten. There they go. It's uh, Ollie Knox, Otto Amy, Jackson Heath, Bo Winslade 11. Rebecca Restall up to 12 from George Johnston. Soy Henderson. Jerry Duffy over the line, Aurora Joel, William Davidson, and we wait for the 24 of Reggie Duffy in 18th position. Over the line goes Reggie. And what well, are the two Duffy's there? Newcomers toward in the previous round. They've just been uh, getting experience and starting to get a bit more up to pace right now. So uh, good to see them back out in, uh, in action once again. So the Honda 200s. Oh, that was a uh, tough start to the day there. Some close racing. And we'll look forward to the end later on in the second heat. But we move on now to the uh, back to the two strokes and the shifter carts, the KZ UKs. When we've seen some fantastic racing in the previous couple of rounds. And they'll be out on track in just a few moments. Uh, you, uh, you may remember that they run a different circuit layout. The, the Marshalls currently moving the tie barriers and they, uh, they cut out the Derrick's corner basically. They run straight down to the Dan Weldon corner at the top of the circuit and the other difference of course being that these drivers also have a standing start so uh, KZUK is out on the track right now and they'll be out on the course in just a few moments time I think the course is now clear they're just uh, making sure it's ready for racing the green flag is up and the drivers should be out on track in just a few moments time and there we see right on cue, the driver's now out onto the course in these wonderful conditions here at Kimbolton. Complete contrast to the previous round in March where it was uh, battling with the rain showers. It was quite wet and slippery at times, although the driver's still uh, carrying a lot of pace out there. So here we go with Ryan Green from Bo Phillips, Josh Price, Ella Stevens, Miles Murphy, Hannah Lang on row number three from Richard Palmer and Nat Thomas on the fourth row of the grid. Daniel Chabula, Jake Weston, Ryan Garvey, Sam Ward, Bradley Calder and Sam Johns on row 7, Amy Joga and Isaac Smith, row number 8, Sylvanus Klimas, James Harvey, Edgaris, Musevicius, Jason Baker, Timotaitias and Jake Baker rounding up the field. So they're going to go for another warm-up lap, of course, the uh, more powerful machines here. A bit more time to get some temperature into the brakes and the tyres to get a good clean start. And unlike the other classes, they do also have a standing start as well. So another formation lap for the KZUKs as they make their way through. Shout out for uh, James Henson, of course. Uh, solid finish and better luck next time from one of our YouTube viewers. Don't forget, of course, to tune in throughout the afternoon here on TNL Sports for all of the action here at the fourth round at the Hunts Cart Racing Club Championships here at Kim Bolton. So... Uh, Flags out on the start line as the drivers slow down. And we will see the standing start. So one or two drivers just doing a little practice start there. Out of camera shot, just in the infield. One driver, I think, has hit some trouble. Just trying to get the number for you. But it is out of shot. I believe it's the number 17 of, I think it's Richard Palmer, looking at the number boards. There, it is quite a distance away, so I can't tell you for definite. We'll confirm that on the lap charts in a few moments when the race gets underway. But I believe Richard Palmer, number 17, is a non-starter. Helmet is off in the infield and uh, obviously hits some kind of uh, mechanical trouble. The race goes on, though, as the last few drivers make their way into position. The uh, Got a bit of trouble here, though, with getting the drivers in the correct position. I think at least one driver's lost the engine as well. This is all going to add to the tension on the uh, on the front row here with number 97 at the front there. Oh, we're going to go around again. It's a bit of a mess down there. So uh, I think number 32 has lost the engine on the grid there, Ryan Garvey. But uh, a little bit further back in the field, there was a bit of uh, trouble. And there we see number 80 just trying to help out, I think, the, uh, the car to... Zimatitis there is just going to give 32 a bit of a bump start and there we go, a bit of uh, good comradeship there between those two drivers. So Ryan Garvey 
easiest way to get back underway, give a bit of a bump start and we'll get back underway. So we are back on another formation lap there, a bit of a messy grid there, of course we did lose one cart on the formation lap, so that just uh, shuffled things up possibly. There's the number 96, Jake Baker, making his way down the TKM straight as the front runners just start to line up on the grid once again. Much like any other form of motorsport with a standing grid start, those uh, leading drivers don't want to be on the uh, stationary for too long. Not overly hot today, but even so, it's just going to add to the temperatures on the carts and add to the tension at the front of the grid. So further down there, we see the, the grid marshals just making sure the driver's in the correct position. There's the 26 of James Harvey on your inset there, a little bit further down the field, taking his place on the grid. And there you'll see in the, uh, the main part, well you can see on both cameras there, the, uh, the grid marshal just making sure the drivers are now in the correct position. There's number nine of uh, Sam Ward taking position. Sam Johns, one, two, seven down there as well. The number 33, Zulvinas Klimas there. And 26, James Harvey taking his spot on the grid. The last couple of drivers towards the back there just getting into position and I think we're good to go. So the first heat race for the KZU car. UK Karts is about to get underway, Revs rising and away they go. Good start from Bo Phillips, number 18 on the outside. But can he make it stick? It looks like Green's got the line into the corner. They pile through that first corner. Oh, dicing away as they make their way through for the first time. Here they come. Danny Mitsu straight, wheel to wheel at the front there as Josh Price gets his way through into the lead. Bo Phillips in second, looks like Ryan Green lost out a bit there, going down to third. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel action at the front here, but it's uh, good clean racing. Everyone's staying on track in these early stages, they pile through Kim Bolton corner for the first time, and here they come over the line, and into the lead now goes Bo Phillips. Josh Price on his tail in second place, Ryan Green in third, Murphy fourth, Ella Stevens, Nat Thomas, Hannah Lang, Jake Weston, Sam Ward, and Daniel Chibula rounding up the top ten at the end of this first lap. Look at the pace though of these KZU K carts as they make their way down the Imitsu straight right through into Dan Weldon corner. There's the number four of Miles Murphy with the very distinctive Demon Tweaks overalls on there, the, uh, the famous Wrexham based rallying and motorsport provider. Really a mainstay on the club and motorsport scene in the UK. And you can't miss that livery when it's going around the track. Midfield a bit further down there, the drivers towards the back of the field there, Jake Baker, Jason Baker, Lilius Zimmer-Titus at the back there, as well as a warning flag further back for Miles Murphy, number four, coming up to third place now, but uh, just getting a warning flag on that first lap, but the duel for the lead here, oh, nice line out of Dan Weldon corner there from Josh Price, trying to make a move, but Phillips has got the line into the corner, as the drivers further back go charging through Dan Weldon corner, we just saw Jason Baker there at the back of the field, fighting for the minor positions but over the line go the leaders and it's tight into the first corner oh having a peek down the inside there is Miles Murphy fastest lap of the race for Nat Thomas number 70 just behind currently in fifth place as they fight for the lead so Thomas will be looking to try and get involved in this one as well but look at the number four here Miles Murphy having a real look there at number two Josh Price this is not going to bother the race leader of course Bo Phillips Phillips now into Kimbolt corner. Four-way tussle for the lead here. And Josh Price gets a nice drive out of the final corner. Coming down towards Heinz straight into the first corner they go. Got wave yellows. There's a stricken driver. Uh, number 19 out of the race there. That's uh, Bradley Calder. And I think another driver just out of shot on the first corner out of the race as well. Possibly, uh, I think it's Ryan Green actually. Just trying to see the car, so I think it's Ryan Green that's out of the race, so after starting at the front of the grid, disastrous first race for the number 97, and Bradley called the number 19 in the middle of the track also out of the race, it was the number 17 of uh, Richard Palmer that uh, failed to start the race, the car breaking down on the formation lap, so trouble for quite a few drivers in this race, well a tussle for the lead here, oh nice move there from Josh Price to grab the lead, almost looked like... Uh, Miles Murphy is going to follow in there, but Bo Phillips shuts the door, takes that racing line back. That allows Nat Thomas into third. You can immediately see Thomas gesticulating to the number four of Miles Murphy just to work together here. 
as there's still four drivers in contention for the lead but Josh Price who has been threatening for the last couple of laps has now taken the lead here they come over the line drivers towards the edge of the top ten making their way through there Hannah Lang, Sam Johns, Jake Weston, Ella Stevens up to ninth position and Ella Stevens notably number five actually setting the fastest lap of the race the ninth place driver and setting a 35.89 just demonstrates the speed of these carts around this Kimbolt circuit some very uh, quick lap times out there so Price still leading just a small gap between second and third as the pressure now on with Miles Murphy and Murphy having a look this could allow number 70 Nat Thomas into it though as the leaders go charging over the line still that fight on the edge of the top 10 the likes of Weston Stevens Chibula Ella Stevens up to 8th place now courtesy of that fastest lap and Josh Price, number two, continues to hold on to the lead. Now up to second place is Miles Murphy, who has looked threatening in the early stage of the race. Now clear in second as the fight develops to third. Through the Birrell Cup there, the uh, number 17, Nat Thomas, keeping the pressure on Bo Phillips. And there, a little bit further back there, we see the number 33, Zalvinas Klimas, and number 27 having their own battle there, Amy Jurga, currently in 13th position leaders over the line once again uh, looking at the clock two minutes plus one lap to go so there's still a few more laps to go in this race a warning flag going out for the fifth place driver number 17 Nat Thomas up towards the top of the circuit they go Price still leading Murphy second Phillips Ward Thomas Lang in sixth position a little bit further behind there's the number nine of Sam Ward starting to put the pressure now on uh, Nat Thomas and Sam Ward on the move here making up eight positions up to fourth place again we see the number 33 a little bit further down there in that midfield tussle Plymouth there with Amy Jurger and Ryan Garvey so Josh Price continues to lead the way Miles Murphy in second under investigation so there will be a penalty for the second place driver possibly but uh, here they come up towards the top corner Bo Phillips Matt Thomas and Sam Ward third, fourth and fifth respectively at the moment it's turning into a fight now between Josh Price and Miles Murphy as they make their way down towards the Kimbolt corner once again. Slowest part of the track and back onto the power. Charging down the hind straight. Oh, trouble further back there as number 70 gets uh, punted off there. Nat Thomas in that fight with uh, Sam Ward and the line. And well, that's race over for the number 70 of Nat Thomas. Cart, engine's gone and they're going to have to have to push the cart away the race goes on as we look at the number 70 in the inset there everyone else charging through Xavius James Hardy going through Nat Thomas and stop the cart try to get the cart off the track as we look at the midfield scrap here they come around the uh, Kim Bolton corner Nat Thomas still there Managed to get the cart off the circuit, at least there is a wave yellow conditions right now. So Josh Price leading, Miles Murphy, Sam Ward and Hannah Lang now up to fourth position. That's the unfortunate Matt Thomas, who looked strong at the start of the race, but is out of contention. Villiers Semititis out of the race as well. We saw Ryan Green and Bradley Calder fall out of contention earlier on. But Josh Price continues to lead the way. Miles Murphy still in second. Sam Ward and Hannah Lang charging in third and fourth respectively. Still the way the yellow's on the final corner, that cart in a prone position, so the marshals getting that cart away from the track, and we should be under a clear track as we go through to the last lap of the race, and it's still Josh Price that leads. Miles Murphy charging away in second place, but can't really do too much right now. And these two really clear now for the rest of the field. It's Sam Ward up to third position, but three seconds down. Hannah Lang and the charging Ella Stevens, another fastest lap of the race for Stevens, 35.39, the pace continuing to pick up as the race goes on, but here we come into the final two corners, Josh Price, in what's been a very tight race at times, comes out of the final corner and over the line to take the chequered flag, so Price wins, Murphy in second, then there's a gap, and it's going to be Sam Ward, Ella Stevens, Hannah Lang, Bo Phillips in sixth position, Sam Johns, Jake Weston, Daniel Chabula and Ryan Garvey rounding out the top ten.
Peter as you wait for the KZ carts to make their way out onto the track. One or two of the uh, retirements from that. Um, so the two tens, of course, coming next. So the KZ's uh, retirements making their way back to the paddock. There's Bradley Calder, another one who hit trouble by Dan Weldon Corner. And there's the unfortunate Nat Thomas, number 70, that cart out of the race after that tussle on the Convolton Corner. And Thomas, as you can imagine, looking a little bit disappointed. Certainly not how he would have wanted the race to go, but uh, that's racing, unfortunately. And Thomas will certainly be looking to, uh, to regroup and look for a better performance, uh, less trouble next time out. Because he was looking strong towards the front of the field, setting some uh, good lap times earlier in the race. But all the work now down in the paddock to get that cart fit and ready for the second heat race later on today. Uh, we've got a new class coming up here for 2024. The first time this season that we welcome the 210 Challenge to, uh, to Kim Bolton. And... I can only say it's a shame we don't have smell -a vision on these cameras because if you were down there trackside, you'll smell some of the, uh, the Castrol R. Uh, if you know, you know. Well, that smells like. Here they are. And you can see the, uh, the Phoenix in the air. These are all air-cooled two-stroke machines. Billy is a very old uh, engine manufacturer. And this is a little bit different, you might say, because uh, a lot of the drivers, uh, we see the likes of the Rotex classes, the youngsters coming through the field. Uh, a lot of those drivers in karting to maybe try and get somewhere else later in their motorsport career. The, uh, the likes of, of course, the ultimate dream for many of them being Formula One, of course, or into, uh, into motorsport. These guys very much into karting for its own sake, you might say. Ray Sloan will lead them away from John Hutton, Chris Callaghan, Michael Owen, Russell Hopes, William Shelley. A bit further down, Tony Berry, Paul Fowler, Mark Shepard, Thomas Stone, Dan Berry, Stuart Henry... Lionel Seifley and Robert Perkins on row number eight. The final two drivers being Anthony Cox and Oliver Shelley. Going to have another lap round onto the circuit. Here they go. So this is the, uh, the Villiers E-Series engine, which in its original form dates all the way back to the late 1950s. So this is a, uh, a very old power plant. And one of the early proponents, you'd say, of karting. Uh, it's... Uh, in its uh, original format, the sort of engine looking about nine and a half horsepower, now looking towards uh, the faster carts. This one, close to 40, so they really do get some uh, some power out of those old air-cooled two-stroke engines. Uh, Lionel Cyclist has won the challenge for the last four years, and Tom Stone, the Orange Peril. There he is, number two, one of the rising stars, really making a name for himself in this class. And others to look out for, including Dan Berry, Rob Perkins, and Chris Callaghan coming back to the challenge after a break of a few years. This certainly is uh, a throwback, you might say, to some of the uh, formative years of karting with this power plant. And we're looking forward to seeing the 210 challenge out here today. Like the KZUKs, it will have a standing start. Uh, talking in the paddock earlier on. Sometimes with the, uh, the historic carts, there might be a little bit of a sweepstake going on to determine how many will finish the race. Uh, a lot of these carts, dated technology, as with any form of historic motorsport, there's a, uh, some of the older carts out there, some pretty old hardware out there for some of the competitors. And it's a case of keeping them up to date and tip-top maintained going. So there we see the number three there. Robert Perkins, Lionel Seifleet, certainly the, uh, one of the drivers to sit look out for in this one Perkins looking very good actually in the, the morning warm ups and there you see the premix rising away they go 32 and 36 side by side driver left on the line number 10 Mark Shepard couldn't get away but the race goes on they charge through the first corner and it looks like John Hutton 32 getting a good start there's the number 10 they're going to try and get that car pushed away yes he's got it going Get a bump start there, but uh, at the back of the field, Mark Shepard gets away, so we've got a clear racetrack as they make their way up to the Dan Weldon corner for the first time. There's the number 32, John Hutton in there, number three, who looks strong in the morning warm. So Robert Perkins making his way through the field. But a fantastic start there for the number 32 of John Hutton. Bit of trouble further back, going into the Kestrel corner, but the race goes on. One or two drivers hitting trouble. We'll pick those up on the lap charts in a few moments, but as they go through... Well, it's Chris Callaghan, my apologies, at Leeds, number 30, there he is. So far heavy, you couldn't quite catch him there, there he goes, the race leader, number 30. Callaghan looking very strong at the front of the field, there's the trouble at the back, 44 in there. 
Anthony Cox and the number seven of Tony Berry I think has picked up a bit of damage now just wouldn't see who else I think it was Ray Sloan the other driver caught up in the melee as well number 41 there Russell Hopes the whole gaggle of drivers behind him there's the uh, the drive to look out for there Lionel Seifert number one Robert Perkins right with him the trouble towards the back of the field a few drivers going out in that incident on the first corner in the first lap nothing too serious there's the number 41 the third place driver of Russell Hopes over the line they go so Hopes we're down the inside nice move there from Lionel Seifleet so Seifleet already up to second place Chris Gallagher though is let's have a look five seconds down the road according to the lap charts as they make their way down the Yamitsu straight there's the new second place driver and the, the one who was very much billed as the pre-event favourite, the champion number one, Lionel Seifley, making his way down the TKM straight, lapping the number 44, Anthony Cox, the driver's caught up in that melee on the first court, on the first lap. Callaghan already well clear, over the line he goes, so Callaghan, the race leader. Seifley's up to second, and the gap goes down to 3.75 seconds now. The fastest lap of the race, 41.53 right now. There's your race leader. Setting a very cool pace out there, number 30, Chris Callan down the Yamitsu straight. And like the KZ UK carts, all the way up to Dan Weldon corner. Callan looking good at the front and already well clear in second is Lionel Seifley. There's the third place driver who's fought through the field well, number three, Robert Perkins. And just hanging in there in fourth, number 41, Russell Hopes. And we just saw the stricken cart of Ray Sloan at the side there. Crashing out on the first lap, Tony Berry. Both drivers are okay, but um, out of the race. So Callaghan leads and Seifleet in second. The gap goes down, but not by as much. 3.34 seconds separating the top two drivers. As Callaghan laps the number 10 of Mark Shepard, the driver who was stranded at the start. There is Shepard with the red overalls, who uh, very eager to let the slower, the faster drivers through there. I think he's. Uh, just keeping out of the way, his race pretty much over, just going around to enjoy the race, you might say, at this stage. Perkins in third, going past the number 10, Mark Shepard, up to 14th position, of course, with a few drivers out of contention early on. But Perkins, through the convolt corner he goes, still in third place. The gap between first and second, 2.5 seconds. There is the second place driver, number one, Seifleet, who has set the fastest lap of the race again. 41.53 setting a similar pace to Callaghan here he's done very well at the start number 30 or race leader there's the second place closing up all the time three minutes plus one lap to go in this 210 challenge opening heat race and the question now is can Chris Callaghan do enough to hold on from the charging Lionel Seifleet in second there was the number seven of Tony Berry off on the side of the track Thomas Stone I think another one who's had to retire from the race was in seventh position over the line they go as we look a little bit further down. So there's number 30, Chris Callaghan. We just saw Lionel Seifleet going out of shot in second, closing up all the time. Robert Perkins, Russell Hopes, and another fastest lap of the race, 41.20. Chris Callaghan, the race leader, is charging hard right now. White helmet with the blue visor. But look at the speed of Seifleet in second place, really charging up in second position, and the clock ticking down all the time. But as they always say, motorsport uh, catching up is one thing in a race and getting past can be another, but Seifert certainly charging hard here. Down into the bottom corner they go. And look at this, Seifert starts, he's got the pressure on as they make their way down. Nice move down the straight. They got 44 in front, Anthony Cox, who moves to one side, but Seifert down the inside. Nice move from the number one, and he takes the lead. Really had to push hard to close that gap on Chris Callaghan. So the important thing now for Callaghan, who uh, didn't fight too hard to so think he could see that uh, Seifleet was coming. So what Callaghan's going to do now, just trying to watch those lines. We can just see that Seifleet very smooth through the corners, carrying a lot of speed. Fine margin to do with safety in first and second, but uh, Seifleet just that little bit smoother through the corners, carrying that speed. But Callaghan still not giving up in second place. As we look further down at the number four, the machine of Stuart Henry, currently in seventh position. So Seifert leads, Allen in second, Perkins in third. Further down, Dan Berry fourth, Russell Hopes, Paul Fowler, Stuart Henry, 
Peter Masson in eighth position from John Hutton, who starts towards the front of the field, currently in ninth place. Michael Owen in tenth, William Shelley, Mark Shepard, Oliver Shelley in 13th. And the final driver out on the course is Anthony Cox, Thomas Stone, David Skull, Ray Sloan, and Tony Berry, all retirement from the race. As we look at the number 25, William Shelley currently in 11th position. They're just being lapped by the leaders. Cycle it over the line, 32 seconds on the clock, so next time round will be the last lap of the race. Cycle charging hard, he's got the number 32 just ahead of him there, the 10th place John Hutton, so already lapping well into the field, number 72, Michael Owen, currently in ninth position. And they'll likely go a lap down before the last lap flag goes up. There's number 30, the early race leader, Chris Callaghan, still charging in second place, comfortably ahead of Robert Perkins, number 3, in third position there's Owen number 72 concedes the line to the race leader Lionel Seifleet who's comfortably in front right now next driver ahead of him is the number 52 Oliver Shelley who will be uh, assuming he's going to get lap will go two laps down one lap to go in this opening 210 challenge race and there we see number one Seifleet the blue flags going up for the number 52 13th position of Oliver Shelley who lets the leader go by most of the top 10 making their way through Michael Owen, John Hutton a bit further down we've got Paul Fowler in 6th place Stuart Henry moving up to 7th position meanwhile Lionel Seifley number 1 starting from 15th on the grid making his way through Kestrel Corner for the final time and into Kim Bolton he goes and true to the form book he will take the checkered flag opening heat race win for Lionel Seifley fought well to get that first position Chris Gallagher putting up a fight in second place and uh, brings up a strong position too in that opening heat race. Robert Perkins holding off Dan Berry at the end there. Third and fourth. We should be looking up for the number 41 of Russell Hopes. Uh, there he is. Hopes started and finished in fifth position from Paul Fowler, Stuart Henry and the number 31. A little bit further down of Peter Masson will be the final driver on the lead lap. There's number four then, the seventh place finisher, Stuart Henry. And it gives you a chance to see these carts in a bit more close up as they make their way off the track. The old air-cooled Villiers engines providing some fantastic racing. As you can see on the lap times, a few seconds off the pace, for example, the modern KZ UK carts. But when you consider the technology on these carts, it's, uh, they really do get some power out of them. And there's the number eight, one of the retirements on the first lap of the race. Race slow, and you can see that uh, so a lot of the carts don't even have the nose cones very much uh, old school karting here in the 210 challenge and uh, great to see the old uh, the old air cooled engines still running as strongly as ever so uh, a bit of work to do there for number eight race slow not helped with the black overalls that'll only increase the temperature he's pushing his heart cart hurriedly off the circuit whilst we wait for our next race to get underway it's the first heat race for the tkm extreme drivers they're in the waiting zone might have to pause for a few moments whilst the last few carts from the uh, 210s make their way back to the paddock. But uh, in association with Klaas and Motorsport, TKM Extreme as we focus in on the number 26 of Jake Cox. We're starting up there with Adam Sparrow. So TKM Extreme getting underway in a few moments' time. I'll oh, we'll just take a brief pause to look at some of the uh, the standings so far. So uh, the driver who's just out of shot actually next to the number 26 there. Adam Sparrow, who will lead them away, leads the championship from Jake Cox. Second on the grid, Spencer Lane, James Morley, Thomas Shaw and Jamie Mead on row number three. Charlie Whitehouse on the fourth row there. Bradley Peck, Kai Springfield, Oliver Bowen, Patrick Lee, Kian Bennett, Joseph Booth, Luke Jarman, Johan Kalichern on row number eight. Another front runner in the championship there. Liv Jenkins, Al Patterson, Jack Stewart, Sean Abbott, Harrison Morrow, James Whitaker, Mitchell Ball and Ashley Ruggles on row number 12 as they make their way out onto the circuit for their formation lap so uh, the driver that leads them out number 19 Adam Sparrow the current championship leader on 300 points a little bit of a gap there from Al Patterson in second place Jamie Mead James Whitaker Charlie Whitehouse Johan Kalichern Patrick Lee Leah Robinson uh, leading lady driver Liv Jenkins currently ninth in the series from Spencer Lane and Jake Cox didn't have the best of rounds last time out currently sitting 15th in the championship is on the front row of the grid as they make their way back towards the start of course these drivers 
reverting back now to the uh, to the rolling start so here we go TKM extreme heat race number one sixth race of our 32 race program and now to the final corner they go look nicely in position here as they make their way over the line the premix rising in the air as they charge down into the first corner Sparrow guarding that inside line it's a good clean start they pile through Stowe corner will they get through cleanly yes they do it's a good start to the race now they go flying through the willows for the first time and a great start there for number 19 Adam Sparrow looks like going up into second place is Spencer Lane Jay Cox still there in third good start for Cox as he looks to move his way up the series standings at this fourth round of the championship leaders now making their way down towards the uh, TKM straight number 75 in the midfield there Harrison Morrow fighting away and here they come down towards Kim Bolton for the first time so it's Sparrow that leads Spencer Lane up to second Cox in third Shaw in fourth James Morley, Jamie Mead, Charlie Whitehouse, Leah Robinson, Bradley Peck and Oliver Bowen rounding up the top ten at the end of the first lap. And a tussle for the lead here is Spencer Lane. A little right nudge there as they make their way through to Derek's corner. Adam Sparrow continues to lead the way though, not much change. They make their way down towards TKM straight and Kestrel corner. But it's Sparrow that leads. He's getting tight at the front here, though. Jake Cox still involved in this one as well. Oh, side by side into Kim Bolton corner. And there's a shuffle around here. Number 42, Thomas Shaw with a nice move there as well. But Spencer Lane takes the lead. Here they come down towards Stoke corner once again. It's very close indeed. James Morley and Jamie Mead make their way through. Jake Cox drops a couple of places down to sixth place. But it's all incredibly close at the front here. Finally matched as they make their way down into Derek's corner and your new race leader Spencer Lane immediately coming under pressure from Adam Sparrow who's looking to get back into first place. Here they come. So it's only the heat races here but the action as hot as ever. Nobody taking things easy in these opening races. Further down there's the number 53. And that was James Monroe currently in 30th place with Harry Higgs and Gemma Kitty down there as well. Jessica Fitch Hall not too far behind as well, currently in 32nd. As the midfield runners go charging out to that final corner. Still as close as ever at the front here. As Spencer Lane holds desperately onto that lead, but Adam Sparrow with a nice move through the willows, but he can't do enough to uh, make that advantage count going into Derek's corner. Thomas Shaw, James Morley. Jamie Mead, Jamie, Jake Cox right in there as well. Not too far behind there, Leah Robinson and Charlie Whitehouse as the leaders again go charging down the TKM straight into Kestrel Corner. And look how hard Spencer Lane's having to work here. It's down the inside. Goes Adam Sparrow and makes the move stick. So Sparrow into the lead. Stationary yellow flags. There's a cart in trouble on the uh, outside of this corner. You'll see the marshals pulling that cart away. I think that uh, may well be I think it's Ashley Ruggles that's out of contention but Adam Sparrow leading the way this race far from over and Thomas Shaw number 42 in third place certainly looks threatening there we see the number 82 of Bradley Peck closely followed by the number 5 of Kian Bennett just on the edge of the top 10 there with Joseph Boo slightly ahead 145 further down there in the midfield Harry Higgs currently in 26th position. Jack Stewart and William Bryan's in there as well. Lead is over the line with 3 minutes 20 plus one lap remaining. The race still wide open here and up to third place now has gone Jamie Mead. So Jamie Mead now into third, 97. The latest challenger to these the, the duo at the front here. Adam Sparrow back into the lead. Spencer Lane. Second position but they're dueling it out at the front here. Of course the golden rule is not to hit your teammate but they're certainly having a uh, close race at the front this is allowing number 97 Jamie Mead to get involved though look at the third place driver here as we look again at the the midfield runners still having their own fight oh and another fight for the lead here Mead with the nice line out of the corner That's, oh we almost got him through to second oh and a nasty spill there for number 42 drivers getting together and another casualty in that incident there was the number 26 of Jake Cox 
but a nasty moment there for Thomas Shaw we saw the cart go flying and I think he's okay he's off at the side of the track but he I think he'll be winded we'll try and have a look at that again later on but uh, number 11 there Spencer Lane 19 Adam Sparrow oh and meet down the inside nice little move there Cox is back in the race here we see that incident again oh and it just seemed that uh, oh look at that 42 just seemed to run a little bit wide out of Kim Bolton corner Thomas Shaw just picked up the tyre barriers and the unfortunate 26 of uh, Jake Cox had nowhere to go and uh, we've got the Battenberg flags out here so I think that's due to the damage from the the tyre barriers so the race has been neutralised this is in essence a um, what you might call like a safety car period so the race is still underway here so Spencer Lane, your race leader. Jamie Mead then up to second now from Adam Sparrow. 127 on the clock here, so it just depends on how quickly we can make sure the track is safe and those those tyre barriers look an absolute walloping earlier. There we see them just getting the, um, the barriers back into position. We've got 114 on the clock. We may get the green flag at the end of this lap, I believe. So what we've got here is uh, what they call the Battenberg flags. The black and yellow diagonal flags. See the marshal waving them there. So the race is still live, but the drivers really do have to reduce their speed right down. No overtaking is allowed. And you see the uh, the carts back onto the uh, with the jetting there. You see the, the premix. The, the carts are perfectly fine, of course. The, the two-stroke engines running on the premix fuel. So that's just the... Um, with them going down to the lower revs, you really see the premix rising in the air. So that's certainly nothing to worry about. And I can tell you, if you were down trackside, the smell of that would be really nice indeed if you're into your two-strokes. So the driver's pretty much at walking pace right now. I think the green flag is about ready. The circuit has been repaired. Credit once again to the Orange Army. 20 seconds on the clock here. So I think, oh, Spencer Lane is just trying to eke this out as long as he can just to try and get a one-lap dash to the finish, but he's running out of time. He's going to have to go. Now we're still under the Battenberg flags. So the driver is just stretching the legs of the carts down the straight there as uh, Spencer Lane put the power down slightly but still under Battenberg conditions and the pace goes right down once again. So I, uh, I do stress the race is still on. It looks like he's going to uh, bring it round slowly for the last lap of the race. We are now down to zero so next time round it will be the last lap. As I say the race is still live so... Um, Drivers certainly don't want to make a mistake here. I know it sounds ridiculous at these speeds, but it's very easy to trip over another cart or uh, lose your concentration and get a wheel on the grass or anything like that. You could still potentially fall out of the race. So we are still under these neutralised conditions. The green flag is redded at the start-finish line. So I think we're going to go for a... Pretty sure we're going to go for a racing lap at the end here. And again, you can see the smoke in the air, that premix fuel being burned and... Uh, floating through the air and you look at some of the midfield runners there we just saw a bit further down we've got Johan Kalachern, and Liv Jenkins, Luke Jarman in there so the pace picks up at the front here looks like we're ready to go racing one lap to go in this TKM Extreme and the leader gets the power down Spencer Lane trying to control this race at the front as Mead fights around the outside runs out of road a little bit there and Adam Sparrow sneaks through to second place here we go it's a one lap dash to the finish line here Lane gets the lead, but Sparrow with a great jump on that first corner gets through into second place and shuts out Jamie Mead who drops to third. Mead really had a go around the outside there but didn't quite come off. So it's Spencer Lane that continues to lead the way. Adam Sparrow jumping to the front of the field here. Second place now, can he go for the lead here? They come into the final corner and Mead with one last go out of the last corner here they come it's going to be a fight to the line oh they touch wheels but Spencer Lane takes the checkered flag from Adam Sparrow in second Jamie Mead in third James Morley 77 in fourth position Leah Robinson Bradley Peck Kim Bennett Charlie Whitehouse Kai Springfield Oliver Bowen Patrick Lee Joseph Booth in 12th uh, Johan Kalachern in 13 from Liv Jenkins and there is the unfortunate number 26 who ends up finishing in 30th place there, Jake Cox. The best of luck last time out and uh, the heat race is not starting the way he would have wanted. Caught up in that nasty shunt that we saw earlier on with uh, Thomas Shaw. 
who's uh, up and walking about. And there's the uh, the battered number 42. We saw that cart do a mid-air spin when it walked into the tyre barriers. And that was uh, certainly a nasty-looking shunt. So uh, hopefully we'll see Thomas Shaw a bit later on. I think at the very, last, uh, the very least that will have uh, knocked the wind out of him somewhat. Quite an impact when the cart came back down again, but uh, driver appears to be okay, and they're just going to try and get that cart back to uh, back to the paddock. Coming up next, the um, TKM Extreme, of course, drawing to a close. Race number seven getting underway. X30 Senior and the R177 class will be out on the track in just a few moments. Thanks for tuning in, of course, to this fourth round of the Hunts Kart Racing Club Championships here. Sunday the 14th of April here at the famous Kimbolton Circuit, the track uh, site of a former World War II U.S. Air Force bomber base. And like many other motorsport events, uh, motorsport venues in the U.K. as the military origins. Actually, down in the clubhouse here, there's a... Um, quite a lot of artefacts from the circuit's uh, military origins and fair to say of course in its karting history this track has hosted some of the uh, the most famous names in British motorsport of course we look at the likes of the obvious ones of course in recent times the likes of Lewis Hamilton Jensen Button and so forth uh, talking of um, the Villiers engines of course Nigel Mansell a bit further back so uh, to those drivers who are at the uh, the sharp end of the field that's the sort of level they'd be certainly hoping to obtain in the future but then of course uh, a lot of the classes come here just to enjoy their respective classes the KZ and the 210s and so forth so uh, on to the track of the x seniors we see our lineups on the grid right now 22 drivers out in this opening heat race this is the uh, seventh of nine of the opening heat races we've got a second block of heats coming up a little bit later on coming up next we have the micro max uk with the water swift restricted class mini inters our final race in this first block and be race number nine a little bit later on race number 10 we go back to the rotaxes the junior and senior rotax group b and c respectively we've got 10 more heat races in block number two before we move on to our finals a little bit later on so here we go George Robinson, Morgan Hill, Reese Newburn, Christopher Bingham up at the front there in the X30 Senior and R177s. They are split, of course, into two groups. And here we go. Over the line. Looks like a good start. The flag stays in, and away they go, charging into the first corner. George Robinson, Morgan Hill. They get through cleanly as the R177s make their way out of Kimbolton Corner, heading towards the start-finish line. Leaders making their way through the, the Willows as the R177s get underway a bit further behind there with um, George Chenery, Simon Hilton, Josh Bass, Simon Pugh and James Butcher all right in there as they fight their way through the corner. Some of those faster drivers looking to catch up with the uh, X30 seniors fairly soon, one would say, as they fight their way through the Willows further back there. Josh Bass, Gordon Chenery fighting out at the front of the R177s at the front of the field though. The X30 is over the line for the first time, 23 from 29. That's George Robinson, Morgan Hill, flying into Stowe Corner. Now, when these lap times settle down, we'll get an idea of the pace. They really are motoring at the moment. The uh, conditions, I would say, are perfect for racing. Just in the, uh, the low teens right now, it's not too hot out there, but uh, nice conditions, going of temperature in the tyres, the track conditions, the track temperature will be quite nice, one would think and um, certainly not too hot to make it greasy out there so uh, nice weather here at the fourth round of the championship Christopher Bingham up to third as we look further down at our uh, R177s Josh Bass with Gordon Chenery fighting out at the, uh, the front of the field in that one and there is the 64 there of Josh Bass 28 on his tail there Gordon Chenery they're currently 11th and 12th on the track the top two drivers in the R177s meanwhile the X30 seniors making their way through the willows and George Robinson, 23, holding on to that lead from the 29 in second. Morgan Hill, Christopher Bingham shadowing in third place. Reese Newburn, Josh Jones, Matthew Morgan a bit further behind from Jack Dan, Adam Wright, Oliver Harris and George Bolter rounding up the field. But still finely poised at the front, still that battle further behind there with the R177. 64, Josh Bash continues to lead the way. Gordon Chenry still in second position. 
The leaders, meanwhile, down into the uh, Stoke corner. They go there's uh, on the inset there, number 54. Uh, that's Simon Pugh. That's the R177s on the bottom right of your corner. So Simon Pugh fighting with Simon Hilton right now as they come out to the final corner. And James Butcher, 87, just at the tail end of that little battle. The leaders, meanwhile, making their way through towards Dan Weldon corner. This is the front of the uh, X30 seniors. George Robinson. Still leading there from Morgan Hill. We have lost one driver in the infield right now. It's, uh, I think it may be the uh, number 60 of George Bolter. We'll perhaps catch that car to him in a moment because the wave yellows out on the track right now as they make their way through the willows. The drivers have to be careful here because there is a stricken cart on the infield. You just saw it there on the right of your screen. But they all get through without any trouble. We'll confirm that on the lap charts. I think it may well be the uh, number 60 of George Bolter that's out of the race. But uh, yes, certainly is Bolter tumbling down the field. The driver okay, walking away, so I can only assume there's some kind of uh, mechanical issue possibly for that cart. But the race goes on. And further back, the R177 is going through with Josh Bass, still in the way from Gordon Chenry, Simon Hilton and Simon Pugh. That battle at the back of the field here between Hilton, Pugh and Butcher getting very close there. And uh, they're fighting for the positions in the R177s. They make their way through the willows. You see in the background there the marshals dragging away the stricken cart of George Bolter. Uh, told you there may be a mechanical issue and there's a fairly obvious one. It's got no back wheel on it. So uh, either the wheel bearings failed or something. But um, three wheels on that cart right now. There we still see George Robinson and Morgan Hill fighting for the lead as they make their way through Kim Bolton corner. Further back there we see the R177s. It's still Josh Bass leading the way up to 10th in the race right now. Gordon Chenery second, Simon Pugh in third. Simon Hilton and James Butcher fighting away. 2.45 on the clock, plus the one lap remaining as they make their way through the willows once again. And it's still George Robinson leading from Morgan Hill. Christopher Bingham still charging in third, trying to get involved in that fight for the lead as we look at the R177s on the, uh, the bottom of the screen there. And that's still that fight for third between uh, Simon Pugh, Simon Hilton and James Butcher in that class. There's 26 at the back of the field there in third, back of the pack I should say. Christopher Bingham just trying to get involved in this three-way tussle for the lead. He's got a small gap between second and third. Robinson over the line once again. Fastest lap of the race for Robinson with a 40.35. Identical on pace to Morgan Hill, so they're running a very quick pace out at the front. And Christopher Bingham all the time just tagging on there, trying to keep involved in this fight for third position. He wants to get involved up towards the front of the field, one would say, but still looking a solid third place in this one in this opening heat race. As in the inset there, 64, Josh Bass on the bottom right of your screen makes his way through Stoke Corner, the leader of the R177s. It's the uh, leading group of the X30s making their way out to the final corner, leader already on the willows for the R177s. It's still uh, Chenery second. Simon Pugh, Simon Hilton and James Butcher having their fight for third as well. The clock ticking down all the time as we look at the race leader of the R177s, Josh Bass, making his way through the Dan Weldon corner. Meanwhile, in this 112 on the clock, I think we're going to have two laps to go here. The leaders of the X30s making their way through the Dan Weldon corner, still headed by the number 23 of George Robinson, and a peek over the shoulder there for 29 of Morgan Hill because he can see that Christopher Bingham is right on the tail in third as down the inside goes Hill. And a neat move through Kimbolt Corner to take the lead. So Morgan Hill, the new race leader, is Robinson going to fight back? I don't think he is going into Stoke Corner, just tagging along there at the moment, keeping the pace, trying to stay out of trouble. Keep the pace going through. There's a strip cart on the side of the circuit. Just trying to identify who that is. See the wave yellows. Oh, and a bit of a, bit of a tussle there going into Derek's corner between the, uh, the two front runners. And the two teammates, there they go. Through the Dan Weldon corner. Still hanging on in there. In third place is Christopher Bingham, who's desperately trying to get involved in this one. And a bit further back there, we see the number 63 of Oliver Harris, currently in eighth place. Uh, Adam Wright also in there as well. Lead is going through eight seconds on the clock. So next time round will be the final lap of the race. I think it's Gordon Chenery, who is the stricken driver you'll see on the side of your screen. Just on to the right there as leaders go through. 
So Chenery, one of the R177 drivers, out of the race. Driver OK walking behind the tie barriers and I think has had some mechanical issues with the cart. Next time round, we're having the final lap of the race. Leaders now making their way down the TKM straight. And starting to close up on that battle between Simon Pugh, Simon Hilton and James Butcher. Now this could be interesting because they're having their own fight at the back of the field here. There they are. And whilst, of course, the racing etiquette is to let the faster drivers through, they won't want to sacrifice their own race in the process. So this could get a bit close on the final lap of the race. As the 29 of Morgan Hill closing up on the tail enders there. So they're battling actually for a second now in the R177. There they go. This could get a bit tight now as the, uh, the blue flags go up at the top of the course. Down towards the... Uh, Kestrel corner they go and threading their way through oh nice move there from Morgan Hill slots through just ahead of George Robinson's that could be enough here they come out to the final corner checker flag goes out and it's a race win for Morgan Hill George Robinson second Christopher Bingham in third fastest lap of the race incidentally for Bingham Reese Newburn in fourth Josh Jones in fifth Jack Dan sixth from Matthew Morgan Oliver Horace Oliver Harris I should say Adam Wright and the winner of the R177s is going to be the number 64 of Josh Bass, who I think is just coming through in towards Kimball. There he is. Good steady race at the front of the field for the number 64. And unchallenged over the line to take the chequered flag in R177. Josh Bass, your race winner. And Simon Pugh did very well on that final lap actually here he comes over the line in second Simon Pugh just about staying on the lead lap so pretty much locking in second position uh, Simon Hilton taking third in the r 177s from James Butcher they were just lapped by the race leader Morgan Hill so uh, we're gonna have a brief pause before the next race gets underway uh, coming up in just a few moments is the penultimate race of our first heat. Uh, it's race number eight in the program, Micro Max UK and Water Swift Restricted. Just a few moments to allow some of the stricken carts from that previous race to be towed off the course. They've got the uh, cart trolleys out there now. So just to uh, recover those stricken carts, I think there's two on the track at the moment. Drivers are okay, of course. It was just mechanical issues that put them out. So we'll get these carts off the track and be back underway in just a few moments for the Micromax UK uh, Water, Swift, Water Swift Restricted race number eight getting underway in just a few moments. So here we see our lineup for our eighth race of the day. It's the Micromax UK. Water Swift there restricted. Lucian Smith from RBJ Stubbs, Logan Stanley Jones, Finley Beals, James DeVro, Joseph Davis, Oliver Dawson, Teddy Higgs, Mason Muncher, Logan Baker, and Louis Williams. Maps rounding out the field as they make their way down towards the Kestrel Corner on their formation lap the grid, slotting nicely into position here. And they've got to be uh, you see on the bottom of your screen there the tram lines when they go over the start finish line for the rolling starts they've got to be in their respective tram lines be they on the left or the right hand side of the grid and if they stray out of those there's every possibility the start is called off and they go out for another lap but it looks like a nice line up here or no, maybe not well, it 
looks like the race is ahead actually I thought they were going to call that one off but the uh, one or two drivers towards the back there straying off the tram lines but it's, uh, it's declared a start and away we go so uh, 44 Lucian Smith with a great start there gets underway quite nicely and through the uh, Derrick's corner they go for the first time it is a good clean start though no incidents on that first uh, opening half of the lap LBJ Stubbs in second Logan Stanley Jones in third from Finley Beals and James DeVro right in there as well they charge down the TKM straight for the first time and it's still the 44 of Smith that leads the way Stubbs in second position nice clean pace at the front here the army uh, restricting machines towards the uh, the back of the field there as well one or few drivers looking strong in his opening laps here so good start there for uh, Logan Stanley Jones in second place as they charge through the the willows that sweeping chicane corner it's a very nice sweeping corner so they can carry a lot of speed through there gets a bit more technical right now as they go through Derrick's corner this track just under one kilometer long sitting at 989 meters in total and like any standard carted track a real mixture you would say of the fast sweeping straights I've got here on the TKM straight and some technical bits like we've got now going into the left-handed flick through the Kestrel corner got to get that right to get the line up into Kim Bolton as 46 James DeRue has a look down the inside and then it gets all nice and sweeping now as they make their way through Stowe corner and the Willows and this is your classic corner here I'd say we've got to almost drive three corners ahead really get the sweeping line through the corners as we see the 142 there of Teddy Hicks going through just towards the back of the field from Logan Baker Hicks currently in 10th place leaders already through the willows making their way down towards Derrick's corner and the race settling down quite nicely at this stage James DeVrieu with a good start up to third position as a bit further down there we see the number 22 Louis Williams Mavs fighting there with 27 Mason Muncher is going through leaders now going down towards the Kestrel corner and just in just settling down a bit I would say at the front of the field right now there's the number 76 Joseph Davis currently in seventh place as the leaders make their way over the straight the rest of the field piling through in Bolton corner and your race leader 44 Lucian Smith looking strong although Logan Stanley Jones in second position setting the fastest lap of the race with a 47.98 they charge through the Mitsu straight down towards Derek's corner once again there's the number 96 so it's all finally poised here LBJ Stubbs who had a strong start but losing a couple of positions now dropping to fourth place with the number 46 on his tail there James DeRoe they're having a close fight here for third position this is just allowing the top two to pull away slightly so the race just starting to uh, develop a bit of a formation here we've got Logan Smith oh, sorry Lucian Smith and Logan Stanley Jones just pulling away slightly first and second place and Logan Stanley Jones 73 in second position has set another fastest lap and is just started to challenge the leader so top two just ahead third fourth and fifth having their own little tussle now a bit further behind so just starting to turn this into a two driver fight for the lead we've got just over three minutes remaining plus the one lap in this opening heat race and down the back straight they go down T came straight into Kestrel corner and all the time 73 has been looking good so far Logan Stanley Jones putting some nice laps together and is just starting to pressure the leaders here now he won't want to be too aggressive and draw those three behind him into the fight but already you can see Lucian Smith driving defensively to guard that lead very early down into the apex going into Stowe corner and this could allow the chasing drives to close up here so again 73 Logan Stanley Jones fastest lap of the race previously but now is caught up with the race leader but as we say of course the classic motorsport saying catching up is one thing getting past can be quite another so let's see what Logan Stanley Jones can do as Lucian Smith who has led the entire race has got a bit of work to do a little bit further behind here 95 Oliver Dawson Joseph Davis in there 22 Louis Williams Mags Mason Muncher, Teddy Higgs and Logan Baker a bit further behind as those drivers fight for the remainder of the top 10 positions leaders now making their way down the uh, over the start finish line as this uh, fight towards the back oh driver in trouble got the Kimbolt corner on I think and uh, I think that was uh, Finley Beals unfortunately for him number 20 drops a few positions 
He still stays in the race. That shuffles everyone up a little bit now. So Oliver Dawson up to fifth place. There's 76 there. Joseph Davis having a look with Oliver Dawson. Close fight here for what will be fourth and fifth positions. Where everyone's still on the track, there is a, a warning flag for the number 20 Finley Beal. So uh, must have been a, uh, going for the move on that final corner, costing him a little bit there. 22, Louis Williams Babs looking good. Staying ahead of number 95 of Oliver Dawson as they make their way down towards Kestrel Corner. And there is 95. Dawson now having a look at the road. There's number 20 right in there as well. Finley Beals recovering from that incident on the previous lap and now starting to get involved in this fight for fourth position. And they make their way through Stowe Corner. A bit further ahead looks like Alby J. Stubbs may have got through into second place. There's the leaders going through uh, the Derrick's Corner. And still that very close fight for fourth position, headed by that now the number four, 22 getting in there now. Louis Williams Mabs had a good fight through the field here. Looking very strong, staying ahead of the number 95 of Oliver Dawson. Finley Beals getting to work and starting to try and pick his way through the positions as the drivers make their way down towards the final few corners through Kestrel Corner into Kim Bolton they go we've got just over 33 seconds on the clock right now so uh, next time round will be the last lap of the race and back to the front here we see still your race leader number 44 Lucian Smith has got a new challenger right now with Alby J Stubbs who's just set the fastest lap of the race 47.53 for the second oh he has a look down the inside going into Derek's corner so let's have a look now for Alby J Stubbs who's been sitting there in third for most of the race just starting to get some pace together the cart's really starting to come towards him quite nicely now and as we head towards the final lap of the race could be a challenger for Lucian Smith who's done very well in this race he's led pretty well he has led the entire race but it's what happens on the final lap that matters here as they make their way over the line it is only the heat race of course but he'll be determined to win this one over the line they go with one lap to go and again Smith guarding that inside line look how aggressively he guards the apex that could allow him an opening here for Stubbs on the exit though and they're wheel to wheel through the wheelers oh and the unfortunate uh, Lucian Smith just got pushed onto the grass there rejoins ahead still in the lead we did leave the track so uh, not too sure what's going to happen there but he's still in the lead so Lucian Smith into the lead just banged wheels with uh, Alby J Stubbs went onto the grass and recovers in the lead so that allows Logan Stanley Jones back into second place and despite that uh, that'll be a hair raising moment there for Lucian Smith who recovers in the lead you can see the wheel marks on the side of the cart there just showing how close that racing was and it looks like he's going to hang on so the checker flag goes out race win for Lucian Smith Alby J Stubbs in second Logan Stanley Jones in third James Devro in fourth and the rest of the field go charging through it's going to be fifth place for Finley Beals good recovery for him Louis Williams Babs a good fight through the field into sixth place for the number 22 Oliver Dawson Joseph Davis Mason Munter Teddy Higgs and we wait for the final driver over the line and there he goes the number 69 of Logan Baker finishing in 11th position so uh, they all started the race all 11 all 11 finished as well so uh, good clean start to the race as we move on to our final race in the, uh, the first block of heat races, race number nine in your 32 race program, Mini Inters, underway in just a moment. We'll have a look at the lineup in just a few moments. So, uh, race number nine, and this is the final of the first block of heat races. We've got the second group of heat races coming up take us through the the next part of the program as the drivers will make their way out onto the grid very shortly so we've got the uh, Benjamin Lawn from Jensen Sale, Finley Hines, Hayden Fisher, Sebastian Clark, Noah Moulton on row four, Kilnani Joni and Ollie Thompson on row number four, Rian Townsend from Oliver Barton, Nathan Edwards, Jensen White, Noah Jebson, Reuben Jenkins, Alex Tokinskis and Max Wheatley rounding out the eight rows of drivers so this is race number nine next race that will be the junior rotax and that'll be groups b versus c as i say such as the number of rotax here today there are actually um, three heat races and 
And here they come down towards the uh, Kim Walton corner. Just forming into position right now. Mini Inters is about to get underway. And so coming up next we've got more junior and senior Rotac action. The Honda 200s out on track very shortly. But the Mini Inters get underway for their first heat race. Everyone piling to the inside line guarding the apex. They all get through the first corner cleanly. One driver pushed a little bit wide, but it's the number 40 that emerges at the front. Jensen Sale took that first corner very neatly. Down the inside. Oh, and trouble at the back. Somebody gets punted right off the track there. Number 28, I think that was. That's Akil Nani Gioni. Driver okay and keeps the car going. So hopefully Gioni should be able to get back in the race and certainly does. So uh, race still on at the back of the field. And your new race leader, Finley Hines, is having a good look there in the middle of the track and takes the lead. It's so three lead changes on the first lap. Here they come over the line. So it's Hines leading, Sales second, Lorne in third. Fisher from Sebastian Clark, Holly Thompson, Noah Moulton, Max Sweetley, Nathan Edwards, and Rian Townsend running up the top ten. Oliver Martin, Ruben Jenkins, Alex Tukinchis, and Jensen White with uh, Akil Nanagioni in 16th position still on track despite that uh, rather big excursion on lap number one managed to keep the cart going and already catching up on the rest of the field so i'll keep an eye out at the uh, on the corner of how Gianni gets on in this race but the action now very close at the front of the field with finley hines leading the way jensen sale in second place benjamin lawn in third over the line they go so sale right on the rear wheels here of Finley Hines just tagging on to the back bumper right now looking to find an opening in his early stages so Jensen Sale who led the race briefly at the start trying to get back into first place but I'm sure that Finley Hines will have something to say about that looking and Hines is driving his own race right now looking for his own lines keeping it nice and smooth as they go through Dan Weldon corner and in fact these top two Maybe working together here. We're not still having a look there, but uh, they might want to work together here and try and pull away from that chasing pack because they're not too far behind here. Got Benjamin Lawn, Hayden Fisher, and Sebastian Clark to make their way through. So Hines still leading, and again you see Sale just staying there in second place. All the time they look at the Benjamin Lawn, Hayden Fisher, and Sebastian Clark keeping that pressure on third, fourth, and fifth place. Down the Yamitsu straight they go into Derek's corner and again Sale just shadowing the back wheels of Finley Hines here as they make their way through. Very fast pace at the front here as you can see on the graphic there. Tenth of a second between them. Nothing at all between these top two drivers. Driver on the move actually a bit further down is the number 12 of Max Wheatley up to sixth position. So we'll look out for number 12 as the race goes on. But it's all getting tight here at the front as again we see Jensen Sale having a look at Finley Hines as they make their way down the Hines straight into Stowe Corner. But Finley Hines looking very neat at the front of the field here and not allowing any kind of opening here for Jensen Sale in second place. Still in third, desperately trying to close the gap is Benjamin Law. Hayden Fisher and Sebastian Clark right on the tail as well with the ever charging number 12 of Max Wheatley. Wheatley getting past Ollie Thompson, Noah Moulton in 8th place, Rian Townsend and Nathan Edwards rounding out the top 10. Noah Jessen, Oliver Barton, Ruben Jenkins, Jensen White, Jensen White, Alex Tuchintis and Gioni still at the back of the field just trying to close up on the tail enders as the leaders now make their way around the final corner. And still that very close battle, the third down to 7th place. Here they come down towards the first corner into Stowe and it's still Finley Hines and Jensen Sell neck and neck at the front of the field and that chasing pack in third can't quite close up at the moment we've still got three minutes plus the one lap remaining and it's still Benjamin Lawn in third from Hayden Fisher Sebastian Clark Max Wheatley and up to sixth position from Ollie Thompson and there they are third four fifth and sixth look out for the number 12 here he's made up ten places in this race down the back straight they go, down TKM into the Kestrel corner. Top two still charging away. Max Wheatley trying to find a way through. And has made it stick, so Wheatley makes up another position, up to fifth position now. Number 12 still charging. Here are two leaders, two and a half minutes on the clock, plus the one lap remaining, still neck and neck. They can't find, uh, well, Sale can't find a way through at the moment. 
Uh, warning flag a bit further down for the fourth place driver, number 42, Hayden Fisher, in that uh, close tussle for third position, which is just behind this spike for the lead. You'll see them just at the back of your screen, still within striking distance, one might say, if this battle for the lead starts to get tasty. And of course, what Jensen Sell doesn't want to do is to get too aggressive and uh, draw the chasing drivers into this fight for the lead here. Still very tactical race here, I think. As Finley Hines makes his way out to the final corner again. You just see Jensen Sell looking at the exit there, trying to get a bit more drive down the Hines straight. It's one of those classic combinations here where it's not always the outbreaking way you get the passing done. It's sometimes just getting a, a better drive out of the corner. And here they come, the leaders making it up to the Derek's corner. And again, Jensen Sale just jinking about where he can, just looking for lines, trying to find an opening because Finley Hines is driving very neatly at the front of the race right now. Getting all of his lines dialed here, keeping the cart nice and smooth. You can see very minimal inputs, just keeping it nice and smooth. The operation's into the corner on the steering wheel. And he certainly knows that Jensen Sale is there in second place. Again, you see Sale just looking for the exit drive out of Kim Bolton Corner. Slightly different line from the race leader. 104 on the clock, so they'll squeeze through and get another lap in before the, uh, the last lap flag goes out. So we've still got a couple more laps to go here. And still the pressure very firmly piled on the race leader here, Finn behind. Still that fight third, Benjamin Law, Max Sweetley up to fourth place now as we look a little bit further down the edge of the top ten. Uh, further back we've got uh, Ruben Jenkins out of the race, so journey up to 15th now when uh, Tukinchis, uh, White, Barton, 12, 13, 14th positions just outside of the top 10 having their own race but still as close as ever at the front here is Hines and look at Sale just backing off going into the egg, into the entrance of the corner to get the speed coming out Oliver Barton there a bit further down having his own fight and again we see 18 seconds on the clock so two laps to go including the lap they have just started and Finley Hines looking very neat at the front of the race still coming under all sorts of pressure here from Jensen Sale who cannot find a way through right now but he's certainly knocking on the door there's that fight for third of Max Wheatley now up to third position and Wheatley setting the fastest lap of the race 43.8 second seven the gap is 2.4 seconds between second and third place so it might be a bit much for Wheatley to get involved in this one but he's now clear in third and well who knows if these two start fighting on the last lap then Wheatley could potentially get involved because he really has fought his way through the field very well indeed Hines leading as the last lap flag goes out still Sale in second so it's all going to go down to the wire here for Sale the rest of the top ten going through there Noah Moulton, Rian Townsend, Ollie Thompson having their own fight at the edge of the top ten Nathan Edwards, Noah Jebson and Oliver Barton a bit further behind they've just gone over the line now as down towards the Dave's corner for the final time they go there's that fight on the edge of the top ten, just on the bottom right of your screen. As the leaders make their way up towards Dan Weldon corner. And you can see Finley Hines going defensive there, very early into the apex. Quick glance over the shoulder. Jensen Sale urging him on as they make their way down towards the final corner. Hines very neatly through the final corner. And one last go here for Sale as they charge to the line. Neck and neck over the line. And by six hundredths of a second... Finley Hines takes the chequered flag from Jensen Sale in second place. Max Wheatley, Benjamin Lawn, Hayden Fisher, Sebastian Clark in sixth place. Noah Moulton, Rian Townsend, Ollie Thompson, Nathan Edwards, Ollie Bott, Noah Jessen, Jensen White. And waiting for our last two drivers, we've got uh, Gioni going over the line there in 14th place. Doesn't look too happy, but uh, did a good recovery there after that nasty start to the race. And there is Alex Pinches, uh, number 15, making his way back to the paddock. We'll see those drivers a little bit later on. So uh, race number nine now complete. We now move on to the second block of racing for the day. And back to where we started, the junior Rotax. So uh, just a reminder, of course, that because of the sheer numbers of junior Rotax drivers competing today, we've actually got uh, three groups of drivers. So the next two races for both junior and senior Rotax will see groups B and C racing together. After that we've got the Hondas, the KZUK, uh, 210 Challenge and the TKM Extremes and then later on it's the uh, A versus C groups. We're going to have a look at how this uh, B versus C group lines up for juniors. Alvarez from Jones, Horner, Turnbull, Cox and Teddy Cooper. 
Adam Moore and Banzel, Toby Bedford, Mikey Walker, Joel Dixon Cohen, Samir Paul, Owen Keane, Logan Hartsall, Paul Bridget Moby, and the rest of the field making their way through. Big group of drivers again, and uh, some uh, like some Charlie Effray to look out for. Alexander Gergowis on row number 12 with George Phillips. And of course, the uh, Kim Bolton track is the, the round of the British Karting Championship. So, obviously, a lot of interest from the Rotax drivers and will be very keen to uh, get some race practice here ahead of the, uh, the British Championships next month. And there we see the 111 of Logan Hartshorn making his way through Dan Weldon Corner as the drivers bring the pace right down as they come through the Kestrel Corner. Heading on for the rolling start. Still a few drivers towards the back of the field looking to line up into position. There's the uh, 92 there. Ben Horner, Finley Jones all getting the tyres warmed up as they make their way out of Kimbolt Corner. Over the line they go. And the start's called good as they make their way into the first corner. Everyone charging down the inside. Oh, a little bit of banging and buffing in the first corner as they all fight their way through. Spinner at the back of the field. But they all seem to have got through OK. And to be an Alvarez emerges at the front as they make their way to Dan's corner for the first time. Oh, down the inside they're having a look. I think that was Ben Horner having a fight for second place. That could allow Alvarez to pull away. And look how fast and furious it is in the midfield as they fight for positions. These races very important indeed. And there is a repercharge charge race later on if they fail to get through to the A final, but uh, certainly the drivers fighting for position at the front of the championship will be looking to get their way through to the A final as uh, promptly and swiftly as possible. And for the first time today, of course, we've seen our Group C drivers, and they'll be out later on in the block as well. As the midfield runners fight their way through, saw Logan Lord and right in the middle there, just on the edge of the top ten, but uh, to be an Alvarez leading from Joshua Turnbull at the front those two just starting to pull away from the rest of the field as we see this really close midfield scrap there 24 in there Miles Roby and let's have a look at that incident on the first corner with the unfortunate uh, trying to the back of the field there. I think that was uh, Alexander Gergowis who was spun out the real loser on that first corner tussle so Gergowis uh, driver tends to get some decent results in the Rotax class fighting back from right at the back of the field so that will really affect things for him as we look towards the final heat race later on. But to be an Alvarez, 86 a race leader from Joshua Turnbull. You can see those two just starting to pull away. Daniel Lamore in third place from Ben Horner. And there is the number 26, Mikey Walker, who's fighting with the 79 Teddy Cooper. 92, Ben Horner just been overtaken then by Mikey Walker, I believe, is now into fourth position. The two leaders making their way through, Alvarez from Turnbull. Neck and neck out of the final corner, getting very close to the front here. And it looks like Turnbull's taken the lead. So Joshua Turnbull, the new race leader, the rest of the midfield fighting their way through, out of the final, Kim Bolton corner. And there is your new race leader, number 20, Joshua Turnbull, who's just starting to pull away a bit now from to be an Alvarez, the early race leader. Daniel Lamar, 41, in third position. Mikey Walker from Ben Horner in 5th, Teddy Cooper 6th, Charlie Cox in 7th from Joel Dixon Cohen, Owen Keenan, Samir Paul and Finley Jones running up the top 10 further back, it's Toby Bedford, Banzel, Lord Roby, Owen Drawbridge, Harabuk and Hartshorn down into the midfield. As we watch number 20 of Joshua Turnbull just trying to, uh, to break away a little bit now at the front of the field, Alvarez uh, Walker in 3rd. Ben Horner to Mikey Walker, 26, has made a good comeback through the field. Back at the frontier, number 20, Joshua Turnbull. Still coming under a lot of pressure here from the number 86. And you can see Alvarez just urging him on here, Turnbull. They're just trying to pull away now from this very close fight for the remainder of the top ten here. Mikey Walker, Ben Horner, Teddy Cooper, Charlie Cox, uh, Joel Dixon-Cohen and Owen Keenan. They make their way through the willows. Turnbull, two tenths of a second between first and second. Very close and still 
fast and furious action in the rest of the top ten. Every point matters in these heat races. They've got three to get through to the A final. And just to uh, looking at some of the action off the track, 79 Teddy Cooper and 97 under investigation. According to the updates from the race control, Rex Ashley in the midfield. So Teddy Cooper, of course, up towards the front of the field here. Whether that will lead to anything, we shall wait and see. But uh, Joshua Turnbull still fighting away. There is the number 97. Having a look there, oh, sorry, 79 there, Teddy Cooper having a look with Charlie Cox. And Daniel Amore still in third place, very close towards the edge of the top ten. We've got uh, Samir Paul Finley-Jones. I remember Banzel, number 48, not too far behind as well. There was the 1-1-2 one, one, of Charlie Cox we're looking at there, having a look down the inside of Joel Dixon-Cohen, who's made up a few places now and uh, currently in sixth position. And a bit further back there, number 66, having a close fight going through the Dan Weldon corner. Alex Lynn with Harry Gilbert, Toby Farling, and Jack Risman just a little bit further behind as well. So still Turnbull from Alvarez and all right in there as well as they make their way through the uh, the Willows. And the rest of the top ten is coming out of Stowe. So Turnbull leads Alvarez second and more in third. Here they come. Up towards the top of the circuit now. Still your race leader, number 20, Josh Turnbull. Alvarez on his tail in second place, number 86. And at the moment keeping it nice and tactical here. Don't think Alvarez is going to push too hard to go for the lead right now because we're coming up towards the closing stage of the race here. And Turnbull setting a nice pace at the front. They're just about keeping ahead of the number 41, Daniel Amore in third, who actually is closing up all the time. There's the uh, drivers outside of the top ten, making their way down towards Kimbot Corn, the likes of Banzel, Jones, Bedford, all fighting away as they make their way over the line. And in this fight for the lead here, look out for that driver in third place, number 41, Daniel Amore who ever so slowly is closing up on the top two drivers here. Turnbull still leads from Alvarez, they make their way through Kimball towards the uh, TKM straight for the final, or well, the ultimate time, I should say. Looking at the clock here, 50 seconds, so I think we are going to squeeze in another lap after this one. Let's have a look as they go through. So we've got 42 seconds on the clock, 40, so I think it's going to be tight, but I think next time round we'll get the last lap board out here. So, uh, the pressure on here for the third place, number 41. And I think uh, Moore is really going to have to um, really make things work here. Daniel Amaral in uh, third position, closing up all the time on this fight. Oh, and a little nudge there. Oh, the unfortunate to be an Alvarez just misjudged the, uh, the speed of Joshua Turnbull there. Took a hefty clout on the front now. Whether that's damaged the, um, the front bumper enough to uh, disqualify him from the race and the post race inspection, I'm not sure. Of course, they hit the, uh, they damaged that nose cone too much if they fail the post-race scrutineering. Could potentially lead to a disqualification. Let's hope that's not the case for Alvarez. That would be a real shame for him because he was running so well. This could allow Daniel Amore in third into the fight here. It's still Ben Horner from Joel Dixon, Cohen, Charlie Cox, Teddy Cooper and Samir Paul. And just behind there you see Daniel Amore going into second position. Oh, not quite. It looks like Alvarez is fighting back. Can't look so okay for now. I think it's too badly damaged. There's the race leader, number 20, Joshua Turnbull, who all of a sudden has a nice clear run at the front of the field. Here he comes, down towards the Kimbolt corner for the final time. And Joshua Turnbull, in a very closely fought race, takes the chequered flag. Alvarez second. Just about, I think, there from Amore. And then it's Mikey Walker, Ben Horner, Joel Dixon Cohen, Charlie Cox, Teddy Cooper. Samir Paul, Owen Keenan, Ayman Banzel, Finley Jones, and Toby Bedford just a little bit further behind.
So we move on to race number 11. It's the senior Rotax B versus C to be an Alvarez. I think that's actually the, uh, the junior's look at the lineup in a few moments. So uh, senior Rotax getting underway in just a few moments. I think the track is now clear, so the driver should be out on track in just a few moments. Be Philip Rawson from Jack Collins, Pearson Bullock Carter who ran well in the first race, so we're starting near the front of the grid. Alexander Cole, Charlie Webb, Reg Hayward, Ewan Richards amongst others. So senior Rotax, and this is groups B versus C, due to the sheer numbers of Rotax that have entered this fourth round of the championship in both the junior and the senior classes, we have got three groups of drivers in these heat races, so there's three heat races, they'll all get the chance to race each other at some stage through the heat process. That takes us down with um, the final Rotax heat races a little later on, races 16 and 17 in your schedule. That'll be A versus C, some of the Group A drivers who sit out the second heat race, they'll be out later on in the third heat race, so they all get two heat races. And a bit later on in the programme, races 22 and 23 are the repercharge races for the juniors and seniors, respectively. So that'll be for the drivers who fail to get through to the final. So the drivers are in position. There is a stricken cart on the Yamitsu straight at the moment. So whether this start will go ahead, the marshals are very frantically trying to get that cart off the track at the moment. As we focus uh, one of the one or two of the midfield runners there, Liam Hartley, 191, 57, Peter Jurovic. The cart is now clear and the race gets underway. I think it was Rachel Robertson who's in trouble, but the cart off the track safely. Driver OK. Thinks it's just a mechanical problem there, but a great start there from Philip Rawson. Trouble at the back of the field. One or two drivers getting into trouble there. Bit of, uh, bit of a collision towards the back of the field, but uh, that's the number 41. I think is making a retirement there. 47, sorry, Cassius Death, who's uh, out of the race. But the leaders now make their way down the back straight for the first time. Great start there, I believe it's the... Uh, Number 19, we have a fight there for second place. So the race leader just getting the jump on the rest of the field here. It's the number 19 of Philip Rawson that takes the lead. Not showing up on the lap charts right now, but uh, we'll get that updated, I'm sure, as the race goes on. It's uh, Pearson, Bullock, Carter, Jack Collins, Alexander Cole right in there as well. Charlie Webb, Reg Hayward, Tom Pryor, Ryan Wardle fighting away. This is the fight for second place now with the number 31 of Alexander Cole. There's the uh, there's the number nine of Pearson Bullock Carter. Uh, warning flag a bit further down for the 10th place driver, Ralph Youngling. He's not had the best of days so far, but uh, looking to try and fight his way through the field. And still your race leader. Number 19 looking good at the front of the field, Pearson Bullock Carter still charging in second with 24, Charlie Webb in there as well. Number 19 then, still your race leader, not showing up on the uh, on the timing charts here, still showing as... Um, whether it's missed a lap on the timing charts that'll be updated of course by the lap scorers later on more than think but uh, Philip Rawson still your race leader looking at the number 24 here of Charlie Webb who's staying just ahead of Alexander Cole Philip Rawson still continues to lead the way it's, uh, for some reason the uh, the car not showing on the transponder systems so well, I'm sure that will be uh, that'll be picked up later on Alexander Cole then up to third Charlie Webb into second position there goes the leader Rawson just out of a shot and there's number 17 Ryan Ward looking strong towards the front of the field currently in seventh place from Ewan Richards Reg Hayward in there as well the 114 in there is Ozaki Hussein fighting with George Allen just on the edge of the top ten we cut back to the uh, the fight for the lead so still Philip Rawson that leads the way, Charlie Webb, Alexander Cole, and then just on the edge of the top ten, some really close fighting there towards the uh, the midfield there with Hussein, Hartley, Jurovic, Cornwell all fighting, Boriak in there as well. Number 14 is Scott Goldsby, currently in 18th position. But of course, in these heat races, every position matters. These, uh, these drivers desperately trying to make sure they progress to the A final as easy as possible. Jack Collins there, currently in 8th place. 
with Ewan Richards and Reg Hayward, both those drivers uh, finally poised so far. Uh, still your race leader, number 19, Philip Rawson, charges over the line on his own somewhat right now. Driver under investigation in the midfield is the uh, 113 of Joe Fox, currently in uh, 25th position as we're getting close here for second place though with uh, Charlie Webb coming under some real pressure from Alexander Cole right now. Here's some bullet cards are charging in fourth. The leader now well clear of all this. It's exactly the situation you would want at the front of the field as the race leader because he's now well clear of this fight for second place. Charlie Webb, Alexander Cole, and Pearson Bullet Carter all looking very close here as they make their way down towards the uh, Kim Bolton corner. A bit further back, there's the 1 3 3. That's a midfield fight there with uh, Lucas Theo, Elliot Hugh, and Isaac Reynolds all fighting for position. As the battle for second place charging down into the Stowe corner. So race leader Philip Rawson well clear of this fight. As you can see on the gap graphic there on the top left hand screen. The gap four seconds between this fight for second. And Philip Rawson will be delighted with this. He's running his own race at the very he's already well clear of our camera crew as the fight for second place really starts to hot up here. Charlie Webb still in second. Alexander Cole Pearson Bullock Carter. Uh, what these drivers don't want to do here is to get into trouble and uh, certainly no margin for having an accident here because that would drop them way down the reckoning and potentially put them in the repercharge races for later on so it's it's almost knowing whether to stick or twist right now technical flag further down the field for the 113 of joe fox who we uh, saw the flag for earlier so it was evidently picked up some kind of damage as we focus on this fantastic scrap for second position here Rawson now, well, there he goes, Rawson, he uh, just threw a fleeting glance of him. As you look a little bit further back at the 7-11, further down the field there, making his way through. Well, Philip Rawson, well clear of this close fight for second place, that's exactly where he wants to be. 1.34 on the clock, Rawson already over the line. And the scrap for second place charges down into Stoke Corner once again, it's still Charlie Webb. Webb guarding that inside line, the driver starts to get their teeth out of here, oh, three, oh, three abreast through the corner, that was going to go wrong, they lock wheels there, the 21, and I think that was the number nine of Pearson Bullock Carter, three abreast going through Stoke Corner, and the unfortunate Tom Pryor locking wheels, both drivers are okay, and I think have continued in the race, Wow, that was getting very tight there, and it was uh, potentially going to go wrong there. Ralph Youngling leading that group of drivers on the edge of the top ten. As we look at the number 31 of Alexander Cole, now clear in third place. So, uh, Rawson already clear over the line. I think we'll get through before the uh, last lap, so we've got, still got two more laps to go. And still at, right on the edge of the top ten, making their way through. The midfield runners charging out of the Combolt corner. Further down there, Jonathan Relton. Pearson Bullock Carter's recovered into 18th place after that tangle. He's just gone through. And Tom Pryor in 24. So two of our this is the risk that you take though in such a close fought race in the, uh, the qualifying in the heat race stages. All of a sudden they find themselves relegated down to the midfield, so that could put their uh, if nothing else, really puts the pressure onto the next heat race to make sure they get through to the A final without having to go to the rapid charge races later on. There's your race leader. So it's still number 19, Philip Rawson, who's led this race quite comfortably. He's let all the action go through behind him. Rawson making his way through Derek's corner. There's some more of the midfield tussles. They make their way down through the uh, through Stoke corner, through the Willows. And they can see the fight for second place. That camera angle just gives you an idea what a nice gap Philip Rawson's got. It's over five seconds right now. Next time round, we'll be getting the last lap board going out. And it's ideal here for Philip Rawson, who is well clear of this fight for second place. And we see on the inset, there's Rawson over the line to take the last lap board. As you focus on the left-hand screen of the fight for second, they're only just going over the line now. So, uh, Philip Rawson, who's going through Stowe right now, 5.2 seconds the gap between him and Charlie Webb in second. And there you see the camera angle just demonstrating what a nice gap Philip Rawson has got between first and the chasing pack behind him in second as the camera run pans away. We see the fight for second and all of a sudden because of that uh, incident earlier on that's allowed Charlie Webb to pull a small gap in second. Alexander Cole with a bit of pressure here from Ryan Ward. Jack Collins, Ralph Youngling who's running well number 125 up to sixth position as the chequered flag goes out. Perfect race there for Philip Rawson.
from lights to flag, you would say. It's going to be Charlie Webb in second, Alexander Cole in third, Ryan Ward, Jack Collins, Ralph Youngling, Ewan Richards, Reg Hayward, Liam Hartley in ninth, George Allen in tenth, James Tester, Zaki Hussein, Peter Jurovic in thirteenth, from Samuel Cornwell, Scott Goldby, Pacek Bavoriak in sixteenth, from Pearson Bullock Carter recovering from the accident to seventeenth. Jonathan Railton, Elliot Pugh and Tom Pryor, 21, another one who's caught up in an incident, will recover into 20th position. So we're going to move on very shortly to our Honda 200s on the track in just a few moments. Second heat race for the Honda 200s in association with iZone driver performance getting underway in just a moment. This is how they line up. It's Kevin Ivanov from Theo Hamilton, Ryan White, Riley Blakemore, Elliot Bork, Judas Kovacic, and we've got Paul Brookhammer and Knox on row number four, Otto Amy, Jackson Heath, Bo Winslade, and Rebecca Restel on row six, George Johnson, Soy Henderson, Jerry Duffersey, and Aurora Joel, William Davison, Reggie Duffersey and Rafi Branscombe lining up at the back of the field so uh, Branscombe at the back there looking for better fortunes in this second heat race as they make their way out onto the track for their formation lap this is race number 12 of our 32 race program at this uh, wonderful Kim Bolton circuit weather has been very kind to us today and we've seen some great racing out there as the drivers make their way down towards TKM straight all starting to form up into position before this heat race gets underway even off then guarding the uh, taking the inside line And here we go, our second heat race for the Honda 200s gets underway. Well, not quite, there's a wave round and they'll go around for another formation lap with Kevin Ivanov and Bill Hamilton side by side. This is the second time that we see the Honda 200 in action today. They'll have their final race number 24 later on this afternoon. So uh, this will be a very important race right now in terms of the grid positions for the final. Ivanov looking to continue his streak in the championship. Theo Hamilton looks strong in the first race. Watch out for that drive on the left-hand side of your screen there. Had the black flag in the first race. Ralphie Branscombe will be looking to recover in heat number two as it gets underway this time the start is clean and Ivanov guarding the inside line into the first corner very tight oh bit of bang in there towards the back of the field and number 30 loses out there Theo Hamilton one of the front runners in this race one would say and he recovers right at the back of the field so drama there on the first corner with Theo Hamilton dropping out of contention Having to fight through the field now, and Kevin Ivanov emerges at the front, and it looks like Ryan White, I think, in second position. And uh, Branscombe, who was saying about trying to get a good start, he's gone away quite nicely. Now uh, already picking away some of the back markers in the field, looking to get through towards the sharp end at the end of that first lap. There's the uh, 28 of Bo Winslade. And here we see that first corner again. Here they come, so it was four abreast going through the... Uh, Stowe corner and unfortunately Hamilton was on the outside didn't get the best of drives down into the first corner 
and coming off worse as they make their way sets off in pursuit there number 24 Reggie Duffersey back to the front though and look at this Ryan White is starting to put the pressure on Kevin Ivanoff as they make their way up towards the Dan Weldon corner nice line out to the corner there from White but Ivanoff has the line covered as they make their way down the TKM straight through towards Kestrel corner Ivanov guarding that apex very neatly as there's trouble towards the back of the field. A couple of drivers spinning off, but the race goes on. It's not going to affect us too much, but um, Ivanov leading from White. And look how closely White is following the race leader here. We've still got Kovacic in third. There's the uh, casualty from that incident at the top of the circuit. That's the number 31 in trouble there. William Davidson has been unable to get away. I think it may have been Reggie Duffersey, the other driver that was caught up in that melee, the, the uh, waved yellows towards the top of the circuit where the leaders are coming through to. Now you see the unfortunate number 31 stepping out of the cart. Both drivers are OK, but they're just going to have to hold position here because they've got two stricken carts on the side of the circuit. Now back under the green flag. So I think that was also uh, Reggie Duffersey that was in trouble. Both drivers OK, but uh, the marshals will look to uh, get those carts clear off the track and make sure it's fully clear for racing as they make their way through. But we are still very much under green flag conditions on this part of the track as Ryan White, we've got uh, Kovacic in, uh, I guess in third. Elliot Ball, Riley Blakemore, Ollie Knox, Otto Amy in seventh. Ryan, Ralphie Branscombe's having a good comeback here. Uh, Branscombe now into eighth position. You'll see that pink helmet towards the, uh, the back of the camera shot there. Fighting with Otto Amy and Ollie Knox. Bo Winslade in ninth. George Johnston in tenth position with Jack Paul Brakama, Aurora Joel, Rebecca Restall, Soy Henderson, Jackson Heath. Theo Hamilton having a good comeback as well. He's already got past Jerry Duffersey up to 16th position. And it appears there you see on the side of the, of the camera shot there, William Davison and Reggie Duffersey both out of the race. So I'll keep an eye on the lap charts here for, uh, in particular, for Ralphie Branscombe and Theo Hamilton as they look to fight their way through the field. They've still got 3 minutes 40 on the clock as the rest of the top 10 go charging through. Here come our leaders down towards the uh, snow corner. Some great race back from these young drivers and especially here from Ryan White in second place is keeping the pressure on Kevin Ivanov. He's still got uh, Kovacis in third position as the two unfortunate drivers walking away there. The two retirements of uh, William Davison and Reggie Duffersey. The race goes on, the track now clear and heading on down towards the TKM straight. Let's see what's Ryan White going to do. Can he find an opening from Kevin Ivanov? Ivanov's looking very strong at the moment. He's a uh, single cylinder Honda four stroke engines. Of course, they are sealed as well, so uh, restrictions on the tuning and the uh, development of the engines, but these are many much race engines. They're based on the old Honda single cylinder four stroke engine that uh, you see a lot of the similar type of engines, maybe not. Uh, so well looked after one might say but uh, see a lot of these engines in the corporate karting world and the twin engines in pro karts very tough reliable engine and uh, you can see with these lighter smaller drivers in they really do carry some good pace right now the drivers lapping in the 48 second regions right now we see Kevin Ivanov Ryan White pretty much identical on pace right now Gavekis in third from Bork, Riley Blakemore, Ralphie Branscombe now up to sixth position. And you just saw Branscombe sneaking into the back of the camera shot there, so a good comeback from Branscombe. Jack Bulbacana on the move, and uh, Theo Hamilton breaking into the top ten after that spin on the first corner. So one or two of the uh, fancy drivers in this class starting to fight their way through the field quite nicely. Kevin Ivanov still holding on to that lead though from Ryan White. Here is Kovekis in third, just about a second behind as the rest of the top ten making their way through. Uh, looking here at the uh, number 94 right now, that's uh, Jack Paul Bacama from Otto Amy, Ollie Knox. And Theo Hamilton right in there as well. So Hamilton into the top ten, of course, and recovering. This is what it's all about sometimes. You'll maybe get nerfed off on the first corner through no fault of your own, but it's just a case of keeping a cool head. Just getting back to work, and that's what Hamilton's doing right now. He's uh, really recovered quite nicely, and we see this battle on the edge of the top ten, making their way down. There's the number 77, Otto Amy. And um, Hamilton not too far behind. Ivanov still leading from Ryan White, getting very close to the front of the field. There we just saw them going through. 
But uh, Covid Kiss in third, Bork in fourth, Branscombe in fifth, and Ralphie Branscombe incidentally has set the fastest lap of the race. There you see it on your graphic, 48.11. Really motoring quite nicely right now. He's just ahead of uh, Riley Blakemore and that drive we just saw a moment ago, number 94, Jack Paul Bracama. Otto Amy coming under a real pressure now from Theo Hamilton who recovered from the back of the field up to ninth position now and down the inside of Amy he goes so Hamilton up to eighth position now the lead is making their way down to the first corner and it's getting tight between Ryan White and Kevin Ivanoff and there we go White takes the lead momentarily but Ivanoff fights back on the exit of Stowe Corner they charge through the Willows so White just trying to put the pressure on Ivanoff trying to urge um, he's trying to get Ryan White to work with him here but White's uh, not going to listen he's going to go and try and fight for the lead again Ivanoff's trying to guard that lead Ivanoff I think is wanting White to drive with him a little bit here he's weighing him on a little bit because he knows that the other drivers are catching up but uh, White is not listening to him whatsoever he wants the lead for himself he's not too bothered about bringing the other drivers into this one we've got one more lap to go at the end of this one the last lap board lap now board. being readied all the time here Carbigas and Borg, even Ralphie Branscombe starting to catch up here. There you see the chasing drivers as again White has a look. And I think Ivanov's realised now that the gloves are off here as they make their way through the willows for the final time. Look out for Kubekis and Borg Branscombe also in there as well. Third, fourth and fifth just starting to get involved in this one. If these two leaders start to tangle a bit, I think the uh, chasing pack could get involved for the victory here. It's going to be a fight to the line here. Ivanov guards the apex going through the Dan Weldon corner for the final time. Down the TKM straight they go. And what's Ryan White going to do here? Can he do anything about Ivanov here? They come in towards the final corner. White's having a peek down the inside, but Ivanov's got the line covered. And White goes wide looking for the drive out of the corner, but it's not going to be enough. Kevin Ivanov takes the checkered flag by six tenths of a second from Ryan White. Ralphie Branscombe, a great fight for him from last to third position. So Branscombe, brilliant drive for third place. Probably it takes four. Elliot Bork, Riley Blakemore, Jack Paul Bacama, Theo Hamilton, another good comeback for him into eighth position. Otto Amy and Ollie Knox, so you see the number 43 there. A little further down are Rebecca Restall, who's very close to the edge of the top ten, actually. Otto Amy from Ollie Knox. Aurora Joel, Bo Winslade in 12th. Jackson Heath, Soy Henderson, George Johnston. And Rebecca Restall with the uh, moving on, of course, in just a few moments for KZ UK. They're in the waiting zone for race number 13 and will be underway in just a few moments. KZUK getting underway in just a moment for their second heat race. Find some Murphy, Ward and Stevens. Uh, Anna Langbo, Phillips. And others. We'll look out for the uh, driver starting towards the back of the field and the, uh, the ninth row there. Look out for Nat Thomas, number 70, who crashed out of the first race whilst charging and fighting for the lead. So Thomas uh, evidently has got that cart prepared. And we'll be able to get out and hopefully get a good start, stay out of trouble and start to get some good points heading towards the final later on this afternoon. So this is race number 13 of the 32 races, KZUK final race number 25 a bit later on in the programme.
And these, of course, the shifter carts, they run on the uh, the full length of the Amitsu straight on the back straight. Omitting Derek's corner, they run straight through into Dan Weldon corner, much like the two tens, which we'll see next, of course. And like the two tens, they also have a standing start. So the drivers now getting themselves into position. We had some uh, trouble in the first race, of course, where the, the grids weren't fully uh, formed on the first go. He lost a couple of drivers on the, uh, on the formation lap, of course, which didn't help things. So hopefully we'll get a bit more of a, an organised start this time. I think Richard Palmer's back in the race. He was the one who had trouble on the, uh, on the first race. So you see the drivers now in position. Standing start, of course. The, uh, the red flag is out, so the drivers awaiting starters orders whilst they sort themselves out at the back of the field and you'll see our grid marshal there just at the back from the Hunscart Racing Club just making sure the last two drivers are in position I think they're about right you see the grids are staggered slightly just to uh, the interest of safety in case there's any uh, stallers so they can lease each other the grid looks good and we are ready to go the lights are on four lights and out, away we go. And a drag race to the first corner between Miles Murphy and Josh Price. Price has got the line into the corner and emerges at the front. Sam Ward in there as well. They all get through Stoke Corner cleanly, charging through the Willows for the first time. And charging down Yumitsu straight, topping out almost at 100 miles an hour. There's number 18 in there as well. Bo Phillips has had a good start, just with number 16, Jake Weston. Daniel Chabula in there as well. Trouble at the back of the field though. A bit of a collision there. We just saw in the corner of the camera. We'll identify who those drivers are in a few moments as they make their way down towards the start finish line. Over the line they go. So it's Price from Murphy. Stevens in third. Sam Ward. And there's one of the casualties of that first court, first lap incident. I'm just trying to get the number on that one. Just want to say that Nat Thomas has had a good start. The driver who was talking about who crashed out of the first race got through to 10th at the end of the first lap and so there's going to be Wade Yellows here as the leaders go through past that stricken driver and I think it's uh, Edgar Misvicius uh, number 24 who's the driver who's left behind in the tyre barriers there's Wade Yellows out there I think he's got a cart out of the barriers but there's tyres strewn everywhere it took quite a wallop into the barriers so Matitis another driver caught up in the melee as well but has continued in the race but it's still Josh Price, number two from Sam Ward, and Ella Stevens getting involved in this one as well. There's Stevens, number five, as they make their way through to the top corner. Well, the flags are in, so the marshals have been able to clear up that trouble on the first lap. Sam Ward in fourth, Bo Phillips, Hannah Lang, Jake Whiston, Sam Johns, Daniel Chabula, and Matt Thomas on the edge of the top ten as well. A little bit further behind, it's uh, Klimas from Ryan Green, Ryan Garvey, James Harvey, Isaac Smith in there just in that chasing group very close in this KZUK race so far but look at this it's still Josh Price that leads Miles Murphy in second but look out for Ella Stevens in third place Stevens setting the fastest lap of the race and having a look as they make their way up towards the Dan Weldon corner once again Stevens looks threatening at the moment in this three-way tussle for the lead Sam Ward and Bo Phillips a little bit further behind Hannah Lang in six Jake Weston Sam Johns Daniel Tabula and Matt Thomas still fighting on the edge of the top ten. Here come the leaders out of Kim Bolton corner. And over the line they go once again. They're still as you were amongst the top three though. Price from Murphy and this time Miles Murphy sets the fastest lap of the race. The track really is bedding in very nicely for these KZUK carts. And all three of these drivers at the front lapping just a shade over 36 seconds. They're circulating quite nicely out there and running a very fast pace at the front, preventing, of course, Sam Ward and Bo Phillips from getting involved in this fight for the lead, even though they're not too far behind. And there we see a little bit further down the number 27 of Amy Joga from Richard Palmer, James Harvey, those drivers fighting out for 15th position. Action throughout the field then in the second KZUK heat race. And there we see the drivers on the edge of the top 10 all making their way through that Thomas Ryan Green, Ryan. Garvey moving up to 13 from uh, Zalvinas Climas. Amy Joger in there as well. But still, your race leader, number two, Josh Price with Miles Murphy. And Ella Stevens charging all the time. The lap pace has got even quicker. They're lapping into the 35s right now. 35.86, fastest lap of the race for Ella Stevens. 
So a very fast-paced race at the front here in the KZUK. Not much in terms of overtaking right now, but these top three drivers really running a very fast pace at the front here. We've still got three minutes to go, plus the one lap remaining, so I wonder perhaps if nobody's too keen to go for a move right now. They know how fast they're going out there. And look how close they are, the top three. Nobody really making a fight for position right now. There's still a long way to go in this race, comparatively speaking. We've still got two minutes 52 on the clock, so there's a few more laps to go here. A little further down, there's the number 17 actually out there. Uh, Richard Palmer recovering well into 15th place. Uh, you may remember that Richard Palmer was a non-starter in the first race. The cart failed on the formation lap, so uh, Palmer starting at the back of the field and has recovered well to 15th position. So that could help him going into the final later on. There's the midfield runners making their way down into the first corner. Uh, the likes of Bradley Calder up to 17th place now, number 19, James Harvey, Amy Joga drops to 18th position. Not the race that she wanted, Jason Baker, uh, Vilis Samaitis in 20th, Jake Baker, Mazzelis um, of course out of the race. Meanwhile the leaders making their way over the line. That marker moves to one side to let them go through. Two minutes plus one lap remaining in this one and Josh Price continues to lead the way. They've just lapped the 24, Edgris Zivijus. Right. And uh, so he moves to one side. That was the driver caught up in the uh, the first lap melee. I'm sure that Semititis has also uh, recovered a few places as well in 20th position. And here they come, the three leaders, 1.35 on the clock, still at midfield tussle there. We see the number 27 of Amy Joga with Bradley Calder, James Harvey. And Zilvinus Klimas up there as well, but uh, Josh Price continues to lead the way. The top three now really start to break away. The lap time's tumbling all the time here. Miles Murphy with another fastest lap of the race here, 35.52. So the cart's really bedding in nicely to this Kimbolton circuit. All of the top ten lapping under 36 seconds right now. So that pace really is picking up as the race goes on. We've got one minute. Plus the one lap remaining, so they'll squeeze another couple of laps in here. A bit further down, the battle in the midfield there. There's James Harvey with uh, number 26 there. Bradley Calder, Amy Jurger in there as well, number 27 at the back of that little fight. She's currently in 18th position. So the top 10 made up are Josh Price, Miles Murphy, Alice Stevens, Sam Ward in 4th, Jake Weston, Bo Phillips in 6th, Hannah Lang in 7th, Matt Thomas up to 8th position, Sam Johns in 9th and Daniel Chibula rounding up the top 10. So uh, those top 10 drivers all lapping incredibly quickly right now. It's a very fast-paced race out there. Lead is now coming in towards the final corner. Ooh, we'll look at there possibly in second, but here they come out of the last corner. 22 seconds on the clock. So this is the penultimate lap of the race. KZUK heat race number two. And Josh Price has led pretty much the entire race. Miles Murphy's best lap of the race, 35.52. They're all lapping very quickly under 36 seconds right now. The top three very close. Again, you can see just ever so slightly the, uh, the lap times dropping by a few tenths here and there. Still that battle on the uh, edge of the top 15, charging through the uh, through slow corner, through the willows. Action throughout this case in UK race then as the last lap board goes out. And it's still Josh Price that leads the way. And now this could be the moment as Ella Stevens tries to make a move. Murphy guards the inside line. Stevens down the inside but has to back out of it as Murphy has the line, so still stays as you were. That little move there from Ella Stevens just allows Josh Price to pull away slightly at the front. Stevens really had to try and make that one work, but Murphy dug in and shut the door, going out of the Stoke corner. Midfield battle still fighting away. Meanwhile, Josh Price ran the final corner. It's been such a close race. But Price takes the chequered flag, Murphy in second, and Ella Stevens in third. The top three covered by six tenths of a second. Fight to the line for four from Sam Ward, Jake Weston, Matt Thomas up to sixth, Sam Johns, Daniel Chibul up to eighth, and Ryan Green, another driver who's had a good comeback up to ninth position, making up ten positions. Hannah Lang rounds up the top ten from Bo Phillips, Isaac Smith, Richard Palmer, Ryan Garvey. Venus Kymus, Bradley Calder in 16th, James Harvey and Amy Joga having a close battle in that midfield fight as well. We're going to move on, of course, to the air-cooled Warriors coming up next. The 210 Challenge are in the waiting zone and we're back on track in just a few moments. But what a great race there from Josh Price, winning from Miles from, uh, Murphy and Ella Stevens.
Oh, then that's the unfortunate number 17, Richard Palmer, who's um, well, he's finished the race though in 13th, so uh, looks like he's hit some trouble again, but at least was able to finish the race. And there's a couple of carts just been recovered from the track. will be underway very shortly with the 210 Challenge. Out onto the track we go then with our new class for the fourth round of the championship. It's the uh, part of the 210 Challenge Series. This is the first time we've seen these carts this year here at Kim Bolton. It's been uh, a great addition to the programme. This is part of their national series. They go to a variety of circuits throughout the UK. Tony Berry leading them away from Stuart Henry, Anthony Cox, Paul Fowler, Thomas Stone, Dan Berry, John Hutton and Michael Owen, Robert Perkins... First race winner, Lionel Seifleet, Ray Sloan, Chris Callaghan, David Skull, Mark Shepard, Russell Hopes and William Shelley rounding out the eighth row with Peter Masson and Oliver Shelley making up the final of our 18 drivers. So, uh, say Lionel Seifleet winner of the challenge for the last four years and looking very good in the first race. So the... Uh, these carts powered by the air-cooled two-stroke engines, the Pavilliers E-Series engines, which was one of the earliest power plants for karting. And you see some of the carts, with them, compared to the modern ones, very minimal bodywork on them. They haven't even got the nose cones, a lot of them out there. Some of them are a bit more modern appearance, you might say, but they've all got the similar sort of power engine on there. As well as here, they go to um, the likes of Forest Edge, Fulbrecht, Rissington, and Shennington as well in the Midlands, another old school karting track. So, uh, in the same fashion as the KZ UK karts, these uh, 210 challengers will also be starting with a standing start. And here they come up towards the line to go out for the second heat race of the day. There we just saw the number 44 of Anthony Cox, who uh, got caught up in an incident in the first race. Hoping for better luck this time round. I have to say, it does smell really like a treat out there. The Castrolar wafting in the air from his old school. The, you can see the air-cooled two-stroke machines. No radiators, no cooling systems on these apart from the air-cooled on the cylinders. And away we go! They all seem to go away cleanly. And number four, Stuart Henry leads them down into the first corner. A bit of trouble at the back for number 72, Michael Owen has struggled to get away. And I think might be pulling into the pits, but the race goes on. Another stricken driver at the front uh, in the, the grid there is the number 32, John Hutton, who ran well at the start of the first race. So it looks like had a couple of um, early retirements from this race, unfortunately. Here they come down towards the final corner through to Kim Bolton for the first time. So uh, we'll keep an eye out, of course, on Lionel Seifleet, number one. The series champion who ran very well in the first race. Number five running through also very strong as well. Dan Berry at the start. And, oh, trouble there for number seven. That's Tony Berry out of contention on the back straight. That's on the uh, TKM straight going down into Kestrel Corner. So there's been a little bit of attrition here in this uh, second 2.10 race. A few cars dropping out already in the, in the early stages, but Robert Perkins has got away very nicely at the front, and Perkins was looking very strong in the morning warm-up in the qualifying this morning. Goes past the stricken number seven of Tony Berry, so we've got 15 carts left in this race.
John Hudson and Michael Owen out on the first lap as well but uh, Robert Perkins leading the way charging in second it looks like Dan Berry still there Thomas Stone, Stuart Henry, Paul Fowler, Lionel Seifley, winner of the first race up to seventh position. Now I'm looking out for Chris Callaghan who's in fifth position, who led for much of the first race. We've got five minutes ten plus the one lap end. There's the early leader of the first race, number 30, Chris Callaghan. Just getting past number four as down the inside goes Seifley. That's the number four of Stuart Henry, who... Uh, Gets passed there by Lionel Seifleet. Seifleet, of course, the driver to look out for you. would say at the sharp end of the field. Having to start from a little bit further down the field this time. So we've got a little bit of work to do here. As they make their way over the line to complete the lap. It's still Perkins leading. Berry in second place. Thomas Stone, Chris Callahan, and Lionel Seifleet. Of Paul Fowler and the number 41 of Russell Hopes. Currently in eighth position. Ninth for Peter Masson and Ray Sloan rounding out the top ten. Rest of the field made up of David Skull, Anthony Cox, Mark Shepard, William Shelley, and Oliver Shelley, last of the 15 drivers remaining in this race. We've lost Tony Berry, John Hudson, and Michael Owen, all three drivers seeing some kind of uh, mechanical issues, it would seem, as we watch the number two here of Thomas Stone. Coming under pressure now, though, from the number 30 of Chris Callaghan. And right behind Callaghan is his rival from the first race, number one, Seifley, to. Oh, he's going to try and follow Callaghan through on this corner, I think. But no, it's... Uh, he's... I tell you what, Thomas Stone wasn't going to give that one up lightly at all. And he's going to make uh, going to make Seifert work for this one. Seifert was hoping to try and follow him through the Stoke corner. And again, look at this. Thomas Stone putting up quite a fight here. And he's certainly making Seifert work for this one. So he's not respecting the number one plate at all here. They're racing for position on track. And Lionel's going to have to work for this one. I think it's allowing Chris Callahan to pull away slightly. It's good news for Robert Perkins here, who continues to lead the race by 2.1 seconds from Dan Berry. Thomas Stone still in third. There's Callaghan in fourth. And this time, Lionel Seifleet makes the move, stick down the inside as they go into Stoke Corner. So Seifleet now into fourth position. Callaghan in third. And there you see Callaghan just ahead, number 30. Second place, Dan Berry, just popping out of view there as they go through in towards the Dan Weldon corner. Race leader already heading towards Kestrel corner, the final part of the lap. So with 2.55 on the clock plus the one lap remaining, Robert Perkins, the race leader, looking quite strong at the front of the field because uh, I think that um, Chris Callagher and Lionel Seifert, the driver we're looking at now, will both really have to make up some ground to get towards the race leader. And then they go to try and get past Dan Berry in second place as well. He's running very strongly in second position. So uh, we'll see how they get on as they charge through the willows. There's Callaghan charging through. This is a repeat of the first race, and they were battling for the lead here. And Callaghan coming under pressure now from Seifleet as they make their way through towards Dan Weldon corner. Seifleet really going to try and get past Callaghan now if he's going to try and challenge for the lead he goes and tries the outside but uh, Callaghan guards the apex going in towards the Kestrel corner through Kim Bolton they go and Callaghan running very well as he looks to try and guard that third place from Saifu who again looks strong out of the final corner and will try for the breaking move going into Stowe the first corner but Callaghan guards that inside line and making him work once again still Perkins your race leader Berry in second. There they go. Just lapping the number 44 of Anthony Cox in 12th place. And there is the third place driver, Chris Callaghan. Still fending off Lionel Seifert, winner of the first one. Who goes on to the, uh, the curbing there, trying to get every inch of the Kimbolton circuit that he can to get the drive out of the corner. But he still can't find a way through here. Chris Callaghan guarding that third position. Keeping Seifert behind him. Robert Perkins leading. Dan Berry in second place. Still Callaghan third. Lionel Seifert, rest of the top ten made up of Thomas Stone. He's just gone through in fifth place. Paul Fowler in sixth position. Russell Hopes, Stuart Henry, and Peter Masson in ninth. And Ray Sloan running up the top ten. I think he's just about the, uh, the last driver on the lead lap. Mark Sheffield, eleventh. Anthony Cox and Oliver Shelley, 52. The final driver left in the race, currently in 13th position. Uh, lost David Skull and William Shelley earlier on. Uh, Oliver Shelley... Just running at a bit of a reduced pace at the moment, but still keeping going in this race. 
Meanwhile, over the race, uh, over the finish line goes the race leader, Robert Perkins. We're just looking at uh, Lionel Sipe, who just seems to fall fallen back slightly as they lap the number 10. That's uh, Mark Shepard currently in 11th place. There's your race leader, Robert Perkins. So 25 seconds on the clock here, and it looks like Perkins will go through to the last lap next time round. And still comfortably staying ahead of the second place driver, still the number five, Dan Berry. Berry just a little bit further behind. And crucially for these two drivers is that uh, the charging third and fourth place still some uh, distance back. There is the number eight of Ray Sloan, who's the final driver on the lead lap. As Robert Perkins goes down the inside to lap him and takes the last lap forward. There's the number five in second, Dan Berry. Berry looking comfortable in second, Callahan third. And it looks like uh, Lionel Seifert has dropped back quite considerably now. Oh! Just out of camera shot, I can tell you that Lionel Seifert's car has expired. And this is on the penultimate corner at Kestrel. So the winner of the first race is seemingly out of contention. We're going to watch the number three, Robert Perkins, here. There's number 31. Peter Massa and there we just saw on the side of the track was Lionel Seifleet so late drama here and that means that Robert Perkins takes the checkered flag race win then for Robert Perkins superb race for him Dan Berry in second place and Chris Callaghan takes third position number 30 Thomas Stone is going to finish in fourth position there he goes number two and looks like it's going to be Paul Fowler So Fowler in fifth, Russell Hopes, number 41, in sixth position, there he goes. Uh, number four, Stuart Henry, and uh, Peter Masson rounding up the final drivers on the lead lap. Ray Sloan in ninth place, Mark Shepard in tenth. And looks like Lionel, Sly Lionel Syfley will end up being credited with eleventh position, not where he would have wanted to be, Anthony Cox and Oliver Shelley. So, um, oh no, Seifley dropping down to 12th at the end there. So, uh, unfortunate luck for the number one. The reigning champion dropping out of contention that second heat race. I'll pull him a little bit further back for the, the finals later on today. But a great win there for the number three of Robert Perkins, who looked in top form throughout that second heat race. Moving on to the TKM Extremes in just a few moments. So just waiting for the last couple of um, 210 challenge carts to be uh, removed back to the paddock. Spence Lane will lead away the TKM Extremes from Adam Sparrow, Jamie Mead, James Morley, Leah Robinson, Bradley Peck, Kim Bennett and Charlie Whitehouse, Kai Springfield from Patrick Lee, Joseph Booth, Johan Kalichern, Liv Jakins, Luke Jarman, James Whitaker, and Oliver Bowen on row eight. Al Patterson from Harrison Morrow, Mitchell Ball, Sean Abbott, Ilio Lissandro, Luke Woodward, Jack Stewart and William Bryant on row number 12. And the rest of the field made up of James Monroe, Gemma Kitty, William Bloom, Jessica Fitchhall, Reese Porter, Harry Higgs, Jake Cox, Thomas Shaw, Ashley Ruggles and Matt Caldwell as the premix flies into the air. Another seven minute plus one lap heat race about to get underway. This is the second time of the day for the TKM Extreme Race number 15 of our 32 race programme. Coming up after this, we have uh, another return of the Rotaxes. This is the junior and senior Rotax coming up next, groups A versus C. As we say, of course, three groups of Rotax today because of the uh, the numbers that have entered. So there is an extra heat race coming up after this. So in association with Plaza Motorsport, the TKM Extreme is about to get underway for their second heat race of the day. 
the 26 down there of course the driver had a bit of bad luck earlier on Cox and uh, away they go charging over the line and into the first corner they go very tight through there but they all seem to get through cleanly good start there and another one to look out for as well is the number 42 of uh, Thomas Shaw who had that nasty crash in the first heat race when the car went spinning in mid-air after he clouted the tyre barriers uh, so good to see the sh Shaw's okay I think it would have really winded him because the car really did slam down onto the tarmac in that first race but he's there at the back of the field looking to try and make his way through some of the mid-pack as the race goes on but it's uh, very close at the front here we saw much the same in heat number one and we're almost seeing a replay here with the, here they come over the line it's the 97 this time that takes the lead of Jamie Mead from Spencer Lane Adam Sparrow so almost a replay of race number one although this time it's Jamie Mead at the front of the field a warning flag on the first lap for the number 36 of Leo Robinson who's currently in fourth place so just a brief warning there for Robinson but uh, no penalty as of yet the race goes on as Adam Sparrow very neatly moves into second place there from Spencer Lane and trying to close the gap on Jamie Mead right now as they make their way down the TKM straight once again towards Kestrel Corner. So it's Mead in the lead. That rhymes uh, Spencer Lane and uh, Adam Sparrow very close behind. And of course Sparrow into second place right now. So Jamie Mead down towards the first corner, number 97, your race leader. And it looks to me like Leo Robinson has moved into third place. Spencer Lane and running up the top five is the number 77 of James Morley. Kai Springfield in there. The Han Kalichern, incidentally. Eighth position, number 28, who we should just see at the back of the screen there, has set the fastest lap of the race, 43.63. So uh, Kalichern actually moving up a few places into eighth position right now. We just saw him there going through the uh, Dan Weldon corner. At the front though, Jamie Mead continues to guard that lead, but look how close it is here. The top six or seven, very close still with four and a half minutes plus the one lap remaining. They charge over the line. And Mead just holding on to the uh, first position right now as they go piling through the uh, through the willows. Very close indeed. Now, what's Adam Sparrow going to do here? Is he going to go for a move into Derek's corner? Has a look down the inside. Very neat from him there and makes the move stick. So Adam Sparrow is your new race leader. Well, that's how you do it. You just get down to the inside line, position the carp correctly and just take the apex away from the rival. But uh, Jamie Mead trying to fight back right now. We've still got Leo Robinson looking strong in third position. So Mead not giving that first position up lightly as they go back over the line four minutes plus the one lap remaining so still plenty of time in this race Mead down the inside classic out breaking manoeuvre and there he goes back into the watch out for Robinson here can he take the pass as well no Adam Sparrow holds on to that second place so Jamie Mead back at the front again certainly not giving the lead up lightly and Leo Robinson will certainly be wanted to get involved in this race James Morley looking good in fourth position setting his own personal best in that previous lap Kian Bennett incidentally down in uh, eighth position has set the fastest lap of the race 43.1 so they're all running a very close pace here Robinson goes down into second place through Kim Bolton corner makes the move stick quite neatly James Morley right in there as well and the number 11 Spencer Lane there in fifth place James Booth Kai Springfield all very close this is what you would say is a classic karting race here all the carts pretty evenly matched of course and running at a very even pace as uh, Robinson has a look for the lead this time so another new leader it's the number 36 of Leo Robinson that takes the lead still with three minutes plus one lap to go and any one of about at least five or six drivers I think could potentially win this race still too close to call it's almost like a cycling peloton here at the front here with everyone running at the front having their turn at the front of the field and again into the lead goes Jamie Mead your early race leader they pile back into position the others the rest of the top 10 closing up on this leading group now as well so the likes of uh, Joseph Booth, Kim Bennett, Kai Springfield, Johan Kalichern and Bradley Peck all getting involved in this tussle for the lead but this time the race leader is as it was at the start of the race Jamie Mead back into first place again make their way through Derek's corner 
Robinson still second, but all these lead changes are just serving to bring the rest of the drivers into the equation here as they make their way down the TKM straight. Kestrel corner, certainly no room for any kind of incident out here. If you bang wheels or hit the tie barriers, your race will for the front will pretty much be over. There's really no margin for error here as Mead holds on to the lead. It's a drag race down to the first corner. It's almost like a peloton there as they make their way through. And it looks like Adam Sparrow goes back into third place from James Morley. Morley's still right in there, though. Spencer Lane, Joseph Booth, Kian Bennett, Jamie Mead, 97, still your race leader. 135 on the clock here, plus the one lap remaining. So they're going to get at least one more lap in before the last lap board goes out. Still a long way to go in this race. And still far too close to call as to who's going to win this one. Adam Sparrow still very much involved in this one as well. About the top 12 drivers covered by less than two seconds. That's a typical close karting race here. It's even closer in the midfield as well. Action all the way through the field. And some of the drivers further down in the top 10 just looking to jostle for position here. They want to get involved in this fight for the lead when the last lap flag goes out. We've got 58 seconds plus one lap remaining. So realistically, they're going to get through over the line before the last lap flag goes out. So... Uh, after this lap there will be two laps to go I believe unless something drastic happens to drop the pace here they come through the top corner Jamie Mead holding on to the lead from Leah Robinson who very briefly snatched the lead down the straight now into second place goes the number 19 of Adam Sparrow as they make their way through 35 seconds on the clock and Sparrow goes into the lead Adam Sparrow your new race leader with two laps to go and then it's a whole train of drivers behind as Mead Swings out wide, he's going to go for the cut back here through the willows, but not quite got enough gap. The top two just pulling away ever so slightly from Spencer Lane in third. Could that be enough? It's going to be a fight here for me down the outside. Look at Adam Sparrow guarding that apex though. Sparrow has taken the lead here and immediately driving very defensively. He's going to try and duel this one out to the checkered flag, I think, but uh, Jamie Mead trying to fight back and the chasing pack can only hope that if there's a fight it'll bring everyone else back into contention here they come down towards the final corner and again look at Sparrow guarding that inside line for all it's worth but that's going to allow Jamie Mead for a good drive out of the final corner one lap to go in this TKM Extreme heat number two and it's all lies down to the inside line there as Adam Sparrow again guarding the apex it's bringing everyone else into contention here though once again Spencer Lane not too far behind Joseph Booth Jamie Mead trying the outside as they make their way through towards Derek's corner, gets the switch back through the chicane. This could allow him the opportunity into Dan Weldon corner, but no, Adam Sparrow's got the line. Sparrow's still leading, and right in there now is Spencer Lane. Spencer Lane could be a factor in this race. Oh, it's getting tight into the final corner. Look at that, they bang wheels, and Spencer Lane doesn't need to be asked twice. Oh, dramatic end to this race. Uh, Spencer Lane takes the checkered flag Leo Robinson into six and Adam Sparrow picking up some damage oh well, you can see on the side of the you can see on the side of the track there the uh, you can't see perhaps on the camera but the looks like the wishbone has been damaged on that car well you can see it now the, the front wheel flailing away oh uh, well, that's just terrible luck with racing sometimes I don't think he's crossed he's just about crossed the line now the uh, let's look, look at that again so you'll see Jamie Mead Oh, just classic two drivers going into one place. And you see they, they ride wheels. And that will have damaged the number 19 cart. But, of course, Spencer Lane and uh, Joseph Boo, those drivers, didn't need to be asked twice. You can see the damage on the near side front of that cart. You can only assume it's the linkage there, the, uh, the wishbone that's damaged. But Spencer Lane taking the chequered flag in dramatic circumstances there. But you really got a feel for the unfortunate number 19. Adam Sparrow finishing in 32nd position. What a shame for him after running so well. And they're going to have to get that cart off the track. The, hopefully the damage won't be too severe. I think it's just like the uh, just the wishbone. I think it's the steam on part of the steering rack that's just come loose. So the cart not suffering any severe damage. But, well, that's how it goes in racing. Sometimes you'll be fighting for the lead. And uh, by right, he should well have taken the checkered flag there. But... Uh, on the uh, as it goes he has to settle for 32nd place and he'll be hoping to try and uh, have a bit of better luck in the final later on but what a race that was and uh, 
certainly uh, plenty of great action there some great driving I think Jamie Mead was a racing incident there he uh, saw him when he was crossing the line there he's putting his uh, putting his hand up almost to apologize so uh, whether there'll be any uh, any action about that I don't know but uh, certainly for spectating here a fantastic race there dramatic conclusion to that one as well uh, we're going to move on very shortly to our road taxes I believe well double check it the schedule had junior and senior road tax down but it looks like we've got the uh, x30 seniors out there so we'll have a look at that in just a moment <laughs> X30 Senior and R177s that looks, does look more like the uh, taxes, we'll have a look in a minute though certainly showing the um, X30 Seniors on the timing charts here so I'm just going to wait and see just to confirm the, the lineups for things here We are scheduled to be having uh, junior and senior OTAX groups A and C for the third heat races, but we'll uh, wait and see in just a few moments. Uh, yes, indeed it is. So the uh, timing charts have updated. That is junior OTAX heat three. This is groups A and C from the entry list, and over the line they go. Although it is a full start, so they will go around once again. This is the third of the Junior Rotax, the third and final Junior Rotax heat race groups A and C. A little bit later on after this block of racing, there will be a repercharge race for both the Junior and the Senior Rotaxes for those who fail to get through to the A final. Top four in those progressing, of course. And back on the grid in just a moment for the uh, race number 16 now, Junior Rotax. Getting back on the line in just a moment. So now on to the uh, second of the formation laps, of course, the, the start abandoned there. They weren't really in position at all, you would say, when they crossed the line. So hopefully this time we should be on for a clean start with Joshua Smith and Finley Jones leading away this third heat race. So here we are, the carts are in position. Look out for those tram lines, the, the painted yellow lines on the starting grid. That's where they need to be on each side. Over the line they go. Everyone crowding to the inside there, but it's a clean start down the inside then. Looks like Joshua Smith guards that lead through the first corner. And as you can see with so many drivers out there, the start is going to be absolutely crucial here. You certainly don't want to get involved in any incidents on that first lap, but uh, Joshua Smith with a good start there. Looks like Callum Foster into second position as they make their way down the TKM straight for the first time charging in towards Kestrel corner and to Kim Bolton the final corner on the lap oh diving down the inside there nice move there from Joshua Turnbull to get through into third place he saw that gap and he certainly went for it the rest of the field charging through and into the lead goes Callum Foster Smith trying to fight back throw through the willows oh but look at that Joshua Smith really got his elbows out there and fought to hold on to that lead uh, what that's done is allowed everyone else into the mix now as Joshua Turnbull now sneaks through into second place so the unfortunate Joshua Smith has dropped from third, first to third place in the matter of half a lap but he's still right in there 
pulling away slightly from Finley Jones in fourth place as the leaders now make their way into Kim Bolton that final corner back down onto the power they go charge over the line still too close to call here as the rest of the midfield runners go charging through the likes of Miles Roby, Jason Duchess, John Richardson, Alfie O'Brien all in the midfield and another new leader as Joshua Turnbull goes through into the lead number 20 he's looked very strong since the start of this race he's been identifying over taking opportunities here and now in the lead so what can he do at the front can he try and pull away you would say how close the racing has been today he's going to find it difficult to pull away right now unless those chasing packs start to get involved but Turnbull certainly running very strongly here at the front here he comes into the final corner so Turnbull leads Foster second, Smith in third, and the rest of the top ten made up of Shane Chandaria, Charlie Neve, Mikey Walker, Oliver Smith, Finley Jones dropping a few places, Teddy Cooper and Samir Paul. There you go, charging through the willows once again, still Turnbull in the lead, Foster trying to find a way through here. The top six or seven drivers only covered by, let's have a look at that, that one second covering the top seven drivers, nothing at all in this race, we've still got... 20 plus the one lap remaining so it's still a bit tactical at this stage and of course there is a bit of jeopardy involved here because there is no guarantee they'll get through to the A final just yet if they fail to finish this race so certainly these front running drivers at the front of the field won't be wanting to be too rash Oliver Smith un under investigation right now currently the 7th place driver in this whole chain of drivers at the front of the field here as they make their way through the willows up towards Derek's corner once again down the Mitsu straight they go and still Turnbull leading the way this time Joshua Smith of course getting into second position there the green cart number 15 and through the Dan Weldon corner they go down TKM straight heading towards Kestrel corner the midfield runners still charging away a bit further back there Manzel, Richardson, Duchess, O'Brien, all those sort of drivers there in the midfield. There was the number 37 at the back of that group there, Oliver Keane. With Matthew So and Ethan Hatch in there as well. Leaders over the line once again. Still Turnbull, your race leader. We've got 3 minutes 20 on the clock, plus one lap remaining in this race. And Joshua Turnbull, oh, and trouble on the edge of the top 10. 156 there, Shane Chandaria riding the wheels of, I think that was Oliver Smith spectacular crash on a very fast part of the circuit both drivers are okay but uh, Chandaria's car off on the side of the track and uh, I think that uh, I think Oliver Smith's still going but albeit very slowly the race goes on at the front though that's the jeopardy I was talking about there now those two drivers well and truly out of contention and that could well mean they go to the repercharge charge later on so Joshua Turnbull now starting to uh, turn into a two-way fight for the lead there's a yellow flag there as the leaders go through past those two stricken carts from the uh, from the incident earlier on starting to turn into a tussle here between joshua turnbull and joshua smith turnbull i think getting a bit defensive now you can see he's really going for those apexes guarding the inside line he knows that smith's there I think he's just going all out here just to try and guard that lead of course that runs the risk if he's not taking his preferred racing lines we're just allowing those chasing packs just to close up a bit now we've got two minutes on the clock plus the one lap remaining so still a few more laps to go in this one and at the moment things are very tense here at the front as we've seen of course it's all too easy for a mistake to happen out there and to crash out of the race and if that does happen it would pretty much mean you have to go in the repercharge race later on to relying on getting into the top four in that uh, all or nothing last chance qualifier which is certainly what these front running drivers don't want so uh, it's a bit of a tricky one for these drivers at the front unless they still want to race for position they've just got to be careful at the same time Jason Duch is there number 16 79 going down the inside there Teddy Cooper making up a position just behind them is Alfie O'Brien number 17 the rest of the midfield runners making their way through. The likes of Logan Hartshorn, D. John Bennett, James Philip King, Charlie F. Grave in there as well. At the front, though, it's still the fight between Joshua Turnbull, Joshua Smith as uh, one dry. Oh, is that number 69? Was that Callum Foster going into the infield there? I think it was. That's another front runner potentially dropping out of contention. I'll confirm that on the lap charts in a few moments, but it looked very much to me. But Callum Foster hit some trouble there. No, he's okay, still in the race. 
We look at Jason Futures there, number 16, going in towards the Kimbolton corner. John Richardson close behind. At the front, it's still Turnbull as they make their way through the first corner. The rest of the top ten charging through. There's 24, Miles Roby just on the edge of the top ten. And the drivers further back making their way through. Here's the fight for the lead. 22 seconds on the clock, so next time round will be the last lap. Joshua Turnbull leads, Smith in second. And then charging in third, Mikey Walker, Callum Foster, so Foster's OK. Once he's gone a bit wide there, but he must have stayed on the track. Here they come then, so Turnbull, Smith, Walker, Foster, Neve, Jones, Paul in there as well. And Finley Jones, 237, just coming under pressure here from Samir Paul. Armian Banzel in there as well, as guard in the inside line is Joshua Turnbull. Is that going to leave him open going to the Willows? No, he shuts the door as they make their way through. Mikey Walker starting to get involved in this one in third place. Charlie Neve, number 60, not too far behind as the midfielders make their way over the line to start their final lap. Meanwhile, at the front, the leaders making their way through Derek's corner for the final time. And Turnbull really driving defensively here, guarding those apexes now into the final corner. This is where it's going to all be very important here. Turnbull into Kim Bolton. Smith on his tail, Walker there in third. Here they come out to the final corner. It's a fight to the line. And Turnbull takes the victory. Smith in second. Mikey Walker from Charlie Neve, Callum Foster, Finley Jones, Samir Paul. Army and Banzel, Miles Roby, Teddy Cooper, it's as close as that. John Richardson, Jason Duches, Alfie O'Brien and Logan Hartsorn a bit further behind as well. But fantastic racing there in this second, or well, this um, final Junior Otax uh, heat, I should say. We'll see the drivers later on for the repechage who failed to get through. But... Um, Say there was, we saw some drama earlier on with Oliver Smith and Shane Chandaria both dropping out of contention with that spectacular incident on the Willows where they bang wheels and rode over each other. Both drivers okay, but uh, more than likely they'll be going down into the repechage later on. Of course, that's a little later in the program. We've got race number 16 just completed, the junior Rotax. We're going to move on to our final heat race of the senior Rotax, race number 17 in just a moment. There's Chandaria's cart, the Pro Train cart, being pushed back to the paddock. So he's OK, but um, may well be having to go through to the repechage later on with that non-finish in heat number two. Senior Rotax, the final heat race for the Rotax is coming up in just a moment. So this is, this is race number 17 in your programme. We've got the X30 Seniors, Micromax, Mini Inters, and the uh, third heat of the two tens, race number 21, following on from this. And then races number 22 and 23, our last two races before we go through to the finals, is the rep charge races for both the junior Rotax and the guys who are in the waiting zone right now, the senior Rotax as well. And uh, just to recap, of course, the rep charge is essentially a last chance for any drivers who've missed the cut for the finals, for the A finals, to. Uh, to make their way through otherwise their day will be over senior Rotax lining up as follows Guy Cunnington from Jack Collins Ethan Martin Alexander Cole some of the front runners up there George Ronald Reg Hayward Lucas Ellingham uh, Tom Pryor Michael Morgan a few drivers certainly well worth uh, looking out for there a bit further down Reese Lomax in there Jack Spencer Norris Balderson Jonathan Railton a bit further down on row number 12 Amongst others, with Sean Rashid from Adam White on row number 11. They'll be looking for a uh, strong start from the midfield. Much like the Junies, of course, big group of Rotaxes here. Over 260 drivers this weekend here in total for this fourth round of the championship. And a very healthy entry of Rotax. Of course, a lot of the drivers looking to get the, uh, the race experience going into the British Championships here at Kim Bolton. So certainly a lot of uh, race practice going ahead for these drivers as they join this fourth round of the, uh, the club championships here at Kim Bolton. Drivers now making their way out onto the circuit for their formation lap in this very important senior row tax. It's groups A and C in the entry list making their way through now for the final heat race. And much like the juniors, this is where it all matters. You've got to get a good finish. Crucially of all, you've got to avoid getting into trouble as well. Any kind of DNF would be disastrous at this stage as you go through the lottery of the repercharge races. 
So it all boils down to this, the final Senior Rotax Heat Race. Race number 17 of your 32 race programme. Over the line they go. It's a clean start and they all dive down the inside. Guy Cunnington in there. Leaves himself a bit of an opening to take the apex. Very neat driving from the race leader, number 52, Cunnington. They pile through the willows for the first time. And it looks like Ethan Martin has fought through to second place. Could be Jack Collins in there. Also, as well as they make their way through Derek's corner. Going through Dan Weldon corner for the first time, heading towards the TKM straight. And Guy Cunnington with a very good opening corner there. Very bravely took the apex into the first corner to get himself the drive out of that corner with all those chasing carts behind him. So Cunnington leads. Collins second. Well, oh, Sir Alexander Cole, my apologies, in second place. Ethan Martin, Jack Collins. George Donald in there, Lucas Ellingham, Ryan Ward. Still pile through the first time, Scott Goldsby hitting trouble, losing a few places on that first lap, number 14 at the back of the field, where everyone gets through that first lap OK. There's number 12 in there, that's uh, Jack Collins, currently in fourth place, keeping the pressure on number 55, Ethan Martin. George Donald close behind in fifth place from Lucas Ellingham, Ryan Ward, Tom Pryor, Reg Hayward and Callum Ingrie rounding out the top ten but we focus here on the number 55 of Ethan Martin. Oh, a little bit further behind, a bit of an overtake going on there for Lucas Ellingham. Ellingham moves up in position, you'll see him there, just death. he's just pointing out to the drivers he wants them to work together now. Just try and catch up with that lead group because Guy Cunnington is pulling away slightly. Alexander Cole not too far behind in second place. Ethan Martin and Jack Collins scrapping it out for third place. Lucas Ellingham though now clear in fifth place. And still very close to the edge of the top ten with George Donald, Ryan Ward, Reg Hayward, Tom Fryer, Harry Bloor, Rhys Lomax on the edge of the top ten. Leaders now coming down towards the Kestrel corner. Into Kimbolt for the first time and you see the action all the way through the field. The drivers towards the back there fighting away. Got uh, Isaac Reynolds, Scott Goldsby, Joshua Burnett, Joe Fox in there, James Henson. Sam Chapson Lewis in 25th as a technical flag for the number 16 in the midfield there of uh, oh just in sixth place there George Donald so it looks like George Donald is going to be out of the race a technical flag for him next time round so that's uh, trouble for him of course as he will more than likely have to go through to the repper charge if things carry on like that for him it will be a DNF him a technical flag so just to explain, of course, if they get the... Uh, it's a black flag with an orange disc. That basically means that there's some sort of fault with their cart that makes it dangerous for other drivers. Usually it's a piece of loose bodywork. Not loose on the cart, which is unfortunate for the... Uh, is unfortunate for the black flag driver, but it's just in the interest of safety. So he'll have to retire from the race as things still get very close here with number 17. He went off the track momentarily a moment ago, Ryan Ward, he recovered OK, the cart's all right and still keeps going. And then that fight for second place, Alexander Cole still charging, Ethan Martin, Jack Collins and Lucas Allingham right in there. There's the number 21 of Tom Pryor, currently in seventh position as they make their way down the TKM straight towards Kestrel Corner into Kim Bolton. And Guy Cunnington continues to lead the way, although Alexander Cole is not too far behind with three and a half minutes plus one lap remaining. Very close for third place, though, between Ethan Martin, Jack Collins, Lucas Ellingham and Reg Hayward. The top ten charging through that uh, snow corner. There's Rhys Lomax, number 157, currently in eighth position. From Harry Bloor, James Tester, Ryan Ward in 11th place. Zaki Hussein a little bit further behind in 114. Alexander Alex, Adam Zachton, number 18, currently in 13th position. And a bit further down, there's a one or two flags going up. There's a warning flag for the 113. That's uh, Joe Fox currently in 25th place. And there's a uh, driver under investigation as well. Number 146, Harry Bloor, currently in ninth position. So the race stewards keeping a close eye on this one. One or two drivers just being watched at the moment. Now, this is going to bother Guy Cunning Cunnington, though, the race leader. Number 13 there. Adam White currently in 14th from Zaki Hussein, Michael Morgan. And Callum Ingrid, just a bit further down, that's the uh, the midfield scrap there. And these these points in these heat races are all very important as well as some of these drivers in the midfield just looking to make sure they qualify for the A final. And there's only one finals today, there's the A finals for the for both the uh, junior and the senior Otaxes. 
those who fail, of course, to get into those finals and have to go to the repercharge charge a bit later on in this block. So uh, these midfield positions could be very important indeed here because every point matters. And what they don't want to be doing is going into the, the repercharge charge is almost something of a lottery, really. They want to make sure they're guaranteed to get their positions in the A finals, but none of that's going to bother, of course, Guy Cunnington, the race leader. Alexander Cole looking comfortable in second, about seven tenths of a second down as we look at the midfield runners charging through the Dan Weldon corner. These drivers just on the edge of the top ten, the likes of James Tester, Ryan Ward going through. Oh, and uh, trouble there for 171. That's Jonathan Relton who was in 20th place, loses traction on Dan Weldon corner into the grass. Fortunately, the grass is a bit drier than it was last time out in March, so at least he can get back onto the track relatively cleanly. And then we see this fight in the midfield. There was in the middle of that number 22, Callum Ingrey. Going for a move there on Ryan Hedge, Zaki Hussein, Jack Spencer, Rachel Robertson all in there. And back to the leader who makes his way down the TKM straight. It's Guy Cunnington. One minute on the clock, so he'll probably get through one more lap before the last lap board goes out. This realistically then is going to be two laps to go for Guy Cunnington. Alexander Cole in second place sets the fastest lap of the race, 40.59. The gap just over one second between first and second place. There we see on the inset the rest of the top ten charging down towards the first corner. Driver in trouble on the infield there as the leaders go through. Yellow flags going out. Try and pick up who that is. I think it's Isaac Reynolds possibly, number... 61 but we'll have a look in a moment on the lap charts none of this is of course is a problem for Connington who leads comfortably at the moment there's the 31 of Alexander Cole there's the midfield runners on your inset still charging away on the edge of the top 10 Ryan Ward Adam White Alexander Adams Acton all scrapping away so two laps to go now for Guy Connington as we say, of course, fastest lap of the race for Alexander Cole but at the moment Connington the race leader is matching the run-up for pace Ryan Hedge getting a warning flag just on the edge of the uh, top 15. Driver 118 in the middle of that midfield tussle. So I think that's Isaac Reynolds, the driver that's in trouble on the infield. Driver OK, but uh, evidently the cart is out of the race. Meanwhile, into the final corner goes the number 52 of Guy Cunnington, who has led pretty much from lights to flag right now. But he's got to get it over the line for this final lap. At the moment, he's got a bit of a cushion. Alexander Cole, about one and a half seconds down in second place. Lucas Ellingham in third, number 99. It's Ellingham third, Martin, Collins, Pryor, Hayward. Most of the top ten, still very close indeed. Ethan Martin fending off Jack Collins and Tom Pryor. There they go, making their way through the willows. Meanwhile, the race leader, Guy Cunnington, 52, making his way down TKM straight for the final time. Has a quick glance over the shoulder just to check his progress, and he knows that he's got the cushion here as he makes his way down into the final corner. The battle still going on behind him, but Guy Cunnington taking a strong second race victory. It's going to be Alexander Cole in second, and the very impressive Lucas Ellingham fighting through to a strong third place there. Ethan Martin fourth, Jack Collins, Tom Pryor, Reg Hayward, Harry Bloor, Ryan Ward, and James Tester rounding up the top ten. Rhys Lomax, Adam White, Alexander Adams, actor Michael Morgan, Callum Ingrey in 15th place. Zaki Hussein in 16th from Ryan Hedge. Zach Spencer, Rachel Robertson, 19 from Sean Rashid, Scott Goldsby, 21st. A bit further back, Joe Fox, Noah Ross Balderston, James Henson, Max McGilvray, Sav Chapman Lewis, Joshua Burnett, and the 171, the drive we saw doing a bit of uh, lawnmower action earlier on. Uh, Joshua, Jonathan Railton is able to bring it home in 28th place with uh, Isaac Reynolds and George Donald, both non-finishers. So that's it for the Rotax seat races. We go through to the finals later on this afternoon. There'll be races 28 and 29 in the programme, respectively. But, of course, before that, at the end of our heat races, we've got the remaining classes coming up very shortly. We will be having the repercharge races for both the junior and senior Rotax. And there we see the number 61, the non-finisher of Isaac Reynolds. Pushing the cart, that's one of the Lando Norris carts there, pushing that cart back to the paddock. Driver OK, but uh, we'll likely see them later on for the repercharge race. Green flag going out now for the X30 Senior. 
and Rotax 177 out on the track in just a few moments. There they go, right on cue. Morgan Hill will be leading the X30 seniors away from George Robinson, Christopher Bingham, Reese Newburn, Josh Jones, Oliver Harris, Adam Wright, and Matthew Morgan on row number four. Fifth row made up of Jack Dan and George Bolter. In the second group, the R177s Josh Bass, Simon Pugh, Simon Hilton, James Butcher, and Gordon Chenery. So, as you may remember from earlier, these drivers starting in two tranches basically. We've got the first group. X30 seniors about to get underway. Here they come through the Kimbolton corner and they'll be out on the course in just a few moments' time. Followed, of course, about half a lap later by the R177s. Over the line we go with the X30s. Clean start and they pile into the first corner. All very tight there, but looks like Morgan Hill's held on. Good clean start though. They all get through the willows. Very fast and furious start to this X30 race. Meanwhile, the R177s cross the line right on cue with Josh Bass, who looked very good in that first race. Getting underway and leading them through the first corner, so Morgan Hill looking good as they go down the back straight. And TKM straight for the first time, we see our R177s further back there, headed by uh, Josh Bass and Simon Pugh. So both race classes settling into the rhythm at the end of this first lap as Morgan Hill goes over the line from Christopher Bingham. George Robinson third from Reese Newburn. Josh Jones, Matthew Morgan, Jack Down, Adam Wright, Oliver Harrison, George Bolter rounding up the 10 driver field. And a bit further back still with the r 177 it's Josh Bass. There he is on the bottom right of your screen from Simon Hilton, Gordon Chenery and Simon Pugh all in there. So... Uh, Bass just starting to pull away from that chasing pack of the R177s with James Butcher at the back there, number 87, charging away back to the front of the field with the X30s. We see Morgan Hill. There is Josh Bass on the bottom right of your screen and the chasing pack of the R177s. X30s at the front of the pack going over the line right now with Morgan Hill, your race leader, Christopher Bingham, in second. Very close for fifth position right now. We've got George Robinson, Reese Newburn, third and fourth. And then Matthew Morgan, Jack Dan, Josh Jones all having a very close fight. But Morgan Hill, 29, fastest lap of the race, 41.75. Looking in good form right now. There's number 84 of Josh Jones, currently in seventh place. Back to the lead though, Morgan Hill from Christopher Bingham, keeping that pressure on. We're looking at our race leader in the R177s there, Josh Bass making his way through the Dan Weldon corner as the leading X30s go over the line to complete another lap. And still Morgan Hill that leads the way by just under half a second from Christopher Bingham. Charging in third and fourth, you'll see them there. 23, George Robinson, and 67, Reese Newburn. Trying to get involved in that fight for the lead. The R177s charging over the line just now with Simon Hilton, Simon Pugh, James Butcher, and Gordon Chenry all fighting out for second in that race class. Josh Bass currently clear away at the front in the R177s. But now, 23, George Robinson coming under a bit of pressure from Newburn, who neatly nips down the inside and should make that move stick. And you see again Newburn just trying to point to uh, work together now to try and catch up with Christopher Bingham and Morgan Hill who are fighting for first and second place. There they go through the willows. There's the new third place driver then, uh, Reese Newburn. And Newburn just trying to get George Robinson to help him out here, just work together to try and close up on the leading two because they're not too far behind here. Maybe about no more than half a second between that fight for the lead, I would say. So Morgan Hill still leading the way, Christopher Bingham in second, Reese Newburn, fastest lap of the race for the third place driver, number 67. You can see they're starting to close up on the leaders here. And you may see that 23, George Robinson's a bit further behind there, not really trying to get through, make the pass on the third place driver, Reese Newburn, just tagging along, trying to close up. Christopher Bingham, incidentally, fastest lap of the race for the second place driver, number 26. 40.79, Josh Bass continues to lead the way of the R177s there on the bottom right of your screen, Simon Hilton, Simon Pugh, Jack Butch, James Butcher and Gordon Chenry having a really close tussle. 
three minutes plus one lap remaining and Christopher Bingham a little bit faster than the race leader right now not by very much but certainly enough but he can't find a way through there still is that tussle with the R177s Josh Bass clear at the front it's uh, Simon Hilton, Simon Pugh, James Butcher and Gordon Chenery fighting it out there at the back of the field so action all the way through the field here the rest of the top ten made up of uh, Jack Dan in fifth place Josh Jones, Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris Adam Wright in ninth, George Bolter in tenth Josh Bass has just gone through the line there we just saw the uh, still the fight with Simon Hilton uh, Pugh, Butcher and Chenery at the back of the R177s we're at the front of the field 2.15 on the clock plus one lap remaining there we just saw Bass going through the race lead on the bottom right of your screen for the R177s the X30 senior lead is a little closer cut here you would say Morgan Hill has led the entire race pretty much but uh, Christopher Bingham keeping that pressure very firmly on in second place Reese Newburn and George Robinson not too far behind and still Reese Newburn desperately trying to catch up with that battle for the lead Newburn again setting the fastest lap of the race 40.51 and there's the important part here he's got about eight tenths of a second gap between himself and Robinson in fourth place but Reese Newburn, he's really closing up now on the two leaders. One minute 30 on the clock as they go over the line once again. And it's still Morgan Hill, your race leader. Bingham second, and Reese Newburn really starting to get involved in this one. Six tenths of a second, covering the top three drivers. Just over one minute plus one lap remaining. So they'll realistically have two more laps to go at the end of this one. R177 still charging away a bit further behind. Josh Bastille, your race leader. There's the fight for second place. 65 there, Simon Hilton with Simon Pugh just ahead of him, James Butcher and Gordon Chenry still fighting away this X30 race getting very close in between these top three drivers, Morgan Hill just pulls away momentarily, there is 46 seconds on the clock when they cross the line there, so they'll probably squeeze through before the last lap board goes out, it's going to be tight here I think Morgan Hill would have uh, wished that the last lap board comes out next time round. So as you can see, there's not much difference there. Just tenth of a second. There is the uh, Josh Bass, the race leader of the R177s. As the leaders of the X30s make their way through Dan Weldon Corner for what I think will be the penultimate lap of the race. They are starting to close up on the R177 battle, though. So this could get interesting once again. There's Josh Bass. He's well clear of the rest of the pack in the R177s, making his way through Derek's corner as the leaders go through oh three seconds on the clock so two laps to go here including the one they've just started morgan hill closing up all the time on that fantastic there they are i just saw on the side of your screen there the uh, battle there with the four r177 drivers there you see them on the inset of your screen there at the end of the tkm straight which is where these drivers on the top left have just started to make their way down right now so it's going to get tight here there's going to be one more lap to go. I think they may well catch up with those R177 drivers who are lapped down having their own fight at the back of the field. Uh, much like we saw in the first race, as uh, Reese Newburn now goes into the lead. This is going to get tight now. So Newburn is the new race leader. Hill drops to second. Bingham in third. Reese Newburn's look threatening for pretty much the entire race as they're round the outside. Goes Bingham to have a look at uh, Morgan Hill. Hill trying to fight back. There's the R177s. I think they're going to stay just about far enough ahead to not be a factor in this race. Here they come down towards the final corner. Reese Newburn taking the lead at precisely the right moment. Here he comes into the final corner. Can he hold on? It's going to be tight into the last corner. There we just see Jack Dan and Josh Jones are further behind, but over the line goes Reese Newburn to take the checkered flag. Morgan Hill second, Christopher Bingham third, and George Robinson fourth. Fight to the line there between Jack Dan and Josh Jones. Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris in eighth place. Adam Wright will finish in ninth position. There he goes. And George Bolter, who was a DNF in the first heat race, will bring it home in tenth position. Josh Bass over the line there in twelfth position, number, 50, number 64, winner of the R177s. And we wait for this fight to the line for the remaining drivers. It's going to be Simon Pugh from James Butcher, Gordon Chenery and Simon Hilton 
very close battle in the R177s. So we have just a few more heat races to go. We've got our second Micromax and the Army Restricted class coming up for race number 19. They'll be followed by the Mini Inters, which is race number 20. Race 21 is the third heat race of the 210 Challenge. And then we have the Junior and Senior Otax Repercharge races before the finals get underway later on this afternoon. So uh, race number 19 of the 32 race program getting underway in just a few moments. Micromax and Water Swift restricted getting underway in just a moment. Lucian Smith from Alby J Stubbs leading them away from Logan Stanley Jones, Dave, James DeVrew, Binley Beals right in there as well, Oliver Dawson, Joseph Davis, Mason Munster, Teddy Higgs, Logan Baker and Louis Williams Mab. Some very competitive drivers. This 13 driver field, they're all in position now as they make their way down towards Kestrel Corner. And we saw uh, a race that didn't, wasn't too much overtaking, you would say, but very close in terms of the race action, a very closely fought race, very exciting to watch. So we hope for more of the same again as we go for our second of the Micromax heat races. Drivers keeping it nice and cool as they make their way over the tram lines and underway we go. They charge over the line, looks like a good start. Everyone piling down the inside line there with Lucian Smith. Nice start for him, and he gets through the corner, first corner very neatly indeed. So 44, Lucian Smith with Albie J. Stubbs not too far behind in second place. The number 73 and uh, so Logan Stanley Jones, James DeVroe fighting away. Finley Beals right in there as well. But a fantastic start there for Lucian Smith, number 44. He goes through the top corner for the uh, first time there through Dan Weldon corner. Furthest point of the track, back down the TKM straight towards the start and finish, and going through Kestrel Corner for the first time into Kim Bolton. There's your race leader, 44, Lucian Smith, round the final corner he goes, and over the line to complete the first lap. The chasing pack just behind him there, though. It's uh, Alb J Stubbs, Finley Beals with a good start up to third position on that first lap. James DeVoe in fourth, Logan Stanley Jones in fifth, Oliver Dawson, Joseph Davis, Mason Monster, Teddy Higgs. Lou Williams Mabs and Logan Baker. Uh, Finley Beals actually fighting through to third for uh, the uh, third position on that first lap. But he has picked up a warning flag from the marshal, so he's gonna have to be careful not to get involved in too many scraps. The remainder of this race, but he's still running strongly in that third place. That's the number 20 card. The leaders, meanwhile, making their way down in towards the Kestrel corner, and Lucian Smith holding on to that lead. As the 73 there, Logan Stanley Jones with Oliver Dawson just having a little peek as they make their way down towards the Kimbolt corner. Race leader, Lucian Smith into the first corner. Through Stowe he goes and just watch the driver as he makes his way through looking very neat behind the car. You see the, uh, the art of uh, smooth kart driving is often they just look slow when they're going round. It just shows how smoothly they're operating the, the controls to the car, the steering especially and just carrying that speed as much as possible. It's no good to go piling into the corners with the back end stepping out and plenty of oversteers. Just finding that right balance just on the edge of grip, which you see these top drivers, they just make it look very smooth and very easy. Rest assured it isn't. It's uh, difficult to keep these carts momentum going and keep the smoothness out there, especially on some of these more technical parts of the circuit. But uh, Lucian Smith certainly looking very fast and very smooth out there. And Smith setting the fastest lap of the race there, 47.90, increasing the gap to just over one second from Alby J Stubbs, he's still charging in second place. Again, that camera angle there going through the Willows complex just shows how much speed they carry through there. You can certainly see, especially amongst some of the uh, more experienced drivers at the front of the field, just how smooth they make it. Now, of course, like I say, is that's the art of... Uh, 
good driving is some you just make you look effortless really which is what they're doing really well here but it's a little bit of pressure on here for the number 46 right now James Debro coming under a bit of pressure from 73 Logan Stanley Jones as Smith goes over the line to lead another lap the fastest lap of the race again for the number 44 the race leader and that lap is 47.78 you see it's on the graphic there just starting to pull a few more tenths away from Albie J Stubbs in second place so in turn is pulling away from Finley Beals so the top three just starting to spread out a bit now still number 46 James Debro in fourth place Logan Stanley Jones not too far behind in fifth position Oliver Dawson and Joseph Davis sixth and seventh with Louis Williams Mabs Mason Munster, Teddy Higgs and Logan Baker running out the field with just over three minutes plus the one lap remaining. Mini Inters are coming up next. We've still got a bit more action to go here in this Micromax second heat. Three minutes plus the one lap remaining as the leaders make their way down into the final corner. There's 76 and 22 there. A little bit further down, Joseph Davis and Louis Williams Maps having their own fight here for seventh position. Now they come down towards the first corner, looks like Davis guarding that inside line number 76 and fending off the number 22 of Lee Williams Mabs in that fight for seventh position. A little bit further behind there in uh, ninth is Mason Munster, Teddy Higgs and Logan Baker rounding out the field. But uh, Joseph Davis, 76 blue cart with the orange helmet there, guarding those apexes with the intrepid cart just behind there, number 22. Louis Williams Babs, Italian trepid chassis there. And it looks like he's made the move then on Davis, who fights down the inside again, going into the Kestrel corner, guarding the apex, going to Kim Bolton. And Davis holding on to that seventh place from Williams Babs, two minutes plus one lap remaining. Lucian Smith is still well clear. The gap nearly three seconds at the front of the field from Albie J. Stubbs, Finley Beals, James DeRoe, Logan Stanley, Oliver Dawson. And then this battle that we're focusing on now as Louis Williams Mabs moves into seventh place from Joseph Davis with Mason Munter, Teddy Higgs and Logan Baker running up the field. And there just ahead we saw the other battle in this race with uh, Oliver Dawson and Louis Stanley Jones. I think that's uh, James Devereaux there close in fourth place. So uh, one or two tussles a bit further behind. None of that of course bothering the race leader Lucian Smith who's just coming out of the final corner. There he goes just over the line. Then it's the fight for second place, 125 on the clock, plus one lap remaining. Stubbs in second, Beals in third. And then the fight for fourth, James Debro, Logan Stanley Jones. Debro holds on, I think, to that fourth place. Yes, he does, from the number 73 as they make their way through the Willows once again. It's still very close action there. And you see there, number 46. James Debro just gesticulating there to uh, Stanley Jones to try and work together here, to try and close up on that battle for third position Finley Beale still clear in third from James DeRoe and Logan Stanley Jones fending off Oliver Dawson as they make their way through 44 seconds on the clock the lead is just about to go over the line here so this will be the penultimate lap of the race they're just starting now Lucian Smith leading RPJ Stubbs in second Finley Beals from James DeRoe there they go just out of shot and then this fight here between the uh, 73 there, Logan Stanley Jones, James DeVroe. This is for fourth and fifth position. There's the race leader just going out of shot. Then we've got the fight for second here as Finley Beale starts to put the pressure on Alfie J. Stubbs through Derek's corner there, side by side. But uh, Stubbs has the racing line here. He should be able to hold on. And Finley Beale's having to fall behind here and try again. The clock now down to zero. So when they come round again, it'll be the last lap. Lucian Smith now well clear at the front, so it looks like Alfie, uh, Alby J Stubbs having to hold on to that second place. There he goes, Alby J Stubbs out to the final corner. I think they almost bang wheels there, side by side down the straight. Stubbs on the inside, Beals on the outside, but Stubbs has got the line going through into Stowe Corner for the final time and holds on to that second place. Beals still in third. Jones and Devro not too far behind. Here they come through towards the centre of the circuit now. Lucian Smith well clear at the front, there he goes in towards Dan Weldon corner for the final time. All the action on for second place, you can see now that the gap is almost five seconds between first and second place as Beals goes down the inside. Well worked move there for him to grab second place from Alby J Stubbs, but there's still half a, half a lap to go. Meanwhile, Lucian Smith out to the final corner he goes and takes the chequered flag.
Fantastic drive there for Lucian Smith, number 44, your race winner. And it's a fight to the line, but Finley Beale snatches second place from Albert J. Stubbs. Logan Stanley Jones holds on to four from James DeRoe. Oliver Dawson, he perhaps he back one of the only drivers to start and finish in the same position, sixth place. Then we've got Louis Williams Mabs, Joseph Davis, Mason Munster, Teddy Higgs, and Logan Baker rounding out the 11 driver field. Baker, I think, just about to go over the line now, number 69. And now we move on to our final regular heat race, you might say. We've got the mini inters coming up in just a few moments. They'll be followed by the 210 Challenge, their third heat race, and the repper charges for junior and senior Rotax will head on to our finals a little later on this afternoon. Mini inters coming up in just a few moments. So the track is now clear and we're underway with the second of the heat races for the Minintas, race number 20 of your 32 race programme this afternoon at Kimbolton. And out onto the track for the formation lap go the Minintas. Me Finley Hines from Jensen Sale, Max Wheatley, Benjamin Lorne, Hayden Fisher, Sebastian Clark, Noah Moulton and Ollie Thompson. Rian Townsend on row number five from Nathan Edwards. Oliver Barton, Noah Jebson, Jensen White, Akil Nanajoni, Alex Dukinchis and Ruben Jenkins on row number eight, rounding up the field. So uh, Max Wheatley, of course, who had to fight through the field in that first race, handily placed in third. He was very quick towards the end of the first inter race, so with a better grid position this time. We'll see how he gets on, but I'm sure that uh, Finley Hines and Jensen Sale will have something to say about that. There's one late coming at the back there, just uh, joining the back of the grid, but they're all in position. And away we go for the mini inters. Over the line they go, charging into the first corner and immediately guarded the inside line. Finley Hines right on his tail is the number 12 of Max Wheatley, who has a peek down the inside, has to settle for second place. So Wheatley up to second. Jensen Sale dropping to third. And here they come through Derek's corner for the first time. So it's Finley Hines, defensive into the first corner and holds on to the lead. Max Wheatley looking strong in second place. Jensen, oh, bit of a move there for fourth from the number 42, Hayden Fisher, who makes the move, stick through the Dan Weldon corner. And the leaders making their way down towards Kestrel corner into Kim Bolton for the first time. Wheatley down the inside. Oh, onto the curves he goes. Is he going to make the move stick? Well, I tell you what, Finley Hines is fighting back. Jensen Sale getting involved in this one as well as they charge down to the first corner but Wheatley's got the line makes the move and oh is he going to make it stick through the willows going to be tight but yes he does Max Wheatley into the lead urging the others to charge on but I think Finley Hines has got other ideas he's going to try and fight for the lead that's the mistake you make there the move didn't come off and that's immediately allowed Wheatley to pull away slightly so uh, I would say here that uh, Finley Hines, Jensen, Sell, Hayden Fisher may want to work together here to keep in, keep in line and just try and keep the pressure on the new race leader, Max Wheatley, who's trying to pull away. Out to the final corner they go. And look at this. Finley Hines is back in there. Jensen Sale is right on the rear end of that cart. Here they come into the first corner and retaking the lead is Finley Hines. And he holds on as well. There's a bit of bumping there. Nothing too serious, nothing's going to cause any damage, but look at this, they are nose to tail as they make their way through towards Derek's corner. And Finley Hines is back into the lead, he makes it stick, Max Wheatley drops to second now. 
Jensen Stale still right in there in third place and very much involved in this one as well is Hayden Fisher, Benjamin Lawn and Sebastian Clark. 151, just a little bit further behind. Here they come through towards the Kestrel corner. Into Kim Bolton, down the inside goes Wheatley back into the lead. Third and fourth, drifting a bit wide there, looking for the traction out of the corner. Sale and Fisher very close indeed as they go down towards the first corner and again. Look at this wheel to wheel, they touch wheels and this allows Jensen Sale and Hayden Fisher right into this one now. Also getting involved is the number 85 of Benjamin Lawn. And again, Heinz goes for the lead. The gloves are off here. And here we come back down the TKM straight. And trouble further down the field there. Two drivers in trouble. That's the... Uh, is that number 49, I think, there? Of... Uh, well, that's Nathan Edwards. Possibly number 23, Rian Townsend with him, I believe, looking at the numbers. That's on the exit of the Dan Weldon corner. And they'll hopefully be able to get those carts out of the way before the leaders come through. They're both carts off the track, at least, anyway. So, Max Wheatley leading the race with 3.42 plus one lap on the clock. Binley Hines, Jensen Sale right in there, the two stricken drivers. On the edge of the track, so there are waved yellows as the leaders go through. You'll see the stricken carts on the outside of the, of the racing line there, the marshals. Just looking after those stricken drivers. Here come the leaders. We're back under green flag conditions here, though. And into the final corner they go. Max Wheatley holding on to the lead. 315 plus one lap remaining. And as you can see, the uh, at least one of the uh, stricken carts getting back out onto the track there. I think that's Nathan Edwards who's back underway. I'm not sure if Rian Townsend's been able to get his cart going, so I think could well be a retirement from the race. Still on the edge of the track, though, so they're just coming through towards the Dan Weldon corner. You see the yellow flag from the marshal there, and waved yellows as they come through the Dan Weldon corner. That car's just been pulled away now from the edge of the track, so they should be clear to go racing from here on in. Down in towards the Kestrel corner they go, and it's still the number 12 of Max Wheatley leading the way. Finley Hines holding on to that second place, trying to close up to make another move here with two and a half minutes to go. Right in there, though, is Jensen Sale, Hayden Fisher, Benjamin Lawn, Sebastian Clark, Noah Moulton, 54, right in there as well. And that leading group only covered by 1.6 seconds. Ollie Thompson, Jensen White, Kilmarnie Joni in 10th place, Barton Jebson in 12th, Jenkins and... Jashinskis in 14th, Nathan Edwards still in the race despite that coming together earlier on. So Max Wheatley just pulling a very small advantage at the front, not by very much here, but every tenth of a second counts in these closing stages. 154 plus the one lap remaining in this second heat race. And Max Wheatley looking good at the front of the field. Finley Hines in second place. Jensen Sale, Hayden Fisher, Benjamin Lawn in there as well. And there we see the stricken cart of Rian Townsend being towed down the infield away from the track now. So the track is safe and clear for the, uh, the leaders on course. Max Wheatley pulling another few tenths. He's set the fastest lap of the race, 44.25. So pulling another tenth on the race leaders, but still only three tenths of a second covering the uh, top two drivers. Jensen Stale right in there and still less than two seconds covering the top seven. So this race still closely poised with just over a minute to go, plus the one lap. Over the line they go, so they should, I think they will squeeze through here one more time before the last lap flag goes out. Max Wheatley, still your race leader, number 12. He's led for a good few laps now. He came under a bit of pressure from Finley Hines. He's just been able to put a fast lap in, though, and just pull away slightly. He says another fastest lap of the race last time round, 44.15 for Max Wheatley. But still the gap, only three-tenths of a second as Finley Hines and Jensen Sale closing up. Absolutely no margin for error here for the race leader, Max Wheatley. If he gets one of the apexes wrong and loses momentum, that will bring the chasing pack right in there. So Max Wheatley driving very strongly here under tough conditions. Finley Hines, Jensen Sale, second and third, keeping that pressure on 18 seconds on the clock. So this is the penultimate lap of the race. Look at Finley Hines in second, and Hines actually set the fastest lap this time, 44.13. Close to the gap back up again. 
So just over a quarter of a second separating the top two drivers. Jensen Sell right in there in third. Rest of the pack making their way down towards the first corner. And here we see Max Wheatley going through the Derrick's corner, through towards the Dan Weldon, the top of the circuit. And Finley Hines, Jensen Sell are right in there. Next time round is the last lap board. Here they come. Down towards Kim Bolton for the penultimate time. One more lap to go for Max Wheatley to try and hold on and snatch the victory. Or will Finley Hines and Jensen Sale be able to ambush on the final lap? Here they come down towards the final corner. Max Wheatley very neatly through the corner. Finley Hines, Jensen Sale second and third. Still charging a little bit further behind is Hayden Fisher, Benjamin Lawn, Sebastian Clark and Noah Moulton. And there we see... Uh, a little bit further behind there is the number 139 of Reuben Jenkins, currently in 13th position, going through the first corner. Into the Dan Weldon corner for the final time, then goes the race leader, Max Wheatley. Three tenths of a second separating him from Finley Hines. He's just about done enough at this stage, just got to get it round Kim Bolton for the final time. And here they come, up towards the line, Max Wheatley will take the chequered flag, race win for Wheatley, it's a drag race to the line for second place, but Finley Hines just about holds off Jensen Sale. Hayden Fisher, Benjamin Lawn in fifth, Sebastian Clark, Noah Moulton, Ollie Hunt-Thompson, Jensen White and Oliver Barton running up the top ten. As we look at the 1-2-2 of Noah Jebson, who makes his way back to the paddock finishing in 12th position so one more race to go for the mini inters it's their final of course that'll be the final race of the day actually race number 32 and we'll be very shortly starting race number 21 of this 32 race program it's the final heat race for the 210 challenges so three more heats to go we've got the uh, the final heat race as it were for the 210 challenge that'll be out in just a few moments as the unfortunate Rian Townsend makes his way the long walk back to the paddock or is being encouraged to have a bit of a jog maybe by the marshal the cart's already been pushed back to the paddock so they'll be looking to try and get Townsend off the track as soon as possible he's starting to have a bit of a jog now they'll want to get both uh, the cart is being pushed away Townsend playing catch up so as we say we've got three more heats to go as such we've got the third heat of the uh, 210 challenge is coming up next on the 200s is a bit later on for the finals of course uh, but the 210 challenge coming up in just a few moments for their third and final heat they'll have their finals later on this afternoon that will be race number 21 coming up next right after that we have the rep charge races for the junior and the senior rotax there's uh, usually of course been a and b finals but uh, there's just the rep charge and then A finals for the Rotaxes later on today because of the numbers, of course. So uh, those record charge races will be very important, of course, with the uh, only the top four drivers progressing to the A final. But in the meantime, we go back to our Villiers air cool machinery and the 210 challenge. Heat number three is about to get underway. It's going to be Robert Perkins from Mark Shepard, Lionel Seifert from Peter Masson, William Shelley in row three from David Skull, Russell Hopes and Anthony Cox, Dan Berry from Thomas Stone, Stuart Henry from Chris Halligan, Paul Fowler, Michael Owen, Ray Sloan and Tony Berry on row number eight and the final row made up of John Hutton and Oliver Shelley. So seven minutes plus one lap for the 210 challenge which will be getting underway in just a few moments. Don't forget of course that right after this we will have the rep charge races for both the junior and the senior Rotax. So stay tuned for those final two heats before the final gets underway a little later on this afternoon. So uh, race number 21 of the 32 race program getting underway shortly as so uh, again we get the 210 challenges. It's the, uh, the guest class this weekend incorporating part of the 210 challenge which uh, takes in karting circuits across the UK. Final cycle, the driver who had a late DNF in heat number two. He's won the challenge for the last four years. Tom Stone. So riders in through the field as well. Dan Berry has had a good weekend so far. And for Rob Perkins and I would say Chris Callaghan, number 30, who uh, narrowly missed out on victory in the first race, finishing second. Now uh, returning back to the challenge after a few years away from racing in these carts. 
and say a number of famous alumni who uh, started their racing careers in these 210 style carts including Richard Deans, uh, David Leslie, uh, David Leslie Jr and Nigel Mansell no less also raced these carts back in the uh, all this uh, style engine back in the late 60s and early 70s so here we go for the 210 challenge heat number three race number 21 of your 32 race program of course uh, this is the fourth round of the Hunscart Racing Club Championship 10 months out of 12 so there will be a, a month off in May because that will be the uh, British Championships here at Kimbolton and uh, the HKRC Championship returning in June right here of course on TNL Sports don't forget to give TNL Sports a subscribe if you're watching on the social media, not just for the HKRC, but plenty of motorsport action, including the British Mini Bike Championships and British Supermoto Championships. Uh, the Mini Bikes, including the Road to Moto GP, right here on TNL Sports. And so away we go. The race gets underway and it's a good start for fantastic start in fact for the number number one of Lionel Seifleet chasing there is Robert Perkins a bit of a slow start for the rest of the field they didn't quite get away as good as those two but uh, still charging away as they make their way through towards the Dan Weldon corner for the first time Down TK and straight they go, heading towards Kestrel Corner. The lead is now well clear of the rest of the field. And it's the number one of Lionel Seifert that leads the way. Winner of the previous race, Robert Perkins, is right on his tail in second place. He'll be looking to try and keep the momentum and take the challenge to Seifert. It's Dan Berry up to third position at the end of the first lap. As we watch number 31 of Peter Masson there. Fourth place for the number 31. Down the inside having a look there. Number two of Thomas Stone couldn't quite find a way through. And number 41 just behind there, Russell Hopes. Back to the front though. And Lionel Seifley coming under some early pressure here from Robert Perkins. Still Dan Berry in third place, Thomas Stone then up to fourth. There's Masson fighting with the number 41 there of Russell Hopes, Paul Fowler. And Chris Callaghan just a little bit further behind. They make their way down into the final corner. And the leader's having a fight going into the first corner between Lionel Seifert and Robert Perkins. There's the number two of Thomas Stone pulling away now. As down the inside goes Russell Hopes to make up another position. Chris Callahan forced wide there. The number 30, that may... Oh, have a look there. Paul Fowler tried to uh, take advantage of that and try and find a way through. But Callahan shutting the door. The leader's making their way through the top corner. Still Lionel Seifert from Robert Perkins. Dan Berry on his own in third place. Number 41 then, Russell Hopes. Moving up a couple of positions as the leaders make their way out to the final corner, heading towards the Stowe corner. Still fairly close amongst the leaders as Perkins goes into the lead. So Robert Perkins, your new race leader, as we watch this battle here. Number six there, having a look down the inside there, Paul Fowler on the number four of Stuart Henry. Meanwhile, side by side is the first corner between 41, Russell Hopes. And round the outside goes Chris Callaghan, so Callaghan into fifth position. Back to the front, and the leaders, Robert Perkins then, now into the lead from Lionel Seifleet. Down in towards the Castle Corner they go, and Perkins, winner of the second heat, of course, just trying to pull away from Seifleet. These two now well clear of Dan Berry, who's alone in third place. Lead is making their way down towards the first corner, and you can see... Perkins very aggressively guarding that inside line into the first corner. Perhaps he didn't realise that he had a little bit of a cushion between him and Lionel Seifleet. A bit further down the field, trouble for Stuart Henry. Just seemed to drop a couple of places there. I don't think he missed a gear, possibly. And back into the lead now goes Lionel Seifleet into the top corner. Very quick down the... Uh, and the Amitsu straight, and now into the lead he goes, so Seifley back into the lead, Perkins drops to second, but Perkins did take the fight back to him a few moments ago, and he gets a nice drive, oh, side by side down the straight, and Perkins back into the lead he goes, he got a much better drive going out of the Kimbolt corner, and Seifley, so number three back into the lead this time, 320 plus the one lap remaining, they're closing up on the number 52, 
15th place driver of Oliver Shelley, who may well go a lap down in just a moment between these two, having a very close tussle at the front. A bit further back, the, the fight between the number eight was there. Ray Stone, Mark Shepard, Michael Owen and William Shelley all fighting on the edge of the top ten. Uh, side fleet, the race leader, closes back up on Robert Perkins. This final corner could be very important as uh, Seifley goes for the drive out of the last corner, tries to get the momentum, but at the moment it looks like Perkins has got the line covered, guards the inside line. And keeps Seifley behind him, so let's watch through the willows. Let's see uh, number one going through. This way he made the move last time round, going in towards the Dan Weldon corner. Both drivers getting a nice drive up towards the top corner as we watch on the inset there. Number 31, Peter Masson is currently in ninth place. 2.20 on the clock though, and the number three of Robert Perkins continues to hold on to the lead. Here they come down towards Kestrel Corner once again, into Kim Bolton. And Perkins holds on, so there he is, still your race leader. He knows the side breeze is right behind him, and look, immediately guarding that inside line. Keeps the apex, goes to the lower gear, and through the corner he goes, still in the lead. Looking a bit further back there, there's Thomas Stone and Paul Fowler fighting for sixth position. Russell Hope still on his own in fifth with the head of him. We've got Chris Callahan, and still this fight for the lead as the number three, Robert Perkins, makes his way down towards the Dan Weldon corner and back towards the finish they go. Starts to close up on some of the tail enders here, so whether this will be a factor as well. In the inset there is the seventh place, number four of Stuart Henry, so just crossing the line now, we've got Ray Sloan going through, Michael Owen 72 fighting with the number 10 of Mark Shepard, and Anthony Cox just behind them, there is Cox number 44, and they're about to be closed up on the leaders here, are still holding on to the lead is Robert Perkins, side break down the inside though, gets a nice drive out of the corner, oh, but look at that, Robert Perkins shutting the door on him as they make their way through the willows, but now they're closing up on the lappers and they're having their own fight here for 10th position. So the blue flag's going out for the back markers. And whilst they will look to concede the racing line, they, um, they won't want to spoil their own race in the progress, but both drivers nipping past the number 44 of Anthony Cox and the number 72 there of Michael Owen. And right in turn there, number 10, Mark Shepard, so some good driving. There's the number 5 just behind there, Dan Berry in third place, but those drivers on the edge of the top 10 doing very well there to uh, let the leaders through but not ruin their own race in the progress. Again, you see Seifert going for that line down the inside, going out of Stowe Corner. But Perkins has got the line covered, so let's have a look at the clock now. We're coming towards 20 seconds. I think it's going to be last lap next time round. Uh, what's turning into be a very close battle between the champion number one Lionel Seyfried and the hard charging Robert Perkins here. Driver is very much the uh, rising star of the 210 challenge. Here he comes out to the final corner. So Perkins over the line, one lap to go. And I think they've got Ray Sloan in front there, number eight. Sloan will get the, the blue flags in. Oh bad place to encounter the back mark. there's not really much that uh, number eight can do here Ray Sloan holds his line oh and look at that what a move from Lionel Seifley well it was a bit unfortunate there for Robert Perkins because they encountered Ray Sloan through the willows which is a very difficult corner to make the pass even there's no rare nowhere really that the slower driver can go he just held his line and well uh, Lionel Seifley judged that to perfection to snatch the lead on the final half lap here they come out of the final corner and Seifling will take the checker flag, what a win, he punches the air and he'll be pleased with that one on the unfortunate Robert Perkins shaking his head there, wasn't much he could do, Dan Berry comes through in third place and it's going to be Chris Halligan in, in fourth position, Ray Sloan over the line, number eight who finishes in tenth position, but uh, a bit of bad luck there I would say for Robert Perkins, he encountered Ray Sloan who was uh, going a lap down through the willows and in credit to Ray Sloan, the lap driver, there wasn't too much he could do apart from hold his line really, he uh, eased off a little to let them through and they exited the willows, but uh, Lionel Seifelich saw a gap and he snatched it, so uh, great finish for him, uh, William Shelley a late retirement on the infield as we see the number 31 there of the ninth place finisher Peter Masson bringing that cart home, and there you can see the, uh, the old school 80s, 90s layout of these carts. There's no real uh, nose cone on them like the modern carts have. Uh, minimal bodywork. It's been great to have these 210 Challenge racers here today in the old Villiers 
air-cooled two-stroke cars. These are, this is old machinery. We're talking very old school here. And as you can see, they're still uh, pretty quick bits of kit as well. So as uh, William Shelley pushes the cart back to the paddock, he'll be out a bit later on. The um, Not too much of a gap, though, because race number 26 in the finals is the 210 Challenge final. So we've only got a gap of four races before they're back out again. In the meantime, though, it's the crunch time here with, uh, in association with Ainsby Plans Hire. The Junior Rotax Repercharge race is about to get underway. Now, this is for the drivers who have failed to get into the A final, which will be taking place a little bit later on. So they will have one last opportunity to get progress to the A final later on today in this Repercharge race. The top four drivers in this race will progress through to the A final. Uh, this is normally, uh, we normally have a B and an A final for the Rotax. It's a little bit different today because of the numbers. But um, the premise is still very similar, of course. It's the, uh, this is the equivalent of the B finals we have earlier on. And the Junior Rotax, as I say, this is really when it matters. They've got to get into the top four to get into that A final. So, uh, as you can imagine, a bad start is completely out of the question. One cart going onto the uh, onto the trolley there, so let's hope that's nothing too serious. I believe the last of the 210 challengers is one or two retirements from that race, but I think they're uh, off the circuit now, and uh, we'll see them not too long in the, not too long to go until we see the 210s back out on track again. Of course, race number 26 is the 210 challenge final. So we've got race number 22 coming up in just a moment. It's the Junior Rotax Repercharge. 23 is the Senior Rotax Repercharge race. And then our finals. Race 24, Honda 200s. Race 25 is KZ UK. Race 26 is the 210 Challenge. Race 27, TKM Extreme. 28 and 29 being the Junior and Senior Rotax A finals respectively. And then our final three races, the X30 Senior and R177 final is race number 30, race 31 Micromax, and race number 32, our final race of the day, a little later on this afternoon, will be the Mini Inters at this big meeting here, the fourth round of the Hunts Kart Racing Club Championships here at Kimbolton. Big entry of over 240 drivers taking part today and for the first time it's been very wintry conditions so far this year uh, for the first time we've got something approaching spring-like weather today so uh, just going to wait and see there is a bit of a pause before the junior rotax gets underway uh, i think maybe just sorting the grids out will be underway in just a few moments and say so don't forget of course to uh, check out the action on tnl sports for all of the hunts cart racing clubs club championships here right the way through to december in 2024 along with the British Mini Bikes, including the uh, Road to Moto GP and the British Supermoto Championships. Big shout out, of course, to the HKRC sponsors before this Repercharge race gets underway to Ainsbury Plans Hire, uh, iZone Drive Performance, Stu Stretton Photography, Easy and Elegant Weddings and Events, Clars and Motorsport, and Torque Racewear, which also incorporates the Torque Racewear driver of the day and that will be decided after the meeting and publicised on the HKRC social media as we say of course next round of the championship schedules take place in June May we'll see the British Championships here at Kimbolton part of the reason of course why the uh, the big entry of drivers is here this weekend uh, so just a few moments pause here before the Junior Rotax rapid charge gets underway I think they're just sorting out the points and the uh, making sure everything is ready to go before this rapid charge race gets underway and we will be back underway with you on track in just a few moments time.
So after a few minutes pause we get underway with the Junior Rotax out onto the circuit now for their formation lap. It's going to be Alex Lynn from Harry Gilbert, Arthur Brownless, Harry Russell, Rex Ashley, George Phillips, Alexander Gergwis, Toby Farthing and away we go. This is where it all matters. Seven minutes plus one lap for the repercharge for the Junior Rotax and here we go it was Harry Gilbert that led them into the first corner looks like he's held on there 52 in second place Harry Russell with a good start one driver cut adrift at the back of the field just trying to get the number on that one I think it might be Matthias Jedvabny number treble seven so Jedvabny pretty much out of contention for the final here right at the back of the field but so close here don't forget of course only the top four will progress through to the final here as they make their way down towards the final corner and look how close it is as the first lap draws to a close 
So Harry Gilbert from Arthur Downless, Alex Lynn with a bad start, dropping down to ninth position at the end of that first lap. Got a bit of work to do. Arthur Brownless in second place. And this is a very tense part of the race here. There's still a long way to go. Look at your clock there. Just under six minutes plus one lap to go. And this race is so closely poised here. What you certainly don't want to do is to be too rash in these early stages. Make a mistake and drop yourself out of contention. But equally, you really want to be settling in those top four. At the moment, it's the 97 of Rex Ashley that's on the bubble. There he goes. Starts a shot there with the uh, an orange and red coloured helmet fourth place driver last drive to progress so far as the number 35 Arthur Brownless tries to make a move for the lead but oh it comes off worse and it allows Harry Russell through so Russell through to second this is going to bring Rex Ashley into contention as well oh number 30 in trouble there Zach Reisman out of the race on the exit of the Kimbolton corner and that's his day done so uh, it looks like Risman out of the race that everything carries on though still with the number 136 of Harry Gilbert leading the way trying to break away a bit now he'll be hoping that the drivers behind start to fight and Gilbert out to the final corner he goes but look at number 52 in second Harry Russell charging hard here having a peek down the inside goes for the lead as he outbreaked himself though Gilbert sneaks down the inside and retakes the lead Arthur Brownless and Rex Ashley right in there Alexander Gergowis certainly sensing an opportunity here as well in fifth place. And Gergowis certainly looking to try and get involved in this fight in the top four. It's so close, actually, the, uh, the top four separated by only ten six tenths of a second. Then we see 25 Gergowis, Toby Farthing, 53. We'll know that he's right in contention as well. Oh, and down the inside, sneaky little move there for number 52. Harry Russell saw half a gap and went for it nice little move there and into the lead goes Harry Russell still charging in second all oh, and I think Harry Gilbert will uh, be kicking himself for that one because uh, Harry Russell came in out of nowhere to snatch into the lead here they come up towards the Derrick's corner so Russell leading Gilbert not giving up though in second place he's going to try and fight back and they make their way up towards Dan Weldon corner oh and he runs a bit wide there Russell this could be the opportunity that Gilbert needs and yes he does back into the lead goes Harry Gilbert and this time tries to guard that line going into Kim Bolton corner Russell not giving this one up it's getting tight behind there though between Rex Ashley Toby Farthing and Alexander Gergwis over the line they go so Toby Farthing now into fourth place getting that final spot in the A final if things stay as they are the top three just starting to break away ever so slightly from that bubble position in fourth place. The Toby Farthing trying desperately to close up onto the back of Arthur Brownless in third, number 35. Here they come up towards Dan Weldon corner once again. Gilbert leads, Russell second, Brownless third, Farthing in fourth and Toby Farthing starting to get involved in this one now. The top four just starting to break away now from the chasing pack and that's where they'll want to be. 35 down the inside then Arthur Brownless snatches second place this could allow Toby Farthing into things and this is great news for Harry Gilbert if these drivers for second through to fourth start scrapping you just need to try and put in a solid lap now and just try and pull a cushion four tenths of a second between him and Arthur Brownless last time round and this could be a very important lap here for Harry Gilbert Gilbert just running his own race here doing everything he can here using his own lines second third and fourth very close and back onto the bubble now is Toby Farthing Rex Ashley and Alexander Gergis Ryan Papini not Ryan Rapini 165 not too far behind leaders making their way through the Kimbolton corner once again look how close it is behind the leader though over the line they go 155 on the clock four tenths of a second between first and second place is Brownless now in second position Brownless in second, Russell in third, and now it's Rex Ashley into fourth. Too close to call in this fight for fourth position. Harry Gilbert doing a great job at the front here of just maintaining that gap. It's seven tenths of a second, so that's great news for the 136, the race leader. Just needs for another good couple of steady laps in. Just try and keep that cushion from the charging Arthur Brownless in second. Because if Brownless starts fighting for the lead, that could really suck Harry Gilbert into this last dash 
fight for the fourth position so there's a bit of a gap now again between the top four and the chasing pack Rex Ashley now to fourth place and about six tenths of a second between Ashley and the chasing pack bit six seventh and eight all very close indeed so it's uh, Ryan Rapini now up to fifth place Toby Farthing Alexander Gergwis and Alex Lynch a bit further behind in eighth position as they make their way through towards the top corner Harry Gilbert still with that very small advantage at the front but that could well be crucial here looking at the clock now we've got uh, just under 40 seconds remaining before the last lap flag goes out so here they come down towards the final corner once again uh, this will be the penultimate lap of the race Harry Gilbert just looking to try and keep it together now with two more laps to go not much of an advantage at the front but it's enough for the time being it's just about enough to keep Arthur Brownless out of striking distance Harry Russell still in third and it's still Rex Ashley on that bubble position in fourth place <laughs> desperately behind him there Ryan Rapini and Toby Farthing trying to get involved in the fight to try and snatch that fourth place away this way still too close to call although at the moment Harry Gilbert look at that he's just got only six tenths of a second between him and the chasing pack but that's all that he needs right now here they come out to the final corner one more lap to go for Harry Gilbert to guarantee his place in the A final a little later on this afternoon but behind him the gloves are off here anybody could get through here right now Arthur Brown is still in second place fending off Rex Ashley who moves into third position fourth now is Harry Russell and Russell really coming under pressure now from the chasing pack Ryan Rapini Alexander Gergwis who has actually set the fastest lap of the race number 25 here they come down towards the final few corners and Harry Gilbert still doing just about enough here to hold on and just got to get it around the final corner now Harry Gilbert 136 your race leader of the junior Rotax Repercharge over the line he goes who is it going to be that gets through oh and look at this Arthur Brown the second Rex Ashley third Ryan Rapini snatching fourth place on the last lap of the race punches the air as he goes through he knows what he's done and Rapini getting that final place in the A final making up six places so well done to uh, to Rapini Alexander Gergis will be packing up the trailer and going home as will the unfortunate Harry Russell who sat in the top four for most of the race but he ends up finishing in sixth place Alex Lynn started on the front row but faded to seventh position and Toby Farthing another one who had his moments there 53 ended up finishing in eighth place so the day's over for him as well Matthew So, Blake Southern in tenth, Oscar Keane, Ethan Hatch, Matthias Jedvardny and the driver that we're looking at right now Jack Risman whose race ended fairly early on of course had some mechanical trouble and he was out of the race so it's the uh, the long journey home for Risman looks a bit disappointed but uh, all he can do really is get the get the cart back on the trolley get it back to the paddock and uh, he'll be hoping for some better luck next time I think but uh, he's okay shakes his head ah well here's what it is I think is the message there that he's giving to us there so bad luck to him but I uh, look forward to seeing him in the future of course we move on to our second of the two repercharge races before we move on to the finals this is the senior Rotax and exactly the same as the junior Rotax this is a seven minute plus one lap format and it's uh, very much a sprint format here it's top four to progress through to the A final later on this afternoon and there's some pretty decent drivers in this one actually who could stake a claim uh, Matthias Voriak will lead them away from Adam White Jonathan Railton, James Henson of course are the drivers to look out for as well and here is the full lineup so it's Bavoriak from White, Railton and Henson starting in the coveted top four positions Max McGillray, Alfie Bushell, Joe Fox, Noros Balderston and the rest of the field made up of Isaac Reynolds, Zav Chapman Lewis, Lucas Theo, Joshua Burnett, Cassius Death, Rachel Robertson and Theo Stanislas rounding out the uh, rest of the field and this is our final uh, heat race before the uh, the finals get underway this is race 23 of the 32 race program next race after this is the Honda 200 finals that'll be race 24 KZUK final will be race number 25 the 210 challenge will be race number 26 TKM extreme race number 27 
Junior Rotax final is race 28. Senior Rotax final is race 29. The X30 Seniors R177s will be race number 30. Race 31 is Micromax and Water Swift Restricted. And the final race of the day, race number 32, is the Mini Inters. So finals coming up across the next hour or so for those various race classes. So still plenty of action here at the fourth round of the Huntscart Racing Club Championships here at Kimbolton. Plenty of action to come out on the track. And we are really approaching the sharp end of the afternoon here starting of course with our final repercharge race for the senior rotax and much like the junior rotax positions of course this is a pretty much a last chance qualifier for those who fail to get through to the a final and it is the top four from this race that will progress through to the a final out onto the track they go Headed, of course, by Bavoriak, White in second, Railton and Henson. Of course, those top four drivers wouldn't be too disappointed if the, uh, the order stays as it was. Thanks, of course, to Drift Limits for their support with the London Motor Circuit, one of our sponsors for 2024. Senior Rotax, Repercharge is about to get underway. This is our final heat race, as it were. And this is the last opportunity for our non-qualifying senior Otax drivers to get through to the A-final. Tense moments here. And they slow right down on Kimbolton Corner. The start here is going to be very important indeed. Over the line they go. And the rubber charge gets underway. Voriak dives to the inside to guard that apex into the first corner. One driver gets it all wrong there. Oh, and he saved it as well. That was Jonathan Railton sideways into the first corner. I thought he was going to spin out there. But he holds on to second place. But that trouble on the first corner means that Bavoriak has been able to pull away already. And that gap, I reckon that's nearly a second. That's an incredible start there for Bavoriak. He did all he, all he had to do there in the first corner. Guarded that apex, stopped anyone from getting through. And Jonathan Relton spectacularly drifting through the first corner. There's trouble at the back of the field. One or two drivers getting together. So this could mean that Bavoriak... I don't know if he's aware that he's on his own, but he's just got to work his own race here. Keep it steady. Keep his eyes down the track here. 42.69 on that first lap and already leads by one and a half seconds. So that is a fantastic start for him. Jonathan Railton recovering well in second place. He's settled down into a nice rhythm now. Max McGilvray has moved up into third. And Adam White, of course, uh, got caught up in that trouble on the first corner. Dropping down to the, the bubble spot there in fourth place. James Henson dropping down to seven. Uh, we lost a few drivers on the first lap there. Cassius Dieppe, Alfie Bushel, I think another one caught up in that uh, trouble on the first corner. Theo Stanislas as well. So those drivers realistically you would say are out of contention in these stages. But you never know in racing. You've got to keep on pushing. So they complete another lap. Boreat leads. Still the gap around one point, uh, one and a half seconds, give or take. Fastest lap of the race is the fifth place driver 113 joe fox as he desperately tries there he is closing up on the blue cart there of 62 max mcgillbury and uh, watch out for the driver with the white helmet there 113 joe fox fastest driver on the track last time round this is fourth place this is where it matters still headed by the number 62 of max mcgillbury with the blue cart in fourth position Oh, and look at that though, nice move from number 56, Rachel Robertson. She dives down the inside there and takes two drivers in one swoop there. So Robertson now going towards, the oh, and look at that. Oh, tangling wheels there with Joe Fox and Max McGilvray. That was nasty moment there, you would say, for those two. Oh, and uh, that's a shame there for those two, because I think realistically they're out of contention now, especially Joe Fox, who was looking fast on the... Uh, I tell Rachel Robertson making up 10 positions now, up to uh, fourth place. We'll see how this one settles down. There's number 13, Adam White, comfortably in second place right now. Jonathan Railton up to... Uh, still in third place. So drama here in the senior Otax final. Unless your name is... Macek Bavoriak, the race leader, who's had a very comfortable race. Hasn't really had to do very much at the front, just run his own race. And that's exactly what he would have wanted. It's still White in second position. There is White. Number 13. Jonathan Railton. 
171 not too far behind in third Rachel Robertson still there in four and we'll have a look at the moment she's got a fair gap on the fifth place driver number 124 Noah Osbaldiston here's the drivers a bit further down the field there we've got Zav Chapman Lewis Joshua Burnett Alfie Bushell Theo Stanislas a bit further behind those drivers pretty much racing for glory at the moment but here comes Rachel Robertson She's had a fantastic record charge race here, number 56. She started down in 14th, way down in the midfield, has put some very decent laps together and made the moves where she had to, and now sitting comfortably in four. But I would say that's not really good enough at the moment. She'll want to make sure she's a bit higher up the field and safely into that A final, 41.04. She's the fastest driver in the race so far. There she is, number 56. Rachel Robertson. Tagging on to the back wheels here of Jonathan Rounds. Oh, and look at that. There she goes. She likes that corner. She sees the opportunity. And Rachel Robertson now into third position. Great try for her so far. And still, as we say, fastest lap of the race, 41.04. Robertson now third place pretty much at the moment, trying to seal her position in the A final. The Warrior clear away at the front. Adam White still in second place. There's the number 51 a bit further back there, Theo Stanislas, down in 15th position. Still charging, albeit out of contention at the moment. So Rachel Robertson making up 11 positions in the senior Rotax final. Way down the field, of course, in the uh, in the starting grid, and the the first two first two laps or so very important indeed. And she's done everything right so far. In the meantime, though. The Chip of Oriat, the race leader, is starting to come under a little bit of pressure from the second place driver, Adam White. And there is White just trying to close the gap and let's have a look, 150 on the clock. And the pace that she's setting right now, wouldn't be surprised if Rachel Robertson couldn't get involved in this fight for the lead either. She's, um, she's certainly not driving conservatively, she's got eyes on victory here. She knows she's done enough at the moment to get through to the A final, but well, the racer's instinct isn't necessarily to tour around. We've still got a fight in 1 minute 30. I think Robertson is just trying to close up on this lead group here. So Voriat leads. White in second. The gap goes down to three tenths of a second. Robertson still closing. 56. She's left Jonathan Relton behind, but Relton at the moment comfortably into the A final. Just over a second ahead of Noah Ospaldiston, number 124, who at the moment is uh, still charging in fifth place as the fight for the lead starts to intensify here Moriat leads White in second here we go what can White do we've got 56 seconds on the clock I think oh it's going to be tight on the uh, on the clock here they'll probably squeeze through one more time as White takes the lead great move there from Adam White 45 seconds on the clock so I think there's going to be two more laps to go in this race look at uh, Robertson though not too far behind this before again tries to fight for the lead this could allow Rachel Robertson into contention here. She's closing up all the time. She's left the fourth place driver, Jonathan Railton, behind. Railton being pursued hard now by Noah Ostbaldiston, who knows it's all down to these, what I think will be these final. Well, it's going to be tough. I think it might even be the final lap next time round because it's getting close on the clock here. 15 seconds remaining. And Adam White continues to lead the way before Reak still charging in second. Robertson closing up. All the time in third place, here they come, oh, it's going to be tight here, over the line they go. Four seconds on the clock, so we've got two more laps to go in this race. And this could have real ramifications further down the field here for Jonathan Railton and Noah Osbaldiston. Mac McGillray has got a technical flag, so uh, some sort of damage to the car. I can only uh, assume that's down to the incident earlier on in the race when he collided further down of course early on in the race so uh, Gilvey race is unfortunately over down to a technical issue meanwhile Adam White on the penultimate lap of the race charging through to try and snatch that checkered flag here they come out to the final corner still the midfield fighting away for the what would be essentially now the minor positions but here they come one more lap to go nine tenths of a second covering the top three drivers Adam White still leading which is Roryak in second, Rachel Robertson in third, there they go. There's the number 51, a bit further down, Theo Stanislaus, the back of the field. So uh, already well clear of the rest of the charging drivers. So Adam White has done very well actually to come through and snatch the lead from Machep Roryak. But Rachel Robertson making up 11 positions in this repercharge race to get through a 
the moment, he would say, to the final. And she's at the moment going to finish in third place. Still behind Jonathan Railton and Noel Svalston charging. Checkered flag goes out. Adam White takes the checkered flag. Hunter Vahoriak in second. And Rachel Robertson third. And there goes Jonathan Railton into fourth. Snatching the final position from the unfortunate Noah Osvaldiston who didn't give up and kept the pressure on right the way to the check flag. James Henson in sixth place, Joe Fox. The unfortunate Joe Fox, of course, after that incident with Matt McGillivray finishing in seventh place. Isaac Reynolds, Alfie Bushel, Lucas Theo, Zav Chapman Lewis in 11th, Cassius Gap in 12th, Joshua Burnett, and there, number 51. Theo Stanislaus rounding out the field. So Adam White goes through from Bavoria Robertson and Railton through to the senior Rotax final a little later on this afternoon. So we're going to move on to the first of our finals now. Race number 24 out of 32. It's the Honda 200 final in association with iZone driver performance. We'll have a look at the lineups in just a few moments. So uh, here we go. It's the sharp end of the day now, right the way through to the finals. Honda 200's coming up next. They'll be followed by KZUK in race number 25. Race number 26 is the 210 Challenge. Race 27 is the TKM Extreme. Race 28, Junior Rotax Final. Race 29, Senior Rotax Final. Race 30 is X30 Senior and R177. Race 31, Micromax and the Water Swift Restricted. And Mini Inters will be race number 32. So race 24 getting underway now on the 200 finals. It's Kevin Ivanoff from Ryan White. Riley Blakemore from Elliot Bork. Magiris Kovacic, Theo Hamilton. Jack Fulberg Harmer, Ollie Knox, Otto Amy, Jackson Heath, Bo Winslade, Sawyer Henderson, Ralphie Bramscombe, Aurora Joel, George Johnston, Rebecca Restall, Jerry Doffersey, William Davison and Reggie Doffersey rounding out the field in this 19 driver final so once again as you've seen on many of the rounds this year Kevin Ivanoff has been the driver to beat in the Honda 200 class but Ryan White has certainly kept him honest in the heat races today and it'll be interesting to see how this final goes slightly longer it's eight minutes plus one lap Look out for Ralphie Branscombe, of course. He had the black flag in the first heat race today, which has set him back a bit on the grid. They see him there in the pink helmet, so he'll be looking to fight back as they make their way through. Over the line they go. And, yeah, the very early was way too fast there. The, uh, the start waved off, and they'll go around once again. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how, uh, how this goes. I think Kevin Ivanoff just about you would say maybe starting as the favorite but i'm sure that uh, ryan white and possibly even riley blakemore might have something to say about that look out for uh, theo hamilton as well he had that off in the heat race so had to fight back a bit as well so he'll be looking to get more towards the sharp end ollie knox and otto amy having their moments as well but uh, as i say one drive to watch out for further back in the field is the number zero of ralphie branscombe who's been on a similar pace to the race leaders but uh, starting a little bit further back in this final by virtue of the black flag in the first heat. Recovered well in heat number two, so he's been able to move up the grid a little bit now for the final. And he'll be looking for a good couple of laps there to get up amongst the sharp end once the race gets underway. This looks a lot better this time, making their way around the final corner. A little bit slow and a bit more in position, but drivers are very eager to get this one going. Here they come over the line, and the final gets underway. Oh, and, uh, well... Kevin Ivanoff doesn't look too happy there. He thinks that uh, Ryan White jumped ahead of him there, but uh, the race is the race is good and the start's good. Away they go. So Ryan White gets the uh, gets the jump on the field and takes the lead in the early stages. Ivanoff not too happy with that one, but uh, well, it's all good to go. So he's just got to uh, just got to get on with it. Really, he's still there in second place, and it looks like uh, that's Riley Blakemore. Blakemore, I think, in third place. Elliot Bork. Kovacic, Kovacic in uh, fifth position, the number 15. Here they come down towards the final corner. Ivanov down the inside, goes for the pass. Oh, and look at second place. Riley Blakemore in there as well. So Ivanov, well, he's, re he's responded to that unhappiness at the start in the right way. It's no point getting too angry about it. It's uh, the start. The officials were happy, so he's just got to get on with it, even if he didn't agree with that start. And that's what he's certainly doing here, fighting his way back to the front and making Ryan White fight back here. White is right on his tail here. 
I think on uh, White's party, I think perhaps he would say that he judged the start quite well. So, uh, as always with racing, I'm sure there's two sides to the story. But uh, all had a very similar outcome here because the same two drivers are fighting it out at the front here. So it's even off leading. White in second, Blakemore third, Elliot Bork in fourth. Ollie Knox has had a good lap moving up to fifth position. And a little bit further down, Theo Hamilton not quite getting the start he would have wanted, dropping down to seventh place, just behind Gomekis, uh, Jackson Heath in eighth place, Bulbrook Harmon ninth, and Ralphie Branscombe breaking into the top ten. Here they go, so uh, I would say one minute longer this race, six minute twenty plus the one lap, and Ivanov still leading. White is on his tail though in second place, and he will not give this lead up lightly, it's uh, still a very close late race here. Blakemore and Bork third and fourth, keeping that pressure on just a little bit further behind. And here they come up to the top corner again, Ivanov guarding that apex as they make their way through the Dan Weldon corner. And Ryan White keeping that pressure on as they make their way down towards the TKM straight in towards Kestrel corner. And look how close it is at the front here. And of course these uh, 200 four-stroke engines. They really, it's very important to be very smooth with these uh, the not the easiest ones to build up the power if you were uh, too aggressive through the corner so you'll see the drivers very smooth the operation always keeping the keeping the power at all we saw even off run a little bit wide onto the curb there snatched in front of ryan white and a little bit of bumping which was unintentional of course it was just two drivers on the same part of the track so a small mistake there from even off we don't see them too often and that keeps this race well and truly underway i'm sure that ryan white in second number one will have ideas of taking the checkered flag but look at this right in there is Riley Blakemore and Elliot Bork at the moment neither driver at the moment in contention to go for the lead but if these two leaders start scrapping those uh, chasing drivers in third and fourth could certainly get involved Quebec is in fifth place Ollie Knox in uh, sixth position Ralphie Branscombe continuing his charge up to seventh place we just saw him going into the screen a bit further behind he's getting past Steele Hamilton Jack Fulbrakama, Otto Amy in ninth place from Ollie Knox, Jackson Heath, Aurora Joel. Then we've got uh, Soy Henderson, George Johnson, Bo Winslade, Rebecca Restall, Jerry Duffersey, Reggie Duffersey, and William Davison is a retirement from the race. So we've still got 18 drivers left in this race. Uh, there was a note at the start there that uh, Ryan White's possibly under investigation. So whether that's to do with that, um, that start. We shall wait and see, but in the meantime, Kevin Ivanov continues to charge at the front. There's some of the midfield fight there. Rora Joel, Soy Henderson, George Johnson in there. As we look at the number 15, fifth place position, Margus Kovekis, and I think that's uh, Ralphie Branscombe having a look down the inside. Yes, it is. So the number zero, Branscombe down the inside. He's had a, um, a good response after a difficult start to the day getting the black flag. He's certainly got his head down and just started to fight his way through the field and once again in the final of course he'll have been hampered with a start that's pretty far back in the field than he would have wanted but moving now into fifth place they'll be trying perhaps to get involved in this fight for the lead he's got a little bit of a gap to make up here as they make their way down towards the final couple of corners even off leading white in second Blakemore third and there we see the number 94 of Jack Paul Brakama with Theo Hamilton having a peek down the inside. Oh, they bang wheels. Well, it was a little bit tasty that one, but uh, I think it'll all be okay. And um, Theo Hamilton barging his way through there just about. And I'm sure that Jack Paul Brakama will uh, not be too happy with that one, but he'll just have to try and dust himself down and fight back. Although Hamilton's got a bit of a drive. And 77 getting involved in this one now. Otto Amy as well. Leaders, meanwhile, making their way up towards the uh, Dan Weldon corner at the top of the circuit. And it is still Ivanov versus White in first and second place. They make their way down towards the Kestrel corner. And the end of the lap as the midfield runners still fighting away on the edge of the top ten. The likes of uh, Aurora Joel, Jackson Heath, Soy Henderson all in there. A little bit further behind. Leaders, meanwhile, over the line they go. Just over two minutes on the clock. The rest of the top ten making their way through there. There's Otto Amy, Ollie Knox, Aurora Joel going through. Jackson Heath, Sawyer Henderson and Bo Winslade. Just a little bit further behind Winslade, of course, the, uh, the Reaganmeister of Kim Bolton at the previous round, of course, in March. But uh, not such a good day for him today down in the, the midfield. But still charging hard and grabbing some points as up at the front here. Ivanov, 
looking strong and he knows he's going to try and defend that position he knows who's behind him and Ryan White keeping that pressure on in second place they make their way down towards the Kestrel corner once again White trying to find a way through here but Ivanov guarding those lines as he makes his way through the Kimbolton corner for another lap 130 or thereabouts on the clock as they cross the line so still a few more laps to go in this one and the top two are just starting to pull a small advantage between the charging pack third place Riley Blakemore is about a second down on this fight for the lead so good news you would say for Ivanov and White first and second place they're not really getting pushed behind in any sort of real battle and I just saw Ryan White just checking over his shoulder there just to make sure I think he was just checking his position on the track so he knows now that he's not under any real pressure for second place right now and he can maybe have a fight for the lead without risking losing that second place in the process so he's just starting to turn the screw here on Ivanov who on his part of course will be determined to hold on to that lead here they come through Kimbolton corner once again still the chasing pack third, fourth and fifth close behind there Blakemore Bork and Branscombe now into fifth position and here you can see White just getting a little more aggressive now as he forces Ivanov wide out of the corner. He saw Ivanov guarding the apex and that left him open on the outside of Stowe Corner. And Ryan White now taking the lead. So what can Ivanov do? 28 seconds on the clock. So I think next time that's going to be the last lap as Ivanov nips down the inside back into Lee. But no, White's got the line. Oh, and they squeeze the wheel to wheel through Dan Weldon Corner. Great driving there to drag race it's the momentum down in towards the uh, Kestrel corner, but White just about holds on. And this could allow Blakemore, Bork and Branscombe to get involved in this one as well. The top two now juking it out for the lead. This is going to be a fantastic final lap. Wheel to wheel stop here. Not afraid to trade paint occasionally either, so they're having a fantastic fight here. And again, you see the same again. White getting the drive out of Stoke Corner there, wheel to wheel through the through the willows and up towards Derek's corner they go. This is going to be a very tight finish in. Look at the chasing pack there, trying desperately to get involved in this fight for the lead. And Ryan White is back into the lead now as they make their way through Dan Weldon Corner. And this final Kestrel into Kimbolton complex is going to be very tight here. Ivanov has a peek around the outside, looking for lines here, coming into the final corner. Is he going to try and switch to the inside? Yes, he is. Ivanov goes through. Can he make the move stick? It's going to be a drag race to the line. White gets the move out to the final corner. What a race. And Ryan White takes the chequered flag. Kevin Ivanov in second place. Riley Blakemore third. Ralphie Branscombe making up nine positions to finish in fourth and gets the fastest lap of the race as well. And uh, McGeeris, Gavekis taking fifth position. Elliot Bork, Theo Hamilton, Jack Paul Bracana. Otto Amy, Ollie Knox in 10th position, Aurora Joel Jackson Heath, Sawyer Henderson in 13th, Bo Winsley in 14th position, George Johnston and that drive we just saw there, Rebecca Restall taking 16th position, Reggie Duffercy in 17th place, and the unfortunate Jerry Duffercy and, oh well, Jerry Duffy did finish, my apologies, uh, Duffercy in 18th place, the unfortunate William Davidson, a non-finisher, let's have a look at some of the... Uh, action from earlier there's the of course some of the finish of the uh, two tens so a bit of uh, two ten action earlier on we'll see those of course a bit later on uh, what a race though there between Ryan White and uh, Kevin Ivanoff White eventually taking the flag that's some uh, great racing there it, so they weren't afraid to uh, trade pain occasionally but it was on the the right side of fair I would say some good race crap between those two they could so easily have uh, gone off in the process so uh, Ryan White is our first final winner of the day in a fantastic race in the Honda 200 race 24 of our 32 race program we go on to our 25th race of the day it's the KZ UK race in association with Torque Racewear and uh, don't forget of course Torque also supplying the driver of the day awards where they will get some uh, goodies and racewear from Tor and I'll be announced after the event this is how the KZ line up then it's uh, Josh Price from Miles Murphy Alice Stevens, Bo Phillips, Sam Ward, Hannah Lang Jay Quiston and Daniel Tribula in uh, the fourth row of the grid Ryan Green from San John's, Nat Thomas and Ryan Garvey on row six Zavinas Klemas and Amy Joga on row seven, Bradley Calder and James Harvey on row eight Edgras 
Is Vicious on row nine from Jason Baker, Richard Palmer, Ilias Zimatitis, and Jack, Jake Baker, Isaac Smith on row 11, rounding out the KZUK. Of course, these are what you might call the shifter carts. They've got the uh, front brake on them as well. And a little bit extra formation timeout on the course, these, co these carts carrying a bit more speed and of course they go down the main straight so they carry more top speed so it is important that we get the tyres and the brakes all warmed up as we prepare for of course is the standing grid start and tense moments the start being very important and uh, when we look at how the racing developed earlier on uh, the start very important we saw Josh Price and Miles Murphy fighting it out into the first corner in that uh, previous heat race so the the marshals making sure the drivers are in the uh, correct grid positions before the race gets underway and we'll also have a brief pause before the racing gets underway i think it's all worth saying uh, as always of course a big shout out to what they call the orange army the team of uh, marshals and the officials at the Hunts Cart Racing Club. Without the marshals and the officials of the event, we couldn't get these meetings going ahead. Uh, a lot of the marshals here, of course, don't just get involved here at Kim Bolton. They uh, go to other motorsport tracks, other karting events. And uh, marshalling, not without its risks either. So I think, all, as always, a good shout out. Thanks, of course, to the marshals. Here we go, though. Racing gets underway. Oh, it's uh, tight in the midfield. And a duel to the first corner. Price gets through, nipping down the inside there was Bo Phillips, had a great drive there, gets through to second place. They all get through the first corner safely, eight minutes plus one lap this final in the KZUKs. They charge down the Yamitsu straight for the first time, straight into Dan Weldon corner. Oh, and a bit wide there for the number 18 of Bo Phillips. And that means that uh, Miles Murphy is back into second place. Ella Stevens right in there as well, number five. Sam Ward, Hannah Lang, Jake Weston, Daniel Tribule are all involved in this as they go charging through to good first lap. Everyone getting underway very clean. It's a fast start to the race. Josh Price then holding on to the lead. And you saw in the second heat race, the, rate, the, um, the pace really picking up as the race went on. We're still under these very nice conditions out there. It's clouded over a bit since earlier on, but still quite bright out there temperatures are good there's a nice bit of cool air as well so the carts should be running very nicely in these conditions one would say and it's certainly weather conditions that will be conductive to some good fast racing here out to the final corner they go josh price leading miles murphy second phillips in third stevens lang western sam john's up to seven place from ryan green sam ward the winners climb number 33 rounding up the top 10 and a bit further back ryan garvey james harvey Drifty palmer Isaac Smith, Amy Joger in 15th, Bradley Calder, Ms. Vicious in uh, 17, and the two Bakers, Jason Baker and Jake Baker further down, 18th and 19th, Semititis, and Daniel Chibula, and uh, Nat Thomas, I believe, has, uh, not sure he went on the grid, actually, but he's shown as a uh, out of the race so far. It's a shame for Thomas, who was looking good in the earlier heat races, to be out of contention. But uh, Josh Price... Holding on to the lead here from Miles Murphy. Murphy in second place. And then in third is the number 18 of Bo Phillips, Ella Stevens, not too far behind in fourth, number five. Hannah Lang, number 91, still in fifth place. And it's starting to turn now into a duel between Josh Price and Miles Murphy. So far today, Price has had the edge on things, but he could certainly not write off Miles Murphy here as they make their way down towards the Stowe Corner once again, grabbing a lower gear. Of course, compared to the likes of the X30s, the Rotaxes, these are geared carts. And a bit more pace as they make their way down the main straight, and here we see it's just starting to get a little bit tasty between the top two here. Miles Murphy, fastest lap of the race, 36. So watch as the race goes on. I think these lap times will really start to go down as the race goes through. They're running a very fast pace out there. And the top two just pulling away now from Bo Phillips in third. Number 18, Ella Stevens right in there in fourth. Number five, Anna Lang moving through the positions as well. Number 91. 
And we're right in there as well as Jake Weston, Sam Johns, Sam Ward in eighth place, Ryan Green and Richard Palmer rounding up the top ten. Richard Palmer having a, a good final here, having, having some difficulties earlier on in the day. Isaac Smith through to 11th position, another driver on the move, making up 11 positions in this race. Uh, Ryan Garvey and James Harvey right in there. Oh, it's running wide there is the number 97 of Ryan Green in that midfield scrap there which could allow Richard Palmer back into things. Back with the leaders now, coming out of the final corner. Over the line they go. And, uh, well, the pace is really picking up here. Josh Price with a 35.88. But a little bit further down, the fifth place driver, Hannah Lang, part of the chasing pack that's just behind these leaders. You'll see them just at the back of your screen there. And 91, Hannah Lang, setting the fastest lap of the race. So, when you look at the lap charts, the, uh, the drivers in third down to about seventh place have just started to close up on the two leaders here. Oh, was uh, Miles Murphy, I think, had a little look on the inside going into Kestrel Corner. Price shuts the door, and that means that the chasing pack really starts to close up on these leaders with 3 minutes 40 on the clock. So at the start of this race, it was starting to look like it could be a straight fight between Josh Price and Miles Murphy for the victory. But as this one goes on, the chasing pack really starts to get involved in this one. And in particular now, Ella Stevens, number five, in third place. Stevens now down the back straight, closing up on Murphy and Price. Here they come. And Lang, Jake Weston and Sam Johns all coming through as well. It's Josh Price that leads the way, Miles Murphy. Here's the number 18 of Bo Phillips, still in fourth place with Hannah Lang and 91 there. And the number 16 of Jake Weston keeping that pressure on. At the moment, though, Ella Stevens breaking away, setting another fastest lap of the race, 35.47. Lovely conditions for these cars to be running in the, the, uh, the lap times. Certainly developing that as well. And at the moment, Ella Stevens just starting to get involved in this fight for the lead. Now on the back wheel of Miles Murphy. Stevens, third place in that middle car, just started to put some nice laps together, having a peek down the inside. Oh, lovely move there. Ella Stevens nipping down the inside nice and clean, and gets past Miles Murphy. Uh, what Stevens didn't want there was to be getting involved in a fight for second place and throwing away any chance of going for the lead, but a very quick, clean move there. And Ella Stevens putting together a very nice race here slowly but surely uh, catching up on the two leaders and now starting to pressure the race leader Josh Price who has been the informed driver today and um, let's see what can happen as they make their way through so Ella Stevens former cadet class champion she's looking very strong at the front here keeping the, really keeping the pressure on that race leader, number two, Josh Price having to work hard here as Stevens really starting to turn the pace on as the race goes on. And they're all lapping very quickly and he can't write off Miles Murphy in this one either. Here comes Stevens down the main straight. Price knows she's coming, guards the inside line. Oh, and Stevens trying the outside. That's going to push her wide. And it allows Miles Murphy back into the mix now. Just over one minute plus the extra lap remaining. Bo Phillips, Jake Weston, Hannah Lang desperately trying to get involved in this fight for the lead. And that was a bit unlucky there for Ella Stevens trying the outside line, just got forced wide by the race leader, Josh Price. And Miles Murphy taking advantage there to go back into second place. So I think there's, oh, it's going to be, yeah, there's going to be two laps to go at the end of this one. We've got 46 seconds on the clock to make their way through, so two laps to go after this. Still a long way to go, anything could happen in this KZUK final. And um, through it all, to be fair, Josh Price has led the entire race. Although, of course, as we all know, it's not what uh, you want to be leading on the last corner. doesn't make any difference what you do in the rest of the race. They are starting to close up on a tail ender here. So this, um, I think it's Jake Baker who's cut a drift at the back of the field. So hopefully we should see the leaders coming through. Josh Price, though. Still under pressure from Miles Murphy. Ella Stevens right in there. Stevens right on the bumper of Murphy. And what you're going to do is the fight for the lead goes on here. Oh, as the bang wheels almost there. Miles Murphy and Josh Price. 
Stevens just dodging the back there, not looking to get involved in any sort of collision. Here they come down the straight. This is starting to allow Bo Phillips, Jake Weston, and Hannah Lang to close up. Fourth, fifth, and sixth place. So this is starting to close up now. As we are now on the penultimate lap of the race, last lap board next time round. As we look at some of our midfield runners there, Isaac Smith, Ryan Garvey, Bradley Calder, and Amy Jurger just a little bit further behind. Here they come, it's all down to this then. One lap to go in the KZ UK final. Josh Price guards the inside line as this time Murphy tries the out. Oh, and look at Stevens down the inside. Sneaks through to second, almost got the lead. Oh, look at this. Great move for Ella Stevens to get back into second place. And now it's do or die, you might say, for Stevens to try and snatch the victory here. Josh Price has led pretty much the entire race, but he knows he's got to get these last two corners nailed. Guards the apex, makes life difficult here for Ella, who has a look down the inside. Murphy right in there, all oh, a bit of banging and buffing as they come out of the final corner. And Josh Price takes the second flag. Ella Stevens over the line in second, Miles Murphy in third, Jake Weston fourth, Bo Phillips in fifth, Hannah Lang in sixth, Sam Johns, Ryan Green in seventh and eighth, Richard Palmer ninth, and Isaac Smith rounding up the top ten from Sam Ward, Ryan Garvey. And the rest of the field making their way through. Bradley Calder, Jane, uh, Amy Joger, James Harvey just a little bit further behind as they make their way through. Uh, Daniel Chibula finishing in eighth position, just been included on the lap charts there. But uh, what a race there from Josh Price to snatch the victory under a lot of pressure from Miles Murphy. And Ella Stevens, who seemed to really uh, improve in form as the race goes on and was a real challenger for victory there. Very close to the end, the end actually. Jake Weston and Bo Phillips bringing it down to a second between the, uh, the top five drivers. So uh, that was very close stuff in that KZ UK final. And we are going to uh, stay on the, the geared carts theme because we're moving on for the final time today for the 210 Challenge final. That is uh, race number 26 of your 32 race programme. Uh, so if you're tuning in to watch any particular drivers in the race classes, I'll just run through the uh, the race order for the remainder of the day, everything running as per programme. Race number 26 is coming up next, that's the 210 Challenge. Race number 27 is the TKM Extreme. Race number 28 is the Junior Rotax. Race 29 is the Senior Rotax. Race 30 is X30 Senior and R177. 31 is the Micromax and Water Swift Restricted. And race number 32, rounding out the program, is the Mini Inter. So it's race 26, the 210 Challenge. These uh, fantastic Villiers air-cooled two-stroke machines really harking back to uh, some of the uh, performative days of karting. Many a great champion has progressed through the ranks in the past in such machinery. And as, like we were saying earlier, a lot of these drivers just out there, not so much to um, just to enjoy karting for its own sake, you would say. Robert Perkins will lead them away from Chris Callaghan, Dan Berry, Lionel Seifleet, Russell Hopes and Paul Fowler, Thomas Stone, Mark Shepherd, Oliver Shelley, Ray Sloan, Michael Owen, John Hutton, William Shelley, David Skull, Tony Berry and Anthony Cox with 18 drivers scheduled to take to the line. I think we'll be having a... Um, another wave around here so they go around for another lap so Robert Perkins really has been on good form today uh, Chris Callahan making the comeback to the 210 challenges here looking good in second Dan Berry number five third on the grid has had a good steady day I would say he's uh, not really been challenging for the lead but he's had some good consistent finishes as we look at the number 44 there the very well turned out machine of uh, Anthony Cox but uh, you would say in terms of raw pace, Lionel Seiflick will be the uh, the driver to look out for. Starting in fourth, number one on the cart. And they'll be getting underway in just a few moments' time. So we are about to get underway for our final race number 26 out of 32. It's the 210 Challenge. And they'll be lining up on the grid in just a few moments. There is the number eight. That's Ray Sloan starting in the midfield. Here they come then. So Robert Perkins lining up alongside Chris Callahan, number 30. Just a few little practice starts there as they make their way through. Uh, looking out of the commentary booth at the track, I think there's 14 carts on the track. So I think there might be some non-starts to the final. We'll work those out in a few moments in terms of the, uh, the lap charts. 
So here they come up towards the line, of course, like the KZUK cart, it is a standing start. There's the number six of Paul Fowler, who will start in six on the grid. 31 there, Peter Masson. Number 10, just behind there, Mark Shepard, starting in the midfield, and the 52, Oliver Shelley, Ray Sloan. So, according to the lap charts here, I believe that Michael Owen, John Hutton, William Shelley, and David Skull are non starters. 14 drivers then taking to the final for the Kaiser UK. Last couple of drivers getting into position there. Tony Berry at the back of the field. Watch for the lights. The four lights, and the lights go out. We're underway for the final. For the 210 challenge, great start there from Robert Perkins. Nice jump from the field and already to second place Lionel Seifert. They get through the first corner safely. Everyone through cleanly. So Robert Perkins with a brilliant start there, but already Lionel Seifert going for the drive down the Imitsu straight for the first time, trying to grab the lead, but Perkins knows he's there and parks the cart on the inside line as they make their way through Dan Weldon corner. Good clean start on that first half lap. They charge down the TKM straight for the first time. Still Perkins leading. Seifleet in second place. And making their way out of Kim Bolton corner for the first time. Over the line they go. So Robert Perkins in first place. Lionel Seifleet in second. Russell Hopes has got a good start into third position, number 41. Thomas Stone, not the start that Dan Berry would have wanted, dropping to fifth place. But uh, Thomas Stone... Number two getting underway very quickly indeed, but coming up with some pressure from Dan Berry. Meanwhile, at the front, Robert Perkins looking to grab onto that lead. Oh, trouble there for number six. And that's going through into the Kestrel corner, so uh, Paul Fowler, it appears, is out of the race, but the cart's pushed safely away to the infield, and the race goes on. Doesn't affect the race leaders at all here. Robert Perkins still being pressured by Lionel Cyclin in second place as they make their way over the line. Both running a very strong pace here, but Perkins already driving defensively here on the in, on the apexes here. Knows that he's really trying to keep uh, keep Seifert behind him here as the race goes on. They're going to make life difficult for Seifert. These two now well clear from the chasing pack. Third place is now Russell Hopes, number 41, as they make their way through Dan Weldon corner. And there we see Seifert just trying to get the traction out of the corner to get alongside down the straight. Having a peek on the inside, but uh, Perkins has got the line as they make their way through Kestrel Corner into Kim Bolton. They go. And back onto the straight they go once again. So it's still Robert Perkins that leads the way. Lionel Seifleet in second place. Again, you see Perkins very aggressive into that first corner, guarding that apex, preventing Seifleet from nipping down the inside. Still as you were further down the field, Russell Hope still in third place. Dan Berry. And in fact, Dan Berry has now gone through into third place. Chris Callahan in fifth position, and then Callahan, another driver who didn't quite get the start. So watch the rest of the leaders go through. There is Callahan, number 30, trying to get past the number 41 of Russell Hopes. So Callahan dropping a few places, didn't get the best of starts that time. And Dan Berry, number five, has now got back through into third position, which is where he's been pretty much for most of the day, really. So uh, staying true to form there. Berry looking for a good steady performance here to snatch that final podium place as round the asset. Oh, trouble there for Russell Hopes. Well, it did seem to me like he gave the corner up there to Chris Callahan, and it certainly explains things there as Russell Hopes sticks his hand up and retires from the race. So, evidently, some kind of mechanical issue there for him. That's a shame for Russell Hopes, who's had a good solid performance throughout the day today. Well, like we were discussing earlier on today with some of the uh, with some of this older machinery sometimes the reliability can be called into question but uh, unfortunately for hopes he is out of the race at the front though the race goes on here between Perkins and Cyprus the first and second place Perkins has led pretty much the entire race we've got four minutes 15 Seifley jinking about as they make their way through the willows trying to find a way through find some line to get some momentum maybe on the Mitsu straight and Seifleet just keeping, yeah, there he is, number one in second place. I would say he's just keeping in contact with the leader here, just trying to work his moves out here, trying to find the lines. 
He knows this isn't necessarily going to be easy now as they go past Oliver Shelley, number 52, who will move up to 11th place with Russell Hopes out of the race. And, of course, we lost Thomas Stone at the start, so we're moving down to uh, Paul Fowler, another retirement. So we're down to 11 carts in this final. And still at the front, Robert Perkins. So Perkins leads, Cyclete second. Dan Berry in third, number five, Chris Callahan from Stuart Henry, Toby Berry in sixth place, and Berry's had a good performance here, moving up to sixth position. Peter Masson in seventh, Ray Sloan in eighth, Mark Shepard ninth, Anthony Cox in tenth, and Oliver Shelley, the final driver in the race so far, currently 11th, and at the moment one lap down, as the leaders make their way around the final corner. It looks like three minutes plus one on the clock here, Lionel Seifert starting to put the pressure back on as they make their way down towards the first corner, and again, you see Perkins very aggressively guarding that inside line. Very quickly bringing the cart over to guard the apex as they make their way through the willows. That switch back, right, left, right through the fast corners. Back down the Amitsu straight they go into Dan Weldon corner, the furthest point of the track. And that long 180 degrees hairpin style as they make their way back down the TKM straight into Kestrel corner. Into Kimbolt now, back towards the finish, and there we see Cyfleet drifting wide, looking to get the traction coming out of the corner, which he does so. In towards the first corner they go, 2.20 on the clock, Robert Perkins with the fastest lap of the race there, 41.58. So he's certainly responding very well to the pressure here from Lionel Cyfleet in second place. Cyfleet still charging in second place, they're closing up on the number 10 of Mark Shepard, who's currently in ninth place. And currently the final driver on the lead lap, they've lapped the number 44 of Anthony Cox, who's there in 10th place. There they go, past the number 10, so Shepard goes a lap down, the 9th place driver, not really affecting the battle for the lead at all, as he uh, conceded the racing line as they make their way through towards the final two corners. And again, you see Seifleet drifting a little bit wider in the corner to get the drive out into the straight. And again, you see Robert Perkins very aggressively guarding that inside line. And of course, going into Stowe Corner, that's your classic outbreaking opportunity there. So uh, Perkins being very sure to guard that inside line. It is sacrificing his cornering speed a little bit to take such a tight line into the corner. I think that's a trade-off just to make sure that that inside line is guarded when he goes in there because that's the, uh, the classic easiest overtaking opportunity there would be down the inside into the corner. But uh, Perkins doing very well here. He knows who's behind him, he knows that Seifleet's got a good turn of pace around Kim Bolton. And this time Seifleet gets a better drive out to the final corner. 52 moving to one side, letting them go through as Seifleet tries the outside this time. But there we see Perkins sees him coming, goes very deep into the corner and prevents him from getting the turn in there. So Oliver Shelley moving to one side to let those two leaders go through. 42 seconds on the clock now. So. Uh, They'll probably get one more lap in before the, uh, the final lap flag goes out. Still further down the field, Chris Callahan now to third place from Dan Berry. Stuart Henry into fifth place, Peter Masson in sixth, Tony Berry in seventh, Ray Sloan, Mark Shepard, Anthony Cox and Oliver Shelley rounding out the field. Here we go, down towards the first corner once again. And Robert Perkins, again gone to the inside line. Forcing Seifert to go to the outside for the pass. And trying for the cut back there as they make their way through to the Willows. But Perkins again guarding that line. A very closely fought race. The clock going down to zero now. I think that might have been Russell Hopes who was stood on the infield with a broken down cart. So uh, the race of attrition goes on. 11 drivers left in this race as we go towards the last lap next time round. And uh, Perkins, a reminder, of course, fastest lap of the race. But it's getting close here as we head towards the last lap board into the final corner. They go Robert Perkins leading the entire race but this is the lap that matters one lap to go as they close up i believe that was uh, race sloan or could be in front of them tony berry my apologies number seven there's the next driver in front uh, still we see robert perkins holding on to the lead cyclic still in second place here they come down the Amitsu straight once again and this time it looks like perkins pulling away slightly in towards the dan weldon corner they go Seifleet still charging in second place. And here they come into the final two corners. There's slower traffic in front of them, though. Here they come into the last corner. One last attempt for Seifleet to get through. 
and charging to the line here comes the number three your race winner is going to be Robert Perkins taking the win Lionel Seifried in second but uh, what a lot of pressure he had to uh, put up with Chris Callahan goes through in third place Tony Berry's carried on but he is still on the uh, he was lapped so I think he will be classed as a finisher already he has he has made the pass on uh, Peter Masson but it won't count because he was lapped before the uh, checkered flag went out Dan Berry then finishing in fourth place in cart number five Stuart Henry finishing in fifth place number four and Peter Masson will be the uh, final finisher on the lead lap there goes the number 52 of Oliver Shelley who finishes in 11th position Stuart Henry over the line Peter Masson and Anthony Cox breaking into the top 10 in the final number 44 having another good steady drive there and getting some decent points in that final 10th position as we say farewell of course to the 210, 210 challenge been fantastic to see them along at this round something a little bit different for the fourth round of the championship the 210 challenge and it really has been a pleasure to, uh, to watch that racing throughout the day we're going to move on in a few moments to race number 27 in our program the TKM Extreme they are down in the waiting zone and getting underway in just a few moments So here's our grids for the TKM Extreme. Leading them away, of course, will be Spencer Lane from Leo Robinson, Leo Morney, uh, James Morley, sorry, in third, Kean Bennett and Bradley Peck. Race number 27 of our 32 race program. And quite a few drivers in contention, especially at the sharp end there. Spencer Lane emerging as the uh, lead qualifier going into this final. Although the likes of Leah Robinson, James Morley, Kian Bennett will all be looking to stake a claim as we get underway with the TKM Extreme Final. It looks good as they make their way over the line. Charging down into the first corner. And Spencer Lane guarding that inside line. Oh, in trouble there as we've got a spinner on the first corner. It's back underway. Trying to identify that driver in a few moments, but uh, everyone gets underway cleanly despite that. I think it was the oh, it's 77. James Morley that went sideways on the first corner. Morley did recover, kept the uh, kept the cart pointing the right way, but drops way down the field. And we'll see how he gets on as the race goes on. Of course, it is slightly longer, eight minutes plus one lap in this final. Here they come, charging down towards the Kimbolton corner. So Spencer Lane, the driver to beat here. Leo Robinson charging in second. Good start for Kai Springfield into third place, number four. Jamie Mead, another one with a good start. Another one who could be a factor for the victory here is in fourth position from Joseph Booth. Kian Bennett in sixth place, Bradley Peck, Adam Sparrow, Johan Kalichern, Liv Jenkins, and Patrick Lee rounding out the top ten as they make their way up towards the top of the circuit. Through Dan Weldon, the corner they go. Leo Robinson starting to put the pressure now on the race leader who guards the inside line coming into Gimbalton. And will Robinson try something going down into Stoke Corner? Here they come down the straight once again. The leaders charging down. Springfield ducking down for all he's worth to try and close up with these leaders. But Robinson giving chase to the race leader lane as they make their way through the willows, heading towards the Amitsu straight and into Derek's corner they go. 
And we just see Leo Robinson having a little peek on the inside, going through these corners, just looking for opportunities to try and make a pass here. I think he knows that a pass isn't quite on at the moment, but just looking for opportunities here, maybe on the next lap. But Spencer Lane on his part is doing very well to hold on to this lead under a lot of pressure now from Robinson in second. Kai Springfield still charging in third, desperately trying to get involved in this battle for the lead. Close behind there then is the number 97. Still Jamie Mead in fourth, Joseph Booth, Kim Bennett, Adam Sparrow. We have Kalichurn in eighth position and Kalichurn's had a good race so far. Getting into the top ten, making up five places, so look out for the number 28. Bradley Peck, Liv Jenkins in 10th place, Patrick Lee, Mike Mitchell Ball in 12th, another one who's been on the move as well, number 12 in the midfield. And still the fight for the lead goes on. Luke Woodward in 13th, another driver who's been on the move, making up 11 positions. James Whitaker, Oliver Bowen. Uh, fortunately for James Morley, he's not really been a factor in this race. He's still down in 26th position with uh, William Bloom and William Bryant. So at the moment it looks like uh, James Morley... Won't be a factor in for the victory for this one. Five minutes plus one lap to go. Here they come. And it looks like Jamie Mead has got through into third place. Around the first corner they go. Spencer Lane leading. Leo Robinson in second place. Jamie Mead still charging in third as they make their way through the Mitsu straight heading towards Derek's corner. And still Lane holding on here. Robinson charging in second, desperately trying to find a way through, but Jamie Mead is closing up all the time. Look at the lap charts there, you can see how quick Jamie Mead's going right now. And another driver on the move is Johan Kalachern, who set the fastest lap of the race, currently in eighth position, but really trying to get involved. There is Kalachern just a little bit further behind with the 82, Bradley Peck, Liv Jenkins, number nine, Patrick Lee in there as well. Kalachern now to sixth place. So Johan Kalachern still charging. Matching the leaders for pace here, getting involved, there is the number four, there's 28 Kalachern just behind the number four of Kai Springfield, who's lost a couple of positions after a strong start. Joseph Booth, number 45, now to four places again, you see Leah Robinson trying to find a way through here. Just under four minutes, plus the one lap remaining as they make their way down the TKM straight once again. And Spencer Lane, number 11, holding on to the lead here, oh, down the inside goes Robinson, can he make the move stick? Nice little move there from Leo Robinson out of nowhere to snatch the lead. And let's see Jamie Mead having a go now. Mead down the inside and takes the second place. So Spencer Lane dropping from first to third place in the matter of two corners. Can he fight back? Leo Robinson holding on to that lead. Jamie Mead keeping the pressure on. He's been on good form today though. Number 97 as he looks to try and fight his way through to the lead. Still as you were, the rest of the top ten, Joseph Booth, Kai Springfield, Johan Kalichern, here they come down towards Kim Bolton, oh, down the inside goes Mead, gets the front wheel in there and takes the lead, and Spencer Lane fighting back on the exit of the corner, three minutes plus one lap remaining, and 45, Joseph Booth starting to get involved in this fight for the lead as well, we've got number four in there as well, Kai Springfield, Johan Kalichern, 28, not too far behind either. Dragging along Kian Bennett and Adam Sparrow into the fight as well here. So we're uh, looking at the, the lap charts here. 1.6 seconds covering the uh, the top eight drivers. Still very, very closely poised here in this TKM Extreme final. They make their way down the TKM straight into Castrol Corner. Still with the number 97, Jamie Mead leading the way. Oh, was having a peek down the inside there into third place goes the number 45 of Joseph Booth. So the unfortunate Spencer Lane just started to drop positions here as he moved towards the final part of the race, still charging his Kai Springfield behind this fight for the lead. Still plenty of drivers potentially in contention for the victory here, but this time it's Jamie Mead that leads, although Leo Robinson trying to fight back as they look through into Derek's corner. Mead guarding the... Oh, very aggressive there, guarding the apex, is putting the cart in the centre of the track, making it as wide as possible here. This is only serving to bring everyone else into contention here. Still number 11, Spencer Lane, very much a factor here. They make their way down towards Kestrel Corner into Kim Bolton once again. Mead holds on to that first position. Over the line they go. So Mead guarding the inside line very aggressively in towards Stowe Corner. Forcing everyone else to go wide into the corner and insist backing everyone up now. 
Jamie Mead, 112 on the clock, driving a bit defensively there, going into Stowe Corner. And you can see it almost has a ripple effect through the field as they all close up. Robertson still second, Booth in third, Lane in four. Looks like Kai Springfield, they have Kalachan, Kian Bennett all right in there. Here they come down towards Kestrel Corner. Still very close here as Jamie Mead. Oh, getting squeezed into the final corner there by Leo Robinson. It's a fight now to the line. But Mead's got first position still. Again, look how aggressive he is going into Stowe Corner. That's, uh, like we said in the uh, 210 race, that, uh, that run down into Stowe Corner is pretty much your classic outbreaking opportunity there. So Mead, you can see, really driving defensive now. As there's trouble further down the field. Uh, is that number six, I think, that's gone off uh, a bit further down the field? That's Luke Jarman and uh, Charlie Whitehouse who got together on the Combolton corner where the drivers are coming through to now. There's wave yellows, no overtaking. And you see just on the edge of the corner, those two entangled carts there just getting themselves sorted out. Last lap of the race, coming up very shortly indeed. Oh, it is the last lap now. And here we go for Jamie Lee, and down into second place now goes Spencer Lane. So it's Lane fighting back here. I think Mead wasn't too happy with the uh, the drivers coming out of the final corner there, past the incident, maybe uh, getting a bit of a drive on in there. There is still a wave yellow on the final corner, so this race is going to get very tight now as they make their way down towards Kestrel Corner for the final time. Mead has got an advantage. Here they come into the last corner. Oh, and a bit of overtaking. Uh, oh, it's a clear track now, so it is safe to go. Here they go over the line. Jamie Mee takes the chequered flag, Spencer Lane in second, Leah Robinson with a late move on Joseph Booth there to snatch third, Adam Sparrow, Kai Springfield, Ham Kalachern, Kian Bennett, Liv Jenkins and Mitchell Ball rounding out the top ten. Patrick Lee in 11th place from Bradley Peck, Oliver Bowen, Sean Abbott, Al Patterson and Luke Woodward further down in 16th position. And a bit further back, we've got uh, Thomas Shaw, the unfortunate James Morley finishing in 19th position. Jack Stewart, Harrison Morrow, Elio, Elio DeSandro in 20th place. William Bryant, William Bloom, James Moreau and Harry Higgs a bit further down with Reese Porter. And the driver we just saw a moment ago, Jessica Fitch Hall in 29th place. Gemma Kitty. Charlie Whitehouse and Luke Jarman, the drivers who got entangled together, the last two finishers as we move on to TKM Extreme in just a few moments' time. So the, uh, that's the uh, Junior Rotax, of course, coming up. So this is race 28 of your 32 race program. And here is the final for one of the biggest races of the day. It's the Junior Rotax. They'll be followed by Senior Rotax races 28 and 29, respectively. X30 Senior is race number 30 with the R177s. Micromax and Water Swift race number 31. And the Mini Inters final race of the day, race 32. So still plenty of action out there. We'll have a look at the lineups for the Junior Rotax in just a few moments' time as they make final preparations down on the grid. So we say big entry of uh, both the junior and the senior OTAX categories. The uh, repechage races were both very closely fought in both the junior and the senior categories earlier on today. And this is where it all boils down to now. It's the A final for junior OTAX. Drivers are ready. And we'll look at how they line up in just a few moments time. Looks like uh, Turnbull there, number 20, who's driven very well earlier on today will be lining up on the front row of the grid we'll have a look at the lineups in just a few moments so we are now into race number 28 of the 32 race program getting underway very shortly with junior otax so if you're tuning in to watch any particular drivers junior otax coming up now that will be followed by race 29 the senior otax race 30 is the x30 senior and r177s Race 31, Micromax and Water Swift restricted. And race number 32 is Mini Inters. So out onto the course now go the Junior Rotax. Out onto the formation lap for them.
and as you can see big group of drivers out there and this start is going to be very important indeed of course the important thing is not to uh, be too rash into the first corner and get it wrong we've seen a couple of drivers make mistakes and pretty much right off their race on that first corner so uh, of course it is slightly longer it's an uh, extra minute on top of the heat races eight minutes plus one lap Joshua Smith will lead them away from Joshua Turnbull number 20 in second to be in Alvarez Callum Foster Charlie Neve Ben Horner Daniel Amore Mikey Walker Charlie Cox and Teddy Cooper amongst the front runners so this is a very closely fought final potentially a lot of good drivers at the front here here they go over the line the start's clean they make their way into the first corner and down the inside goes Joshua Smith oh they bang wheels on the first corner this could open things up here they fight their way through the willows but it is still Smith that leads I think it's Alvarez has emerged in second place yes indeed it is and they make their way through Derek's corner for the first time we'll look a little bit further down the field at some of our qualifiers from the uh, from the repercharge race of course the last four drivers made up of Harry Gilbert Arthur Brownless, Rex Ashley and Ryan Rapini who had a last dash charge to get through to the A final snatching that final position up at the sharp end though it's uh, Joshua Smith who's looking good at the front and a duel for second place now between Tobi and Alvarez and Joshua Turnbull as they fight their way down into the first corner there's your race leader Smith and look at Turnbull there just getting through to second place so uh, Turnbull who was pushed wide on the first corner has uh, fought back well immediately to get through into second place Alvarez drops to third but still right in there Callum Foster 96 in fourth position Ben Horner number 92 currently in fifth place Mikey Walker Charlie Neve Charlie Cox in eighth place Teddy Cooper and Owen Keenan running up the top 10 and there has been a warning flag issued he'll see it coming around for number 35 a bit further down there of Arthur Brownless one of the uh, Repechage qualifiers had a great start to the race moving up to 24th position but he has incurred the notice of the stewards they have issued the, the warning flag to him Joel Dixon Cohen is in trouble there dropping down the field to 27th place but Joshua Smith continues to lead the way 42.61 is the benchmark so far his fastest lap of the race Ryan Rapini another one of our qualifiers from the Repercharge race another one picking up a warning flag and um, you can see where he is in the field currently in 27th position so it's getting a little bit tasty in the midfield there was so one or two drivers trying to make their way through the field Joshua Smith leads the way though Turnbull still in second and Turnbull setting the fastest lap of the race there Callum Foster in third to be in Alvarez still in fourth place from Ben Horner so Horner still in fifth place Nave in sixth position cart number 60 Daniel Lamore Mikey Walker Charlie Cox Owen Keenan running up the top 10 Finley Jones, Teddy Cooper, of course, in ninth place. Toby Bedford, Oliver Smith, Shane Chandaria, the driver who had some trouble earlier on. He got through to the A final, okay, and still running strongly in 15th place. So, a driver who was knocked back a little bit in the heat races there. Look out for the number 156, currently in 15th place on your graphic there. The midfield runs make their way through there. Was Chandaria actually going through? We've got drivers just behind him there. Dijon Bennett, Jason Duchess, Logan Hartsall, Miles Roby, John Richardson. Dominic Parabuck in there as well, 24. As the leaders make their way through towards Derek's corner once again. Just under five minutes plus one lap remaining in this Junior Rotax A final. And Joshua Smith holds on to the lead. Joshua Turnbull still in second. Another fastest lap of the race for Turnbull. These two drivers just starting to pull away slightly. Callum Foster, Charlie Neve, and to be in Alvarez in fifth place. Alvarez picking up a warning flag from the stewards in fifth place. So nothing much to worry about at the moment, but Alvarez just needs to make sure he doesn't get involved in any particular bumping or anything too aggressive, as that could lead on to further repercussions. In a, to be fair, in a final like this, we do sometimes see the warning flag going out for what they would term as unsportsmanlike driving, but it's, uh, it's almost part and parcel of a closely fought final, really, so they've just got to be, be mindful of those sort of things and make sure they don't continue to do it to pick up any further penalties. But uh, Alvarez still looking strong in six, despite fading a little bit after that strong start. But uh, Alvarez 86 still there in sixth place and very much involved as we look at the number 26 here of Mikey Walker. Fighting with the 79 of Teddy Cooper for seventh place. Over the line they go. 
So there we see our front runners going through. Charlie Neves moved up to fourth place now. Daniel Lamore into fifth place. Tobian Alvarez still in sixth. Mikey Walker, Teddy Cooper and Ben Horner. As they go charging through there is the number 79 then of Teddy Cooper still in eighth place. Getting past Ben Horner, 92. As that leading group make their way through Derek's corner. The lead is going through the Dan Weldon corner right now. And it's still very close in the top ten. Owen Keenan in tenth then. So Finley Jones, 11. Charlie Cox, Oliver Smith, Toby Bedford. Shane Chandari having a good race in 15th position, making his way through the midfield quite nicely so far. Samir Fall, Paul in uh, 16th. Armin Banzel in 17th. Jack Owen Drawbridge, Jason Duchis and Fletcher Jameson into 20th position. As that leading group go through once again, still Joshua Smith and Turnbull. Turnbull, meanwhile, as they make their way through towards Derek's corner, going for the lead. Can't find a way through. Having a little peek though on the inside as we get towards the closing stages of this Junior Rotax final. The rest of the top ten still very close indeed. Leaders meanwhile making their way down towards the final corner. Here they are. And Turnbull just starting to put the pressure on the race leader Joshua Smith. Turnbull with a nice line out to the final corner. Here they come down towards Stoke Corner. Smith sees him coming and guards the inside line. All very tight there as they make their way through and Turnbull still keeping that pressure on. Nothing going as they make their way through Derek's corner and the fight for the lead here in the Junior Rotax is getting very close indeed. Turnbull really starting to put the pressure on the number 15 of Joshua Smith down the TKM straight they go in towards Kestrel corner and again you see Smith guarding that inside line into Kim Bolton. Now that could lead him open to an attack going in towards Stowe corner, here they come but again Smith very aggressive on the inside line forces Turnbull to go for the outside option as they make their way through so Turnbull remains in second place 1 minute 30 plus 1 lap remaining these two drivers just starting to hold each other up here this is starting to allow Callum Foster to close the gap to what I believe is just under 1 second now so Callum Foster being drawn into this battle for the lead he's going to be pushing hard now over the next two laps and hope that these two at the front continue to fight for the lead because he could be allowed, could get involved in this fight for uh, first position here. Charlie Neve and Daniel Lamore not too far behind either. So this two-way fight for the lead starting to get closer. Oh, as Turnbull gets the move down the inside. Oh, and look at that. Joshua Smith forcing him as wide as he can. Turnbull has to give in and switch his line. And still Smith holds on to the lead, but look just behind there as the rest of the top ten go charging through. The midfield runners going through as well. This aggressive fight for the lead is really bringing Callum Foster into this one as well. Third place number 96, as is Charlie Neve and Daniel Lamore as well. Oliver Smith incidentally in tenth position, setting the fastest lap of the race, 41.43. Very fast pace in this Junior Rotax final here. They come back down towards the final corner once again. 22 seconds on the clock so this will be the penultimate lap of the race and as these two start to really scrap out for the lead the chasing pack really closing up the rest of the top 10 charging down towards the straight now and again Turnbull going for the cutback into the willows side by side and he makes the move stick Joshua Turnbull into the lead he goes Joshua Smith in second and now it's Turnbull's time now to play defensive he's got to try and guard that lead we just saw Smith trying to have a look down the inside as they make their way through the Derrick's corner through Dan Weldon corner they go into the straight they go Smith charging he knows that there's people right behind him as well so we're going to move on to the last lap very shortly oh and bad luck there for number 69 Callum Foster who tried to snatch down the inside of, of Smith who's already committed to the corner and the unfortunate uh, Callum Foster Got spun out and drops down to, I think, to about eighth place. So he's no longer a factor in terms of the victory. And once again, we have a two-way fight for the lead here. Joshua Turnbull, Joshua Smith. One lap to go now in this Junior Rotax final. Here they come through the Dan Weldon corner for the final time. Charlie Neve not too far behind in third. But it looks like it's going to be a fight to the finish between Turnbull and Smith. Here they come into the final corner. Turnbull guards the inside line in Kim Bolton. Smith having a look. Here they come out to the final corner. It's going to be a fight to the line here. But Joshua Turnbull takes the checkered flag from Joshua Smith. Charlie Neve in third. 
Daniel Amore in fourth place, Tobias Alvarez in fifth position, Mikey Walker, Ben Horner, Oliver Smith, Owen Keenan, and Finley Jones running up the top ten. Great drive there, actually, for Oliver Smith to get through into the top ten. Oh, there's trouble on the final corner, number 13 in the tie barriers. So that's Samir Paul. And I think that's Chandaria in there as well, Shane Chandaria. Possibly Teddy Cooper as well, so it's uh, really not been Shane Chandaria's day, unfortunately. I think there's a few drivers down there, actually, in that final corner. So these guys in the... Um, the senior Rotax might have to wait a few minutes because we've got a bit of a tangle here. There's at least four carts in the barriers. There's number 48. So that's uh, Araman Banzel who will make his way over the line and should be able to finish the race. So Banzel finishing in 30th position, able to get the cart going again. So I think we've got Teddy Cooper. Uh, 156, that is uh, Shane Chandari. We saw the overalls with his name on the back as well. And uh, number 13, Samir Paul. As you can see for yourself, all drivers appear to be okay. As Chandaria pushes his cart back onto the track. And Samir Paul might need a bit of help from the marshals to extract that cart from the barriers. Teddy Cooper over the line then will finish uh, credited with 31st position. Shane Chandaria, he's okay. But uh, the unfortunate number 13, Samir Paul and the cart suffering oh quite a bit of damage actually so we'll uh, not be able to finish the race see the steering arms there got damaged the wheels pointing in at uh, unwieldy angles as the marshals get to work with repairing the tyre barriers so much as a few moments before the race gets underway thanks of course once again to the the marshals for all their hard work out there on the track and they'll very quickly look to uh, get those tyre barriers repaired thanks of course to all the marshals the medics who fortunately touch would have had a very uh, fairly quiet day so far today which is always good to see let's hope that remains the case and all work now onto the uh, to get the barriers repaired number 13 Samir Paul the only driver left in that um, melee in the midfield in the closing stages there and I think we'll need a bit of recovery to get that cart off the track. That really isn't going anywhere. The, the steering quite badly damaged, but um, of course, shouldn't be a problem just to uh, see the marshals pick the cart up and carry it off the track. I think it's not the heaviest thing, of course. You can see the, um, the steering assembly quite badly damaged there, but uh, certainly won't be an issue to get that cart repaired for future use, one would say. So at least the track's now clear, and... Uh, Paul there, number 13, very kindly picking up the marshal's, uh, the grid marshal's notebooks there, helping the marshal there, who, and we'll get uh, get him off the track and hopefully get that cart. Well, the cart will be very easy to get into a safe position and we'll get the race back on the way very soon. So, uh, bad luck there for Samir Paul. But he's okay, that's the main thing, of course. They'll be able to get that cart retrieved, hopefully, as we move on to our next race very shortly. This is the senior Rotax A final, race number 29 out of 32. Drivers on the grid right now. We'll have a look at the lineups in just a few moments' time. Uh, senior Rotax are underway, so it will be uh, Philip Rawson that will lead them away from Charlie Webb. Jack Collins in third. Ralph Younglings had a good steady day. We'll line up in fourth, I believe. Lucas Ellingham and Alexander Cull in there as well. So there will be just a brief pause before the senior Rotax gets underway. I think they're going to uh, get that stricken cart off the track, I believe. I think the, um, the trolleys out there on the track, they've been able to uh, get that sorted out. Uh, these senior Rotax qualifiers who will go out onto the circuit now joined by the winners of the repechage earlier on today. That's uh, Adam White, Jacob Voriak, Rachel Robertson, you remember, had a very impressive repechage race to break through into the final. And James Henson with a late move getting the final place on the grid. So here we go out onto the track with the... Um, Senior Rotax, Philip Rawson then from Charlie Webb, Jack Collins, Ralph Youngling, Lucas Ellingham, Alexander Cole, Pearson Bullock Carter and Reg Hayward on row number four. Further down we've got uh, Liam Hartley, Ethan Martin, Peter Jurovich, George Allen, Reese Lomax, Ryan Ward, Harry Bloor, Alexander Adams Acton on row number eight. Guy Cunnington in ninth from Ryan Hedge, Zaki Hussein, James Tester, Samuel Cornwell, Jack Spencer, Tom Pryor and Michael Morgan. 
And it's Ewan Richards, George Donnell, Callum Ingrie, Sean Rashid, Elliot Pugh, Scott Colesby, and they'll be joined by the four Rapid Charge qualifiers, Adam White, Jacob Voriak, Rachel Robertson, and James Henson. So Guy Connington starting actually quite far down the field there. Interesting to see how he'll get on as the race gets underway. Eight minutes plus one lap in association with Drift Limits prevents the uh, London Motor Circuit and the Senior Otax banging wheels as they charge through the first corner. Very tight, but will they all get through safely? There's one driver stuck at the back there. Number 191, I think that was uh, Liam Hartley possibly hitting trouble on the first corner, but Philip Rawson gets underway neatly and holds on to the lead. Is that uh, looks like Ralph Youngling could be up to second position. They make their way down the TKM straight for the first time in towards Kestrel Corner and Kim Bolton Corner. Very close start to this senior Otax finally. All seems to have gone away okay. There is the number 191 of Liam Hartley recovering despite that incident on the first corner. They charge through for the first time since Collins leading, Youngling in second. Alexander Cole in third, Lucas Allingham. Guy Cunnington's had a great start into 8th position. He looked very strong in the heat races and having a bit of work to do in this final here. Charlie Webb, Jack Spence a bit further behind. And they make their way through down towards the TKM straight. Still number 19, Philip Rawson. They're in 3rd position. As oh, having a peek down the inside there was the number 31 of Alexander Cool. Very close here at the start of this. Uh, oh, and one driver into the tie barriers there. I think that was the number 157 with 168 having to take evasive action there. So, um, yeah, that was bad luck there for um, Samuel Cornwell who drops down the field. For everyone still in the race, a bit close there at times, but it's still. Jack Collins leading the way from Ralph Youngling in second. Lucas Ellingham. A little change at the front here, though, of course, for second position. It looks to me like uh, number 19. Not well, picking up on the lap charts there. We'll have a look at that in a moment, actually. Uh, Philip Rawson now into second place. Oh, but uh, banging wheels there with Ralph Youngling. So that's uh, Rawson who's still having to be putting on the lap charts for some reason. Guy Cunnington up to fourth position now. Good comeback for him after that difficult start. Oh, we've got um, Battenberg flags out on the track now. So the race has been neutralised. So um, whether there's some oil or an incident on the final corner, I believe. Just having a look at to see what the incident is. So the Battenberg flags are out here. That's the black and yellow diagonal flags you'll see the marshals waving those the drivers make their way around so this means that the race has been neutralized now this is um, your equivalent of a safety car condition where the drivers have to drive at a reduced speed no overtaking the race is still going ahead the marshals not too happy there because they're piling through that final corner so i think that was an incident there on the previous lap Evidently some uh, damage to the tie barriers picked up, but the marshals not looking too happy at all with the pace that the uh, drivers were taking through that final corner, I think. And there is an oil flag out on the final corner as well, so there must be... Um, yeah, I can only assume there must be some kind of uh, oil spillage or fluid on the course as well. So the race still going ahead, 4.32... I think we're looking, if we can get the tyre barrier repaired, make sure the track's safe. We could be looking at a late dash towards the uh, towards the finish here. Interesting to note, actually looking further down the field, that Rachel Robertson up to 22nd, making up 11 places in the final itself. That's the driver who fought through to get through in the repercharge race. And really has kicked on quite well as the race gets back underway. So we're still under the Battenberg flag, the caution flag conditions here. You'll see in the background there the marshal with the diagonal white and sorry yellow and black flags. So that means, of course, that we are still under a uh, what equates to a safety car conditions. Jack Collins from the number 19 in there as well. Oh. And uh, Ralph Young in second, Lucas Ellingham. So it's Collins leading, Youngling in second place, Ellingham third, Rawson in fourth position, 52 of Guy Cunnington in fifth place, Alexander Cole, Pearson Bullock Carter. Currently 7th, Charlie Red, Reg Hayward, Ryan Ward, Alexander Adams, Acton in 11th place. 
Three minutes 22 on the clock, plus one lap remaining, but we are still under these Battenberg flags. The um, safety car conditions, as it were, drivers driving at a reduced pace. The race, I say, is still going. They are still racing out there, albeit under a neutralised state, so they can't afford to make any, that as it sounds, make any kind of a mistake here. Sounds ridiculous, but it does happen. The driver's starting to pick the pace up now, so looks like the green flag may be going out. Yes, we do. We're back underway racing. And Collins times that very well. So back underway we go. So Jack Collins leads the way. Ralph Youngling second. Lucas Ellingham in third. Rawson in fourth place. Di Cunnington in fifth position. As they make their way down towards Derek's corner. So two and a half minutes plus one lap remaining. Under full race conditions now. And the pack make their way through Dan Weldon corner. The midfield runners making their way through. There we saw Alexander, Adam Zach and James Tester, Harry Blore, Ryan Hedge going through. A bit further down there. Over the line they go. Collins still leaning the way. Youngling keeping the pressure on in second place. So Youngling still right in there. Lucas Ellingham tagging on the back there in third place. A little bit further behind is the number 19 of Philip Rawson. Guy Cunnington pushing the pressure on in fifth place. But Jack Collins working hard to hold on to the lead here from Ralph Youngling. Youngling making his way through the top corner. Coming back down towards the finish line now. Trying to find a way through as they make their way down towards the final corner, but Jack Collins with a nice line, but Youngling having a look as they make their way through. Lucas Ellingham trying to get involved in this one as well. Guy Cunnington has got past Philip Rawson as the rest of the top ten make their way through. Oh, and a fight into the first corner there. As Jack Collins guards that lead. Oh, trouble there a bit further down for the number 22 on that final corner. So Callum Ingrid gets back on the track but uh, out of contention in this one as they make their way down towards the Dan Wilder corner top part of the circuit now and Ralph Youngling now into the lead 1-2-5 your new race leader Kent based driver but uh, German father Jules Lachalte you might say and Youngling over the line he goes he's done very well to fight his way through into the lead now and holding on to that lead so Ralph Youngling Making his way with 44 seconds on the clock, so they'll pre-squeeze through another lap before the uh, last lap board goes out. So two laps to go in this race, including the one that we're starting soon. So, oh, trouble on the first corner. Got the spinners out there, 56 in there as well. Ralph Youngling continuing to lead the way, though. Ellingham keeping the pressure on in second. Here they come, oh, and Ellingham's gone for the lead, coming out of the final corner. So another new leader now, and Lucas Ellingham takes the lead, but Guy Cunnington getting involved in this one as well. Jack Collins, Ralph Youngling right in there as well. Oh, very close indeed. Here they make their way through the willows once again, so here we go. Next time round, it will be the last lap. The clock has now gone down to zero, and this race is too close to call here. Lucas Ellingham leading the way, Ralph Youngling in second place. Guy Cunnington now into third position. Cunnington have a look down the inside. Trying to find a way through. And out to the final corner they go. So here we go. One lap to go for Lucas Ellingham. Ralph Youngling keeping the pressure on in second place. The rest of the field making their way through in the midfield. And Lucas Ellingham as holds on to the lead. Down the inside into second place goes Guy Cunnington. Cunnington into second place now. And there is your race leader, Luke. Lucas Ellingham. Ryan Cunnington then into second position, making up 14 places in this senior Rotax final. Looking further back there, the number 13 making his way through. Checkered flag now being ready though for the race leader. It's going to be Lucas Ellingham that takes the checkered flag. Guy Cunnington in second place. Ralph Younging looks a bit dejected there in third position. And Jack Collins, Charlie Waving there. Rawson also in the top ten as well. Philip Rawson going through. And the rest of the top ten made up of Alexander Cole, Ryan Ward, Reg Hayward, Alexander Adams Acton going through. The 
in there with a rather deep of car to the back there, the unfortunate number 22, Callum Ingrie, who got into trouble in the midfield but uh, still kept on going, but not the result as you can see from the expression that he would have wanted. Uh, Reese Lomax, Sean Rashid and Michael Morgan retirements from the race. We're going to move on then to our next race in just a few moments, but a great drive there from Lucas Allingham in the uh, in that senior Rotax final. X30 senior and R177s coming up in just a few moments time. We have just three races to go then. It's the X30 Seniors and R177. About to go out onto the track. Race number 30 out of 32. We have two more races to follow after this. Race number 31 is the Micromax and Water Swift Restricted. Race number 32, Mini Inters. But let's have a look at the X30 Seniors lineup. Morgan Hill from George Robinson, Reese Newburn, Christopher Bingham, Josh Jones, Jack Dan, Matthew Morgan, and Oliver Harris making up the fourth row. Adam Wright, George Bolter. And then it's the R177s, the unbeatable so far today, Josh Bass from Simon Pugh, Gordon Chenry, Simon Hilton, and James Butcher. And those drivers, uh, those drivers behind Josh Bass in the R177s have been too close to call for pretty much all of the race. So we've got two starts here, of course. The X30 Seniors will start first. The R177s a little bit further behind. And here we go. So Morgan Hill from George Robinson out to the final corner. Over the line they go. The start is clean. They charge into the first corner. Down the inside goes Morgan Hill. Oh, it's a bit tight around the first corner. They squeeze through as the R177s get underway a little bit further behind. Josh Bash from Simon Pugh. They make their way into the first corner. You see them just behind there on the camera shot. But Morgan Hill, after a very tight first corner, they all squeeze through. I was wondering if there was going to be any spinners there, but they all keep themselves on the track. None of that, of course, will bother Morgan Hill, though, of course, who is clear at the front from George Robinson up there as well, Reese Newburn. There's the uh, race leader, Josh Bass, from the R177s, who started this time a little bit closer to the... Uh, to the X30s, so maybe the traffic might not be such a... Uh, a point in this final maybe we'll wait and see as the race goes on Morgan Hill though looking very smooth at the start of the race so uh, the main losers on that first corner melee where George Robinson and Jack Dan have got a bit of work to do dropping down a few places there we see in the inset there on the right hand side the number 64 of Josh Bass who leads the R177s and the fight continues behind him with George uh, sorry Gordon Chenery in second place, Simon Pugh third, Simon Hilton and James Butcher from the R177. So uh, two races in one here somewhat and Morgan Hill continuing to lead the way. But Christopher Bingham starting to put the pressure on the race leader. Number 26 in second place. Not close enough to go for a move just yet, but certainly weighing up the race leader Morgan Hill and trying to devise his strategy, I would say. There is a warning flag for Oliver Harris in sixth place from the stewards. Black and white warning flag. Uh, nothing to worry about so far for him he's just got to uh, keep his cool as the race goes on at the front here though Christopher Bingham just starting to apply the pressure to Morgan Hill the race leader number 29 Hill just checking over his shoulder knows his rivals there and let's see what Bingham can do as we look a little bit further back at uh, Josh Bass who's starting to close up on some of the tail enders of the X30 race I think he's got number 60 George Bolter in front of him at the front though 
Morgan Hill holding on to that lead. There's Bass, the race leader. Then that fight for second place. We've got uh, Gordon Chenry, Simon Pugh, Simon Hilton and James Butcher all in there. Very closely fought indeed in the R177s. As they make their way through, there is the uh, number 87 of James Butcher at the back of the field, but certainly not cut adrift and very much a factor in this race. Very closely fought in the R177 pack and they are starting to close up on um, George Bolton and Adam Wright at the back of the X30s on the edge of the top 10 there they go through Derek's corner leaders meanwhile making their way out of Kim Bolton so there we see first and last on the track then there's not too much between them I think the whole uh, the whole pack covered by that 14 seconds when you consider as well that they had a, a split start it's a, still a very closely poised race here the battle for the lead still wide open here though as Christopher Bingham keeping the pressure on Morgan Hill at the front can't find a way through at the moment the top two just breaking away a little bit now 1.3 seconds between second and third place as Reese Newburn in third desperately trying to get involved in this fight there we see Josh Bass who's got past the number 60 of George Bolter in the next 30 oh the Batberg flags have come out so the race being slowed down here just trying to see as to why oh there's an incident in the uh, on the exit of Stowe Corner, red flag, and that looks quite nasty. I think the car is well and truly embedded into the barriers. The driver receiving some attention from the medics, so the race has been stopped. I can't tell you who the, the car in question is. Unfortunately, we'll uh, try and pick that up as soon as I can. But unfortunately, the medics are making their way out onto the track uh, the cart appears to be um, appears to have had a rollover I think and the driver has been spat into the barrier somewhat so uh, just try and see who that driver is uh, I won't identify it until uh, I can identify for sure but um, in the midfield there one of the X30 drivers going into the barriers red flag for the first time today has been displayed unfortunately that's not what we want to see so the drivers the race is currently uh, suspended not under racing conditions the carts are still moving at a reduced pace so they will probably bring those to a halt very shortly and as we yeah like we say of course not the site we want to see of course the red flags medics are onto the course right now so uh, we were saying they've had a quiet day so far today but unfortunately for the first time today they have been uh, deployed out onto the circuit uh, we're just going to keep an eye on that situation on the first corner you'll see just in the uh, the background the medical vehicles out on the track uh, there is a driver still in the barriers receiving some medical attention uh, from my vantage point I can't make out the number it's not very really clear on the timing charts either as to who it is so I'm not going to uh, speculate at this stage oh there we are actually you can see the um, 65 that's Simon Hilton that's one of our um, R177 drivers <laughs> uh, unfortunately as you can see the cart was upside down as well the driver is still in the uh, the barriers receiving some medical treatment right now so we're going to cut away for a few moments and uh, just have a look at some of the surrounding Cambridge uh, countryside right now it's uh, of course now into spring so we're seeing the rapeseed out on the fields as well and for the first time this year of course it's been very much wintry conditions for the first three rounds of the championship of course as you'd imagine in january and february very cold out there and uh, as you might expect for this very wet spring we had a rather wet round in uh, in march as well so this i think for the first time we had some rather summery conditions out there the track has been running very well and um, on the whole we've had some very good racing today we're currently in the moment underway with the x30 seniors and the drivers now paused out on the track we are under a red flag condition for the first time today uh, an incident just on the exit of stowe corner uh, we believe is simon hilton the driver that's uh, in uh, in the barriers the medics on the scene though looking to deal with the situation but we are under a pause at the moment there is the number 60 of george bolter who had a difficult start to the day of course the uh, the back wheel dropping off the cart in the first heat race i don't know if there's a wheel bearing failure or for whatever reason quite evidently was unable to continue with the race uh, number 54 just behind him in the separate class there that's the r177 driver of uh, simon Pugh. 
and I think Josh Bass just in front of him number 64 leading the R17s at the moment with the 130 of Adam Wright who was in ninth place in the X30s when the red flag came out so as you can see for yourself we are still under a, a red flag condition uh, I can tell you uh, of course you're not going to film the accident scene out of uh, out of decorum you would say but I can tell you that the cart has been righted back onto uh, onto its wheels they're looking to get that cart away uh, the injured driver has been moved away from the accident scene to the ambulance so we'll uh, go on to receive some further medical attention let's hope it's nothing too serious but as always when there's a, a crash and a driver in trouble the safest thing to do of course is to get the red flag out get the medics out onto the course and make sure that the injured driver can be treated in safety so we are still under a pause here with the x30 and r177 finally you can see in the background there the medical vehicles are out onto the track and they are moving now with the injured driver who i believe to be that's a, only looking on from the the viewpoint there number 65 simon hilton you can see for yourself the cart being pushed away the medical vehicles are being moved away from the track now so we're looking to hopefully get the race back underway as soon as possible but as uh, goes without saying of course the thoughts are with the simon hilton that's where the incident happened driver going into the barriers quite heavily and there is the stricken cart being pushed away there the number 65 as you can see for yourself there belonging to simon hilton uh, hilton himself will be taken to the medical area for further evaluation so goes without saying of course let's hope that driver's okay but uh, nobody looking too perturbed which is always a good sign uh, we've been able to get the driver away and hopefully we'll be okay let's hope that's the case anyway but as always the the medical crews on the track and very quick to uh, get the situation back under control so uh, at the moment there's a bit of a cleanup going ahead of course the cart was upside down so there's every possibility that fluids will have been leaked out onto the track so the marshals down there on the exit of so Stowe Corner as we saw a few moments ago just getting some cement dust down on the track making sure that it's clean uh, that's a very important thing of course in karting as in any source of uh, motorsport really of course is that if there's fluids on the track oil fuel or whatever that it is cleaned up and the uh, cement dust goes down because that could be very dangerous indeed so um, no uh, no shortcuts taken there any kind of fluids on the track and they will make sure that it's all mopped up before the racing gets back underway so just a few more moments here for the x30 senior and r177 drivers to uh, regain their thoughts i think one of our that might be Stu stretton photography down there possibly down one of our sponsors down on the uh, on the grid taking some photographs of the drivers as they gather their thoughts and wait for the resumption of this race we've got 423 on the clock plus the one lap remaining when the red flag came out so we have still got a few more laps of racing potentially to get underway the marshals just completing their checks on the exit of stowe corner just to make sure that that fluid has been mopped up the fort well then we want to say fortunately but um one thing was that the cart appeared to have uh, leaked any fluids on the very edge of the track so the racing line certainly okay the marshals seem happy with the conditions uh, and everyone walking away from the crash scene right now so it looks like the track should hopefully be ready to go in just a few moments just to recap then this is the x30 senior and r177 final race number 30 of our 32 race program uh, race has been halted though due to that red flag involving the um, number 65 of Simon Hilton but we should hopefully be able to get the race back underway very soon now uh, there's the number 28 of Gordon Chenery stood up at the moment maybe he's uh, just stretching his legs hopefully the cart's okay he's pushing the cart away now so I don't know if he's going to uh, withdraw from the race possibly whether he's picked up some damage in the incident that brought out the red flag maybe but I don't know he's well he, you can see for yourself he stood up and he's pushing the cart off the grid So it appears he could be a possible yeah so you can see on the left hand side of your screen he is pushing the cart away so um number 29 being moved forward there the race leader morgan hill and i think they're just looking to get the carts restarted as soon as possible 
track is now as far as I can tell clear so um, let's have a look here the carts just making sure they're in the correct positions I believe I think Gordon Chenry could well be out of the race he's pushed his cart off to the um, exit of the track here and uh, yeah it looks like he's whether he's picked up some damage I don't know but for whatever reason he's opted to withdraw from the race so everyone else getting the carts back into the position just going to uh, have a brief pause for a moment just to have a look and see what's going on we'll uh, report back to you in just a few moments So what we're looking at at the moment here, I think they're just uh, resetting the carts into the correct position that they were when the red flag was displayed. Uh, I believe that um, we can see from the marshals walking up the grid, you may have just seen them there. Gordon Chenry, we just spoke a moment ago that he's pushed his cart off the circuit and withdrawn from the race. Uh, it looks like the cart may have been dropping some fluids. If we look to the right, if we can of this, uh, there we are you'll see that's pretty much where Chenery was parked and the marshals getting uh, some cement dust the, actually Gordon was speaking to these marshals a few moments ago and so it looks like whilst he was sitting waiting for the race to restart he's discovered that his cart is losing fluids out on the track the cement dust going down which is pretty much what it says on the tin cement dust now what that's doing there it's you can see the damp patch in the middle there it's uh, picking up the fluid leak and you can see there's a bit of a trail there from where Gordon pushed his cart away so um, whatever it is whether it's fuel or oil or whatever leaking that fluid onto the track so uh, just a brief pause before the race gets back underway the um, start officials have got the carts into the correct order to get the race back underway but as you can see uh, good observation there actually from Gordon Chenry who's done the sporting thing and pushed the cart off the track as soon as he realised that it was losing fluids and the first thing he's done there is inform the marshals as well so that at least they can get that cement dust out onto the track make sure the track is safe and ready to go but um, done a good job of it there so far I'm going to let that soak in and make sure that the fluids are safe they'll maybe sweep some of that away possibly before the race gets back underway uh, it is unfortunate that it's right on the on the tram lines as well so it's very important that that is swept up before our uh, races get back underway we, I believe we'll be starting with a, uh, a rolling start but then, of course, we've got a couple more races to go that will use that part of the grid. So, yeah, it's uh, important moments here as we make sure that the track is safe and ready to go. The marshals just giving that a moment to uh, get the cement dust swept in. Rest of the field are parked up and ready to go. There's number 87 of James Butcher, 54 Simon Pugh in front of him. So we've lost Simon Hilton and we've also seen a late withdrawal from Gordon Chenry as well so a couple of the 177 contenders out of the race we're getting back underway now the clock has now restarted and looking out of my window is 3 minutes 10 on the clock so uh, looks like we're going to have a ra uh, restart we're now under the Battenberg flag condition the race is now back underway so Morgan Hill leads, we've got Christopher Bingham in second place, Reese Newman in third, George Robinson fourth, Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris, Jack Dan, Adam Wright, George Bolter, Josh Bass, Simon Pugh and James Butcher. Josh Jones not showing on the lap chart today, he was down there a moment ago, so uh, whether he started at the back, I'm not sure I didn't see the number 84. So the carts warming the tyres up here, we are still under race conditions, although it is under the, uh, the Battenbergs, the green flag is being ready, so we're looking for a rolling start to get the race back underway under the race conditions 2.28 on the clock, the green flag goes out and we are back underway racing now Morgan Hill retakes the start and continues to lead the way, Christopher Bingham still in second place 
We've got Reese Newburn in third. All of the cars started together, incidentally, both the X30s and the R177. So they are under one single pack right now. Uh, Josh Bass up to about ninth on the track, I believe, the leader of the R177s. As we look at a bit of a fight developing here between the number 67 there, Reese Newburn and George Robinson, starting to get involved in that one as well. 154 on the clock, so counting down the laps here for Morgan Hill who's got the jump on the field quite nicely actually, pulling away slightly from Christopher Bingham, so that misfortune that brought the uh, the race to a halt, in in a sense, it has benefited Morgan Hill, the race leader, he's got a good jump on the field, and with 1.37 on the clock, he's started to pull away. There's number 23, George Robinson, who's now into third place. So Robinson now clear in third from Reese Newburn, Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris closely behind him as well. Jack Dan in 7th, Adam Wright in 8th, Josh Bass in ninth, leading the R177s from Simon Pugh, James Butcher and George Bolter. Josh Jones, I believe, has not taken the restart, not showing up on the, on the lap charts. So Morgan Hill continues to lead the way, 109 on the clock, and Hill setting the fastest lap of the race so far. 41 seconds on the dot as they make their way over the, over the start-finish line. And this camera angle, we just saw it there, giving a real idea of the actual speed they carry around that final corner when they're next to the tie barriers like that. Morgan Hill, your race leader, though, leading by one second from Christopher Bingham. George Robinson in third, Reese Newburn, Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris and Jack Dan. Adam Wright still in eighth position. Josh Bass in ninth, leading the R177s by... I'd like to say about one and a half seconds from Simon Pugh in tenth position, James Butcher. And George Bolter, the X30 driver, rounding up the field. The leaders now making their way around the final couple of corners now, going through the Kestrel corner into Kim Bolton. And there's your race leader, Morgan Hill, looking very neat. The gap around about one second right now. The pressure now on for second place, Christopher Bingham. Starting to uh, get some pressure now from George Robinson in third position. And Robinson really keeping that pressure on as they make their way down towards the Dan Weldon corner. So at the moment, Morgan Hill looking good. The clock's gone down to zero, so we'll be getting the last lap forward when they come round this time. And Christopher Bingham holding on to that second place. The focus now really is on that fight for second place. Morgan Hill now looking comfortable in the lead as Bingham tries to hold on to the second position, forces Robinson wide into the corner. Robinson with the switch back into it. Oh, a neat move there from George Robinson. Christopher Bingham forcing him wide on the entry, but uh, Robinson saw the switchback going into the Willows, had to be brave to get the cart down the inside there and make a clean pass, which he did so. And George Robinson into second place now, and looks like uh, Bingham coming under some pressure from Reese Newburn. Meanwhile, Morgan Hill, he's done everything right so far. Tips the back wheel over as they make their way around into the final corner, and Morgan Hill takes the chequered flag in the X30 senior final. George Robinson second, Reese Newburn third from Christopher Bingham. Matthew Morgan, Oliver Harris and Jack Dan going through. And then we've got Adam Wright and Josh Bass just behind him there, takes the chequered flag in the R177. Simon Pugh finishes second in the R177 category from that man there. Number 87, James Butcher. And just a little bit further behind going into the final corner now is the number 60 of George Bolter who will finish 12th on the track and I believe the track pretty much of course everyone's starting fairly close together should be clear and ready to go in just a few moments for our penultimate race of the day the Micromax UK and Ayame restricted machines there on the uh, on the grid now in the waiting zone as I say, there have been a few improvements carried out in the paddock ahead of this fourth round of the championship. Some of the pit buildings upgraded and making it a little bit more spacious in that waiting area where it's just drivers and mechanics only. So a bit more, uh, more organised, you might say, behind the scenes for them as well. But without further ado, we get right underway with our penultimate race of the day. Micromax and the Armour Restricted making their way out onto the circuit now for race number 31 of our 32 race programme. This is how they line up. So it's Lucian Smith from Albie J. Stubbs, Logan Stanley Jones, Finley Beals, James DeVro, Oliver Dawson, Joseph Davis, and Mason Munster on row number four. And the final drive is made up of Teddy Higgs, Logan Baker, and Louis Williams Mabs.
Here they come then down towards the uh, Kestrel corner. Drivers already lined up and in position looking very neat on the grid there. Lucian Smith, you would say, starting as the favourite. There is a driver who was... Um, I think it's number 46, James DeVro, who will try to catch up with the rest of the field. The grid already nicely in position now. Are they going to get this start underway or wave them round? I'm not sure. They're trying to give... James DeVro had trouble in the pits and he's half a lap down. He's just coming out of the uh, Dan Weldon corner. So here we go. It looks like we're going to uh, get things underway. Over the line they go. And we are underway with the Micromax UK Army Restricted Final. James DeVro catching up at the back of the field there, just about tagging on to the back of the field. But Lucian Smith with a good start, making his way through. There we just saw DeVro diving through the camera there. And if you look towards the back of your screen, you should see the number 46, who's done a good job of catching up with the, uh, with the rest of the field there. But it's a great start for the number 44, Lucian Smith. He makes his way through the Dan Weldon corner for the first time there was the number 69 of Logan Baker leaders meanwhile making their way down it's uh, Albie J Stubbs there in second place or oh, it's actually Logan Stanley Jones meanwhile has gone through to second number 73 here they come over the line and let's have a look at how they go through it's Logan Stanley Jones up to second place Albie J Stubbs in third Finley Beals Oliver Dawson in fifth place with Mason Munter who's had a good start at the sixth position. Joseph Davis in seventh, Teddy Higgs, Louis Williams Mabs, Logan Baker, and the hard charging James DeBro at the back of the field, trying to catch up with the rest of the field after uh, hitting trouble. The cart was presumably not starting when it was supposed to, and he's still playing catch up at the back of the field. But uh, the race still finally poised here as you look at the number 73 there of Logan Stanley Jones in this close fight for second position. Up to second now then goes Albie J Stubbs back to second where he started from. And this is all going to benefit the number 44 of Lucian Smith who has started very well. Pulling away the gap now 1.1 seconds. Fastest lap of the race for Smith 48.98 so far. Logan Stanley Jones now back into second position from Albie J Stubbs. They're fighting away for that second place. Finley Beals right in there as well number 20. And Oliver Dawson, number 95, also in there as well. <coughs> Mason Munster, Joseph Davis, Teddy Hicks a bit further behind, Louis Williams, Mabs, Logan Baker, and James DeRoe still fighting at the back. I think he's just got past uh, Logan Baker, so DeRoe back into the top 10. Meanwhile, the fight for second place here with Alvy J. Stubbs coming under some real pressure now from the number 73 of Logan Stanley Jones. And Finley Beals, number 20, right in there. Closely followed by Oliver Dawson, number 95. And as Lucian Smith now clear away at the front, the gap extending now to over two seconds between first and second place. 2.7 to be precise. And there is Smith just disappearing out of view momentarily. And the fight's still on for second place here between Albie J. Stubbs and Logan Stanley Jones Finley Beals having a look there number 20 as they make their way up towards the Dan Weldon corner and we see Stan Logan Stanley Jones guarding the inside line oh and a bit of a mistake there from Finley Beals ran onto the grass momentarily but didn't lose any time further back we've got number 46 there James DeVroe looks like he's got past Louis Williams Mab so a good comeback so far from DeVroe after that bad start already starting to pick up a few positions and still in second place, it's Albie J. Stubbs. Logan Stanley Jones in there, the gap now, three and a half seconds between first and second place. So compared to a few of the other finals, this, uh, this final at the front at least is a little bit more clear cut with Lucian Smith looking good at the front of the field. Albie J. Stubbs. Strong in second place, so coming under some real pressure though from the number 73 of Logan Stanley Jones and number 20 Finley Beals. Beals having a look for third position. Goes a bit wide going into the Kimbolton corner. He's going to try and get the switch back, making his way down the hind straight into the first corner towards Stowe. Here they come, they're closely followed by Oliver Dawson, number 95. Rest of the field going through there in your inset there. That's uh, Mason Munster, Joseph Davis, Teddy Hicks, James DeRoe, Louis Williams Mabs. And Logan Baker just at the back of the field there. So they're up to eighth position now, just behind Mason Munter. 
Munster on the uh, number 27 with uh, DeVroe going for the move a little bit further behind as we focus on the second place driver here who's having a great drive so far Alvy J Stubbs pretty much has lost the leader there we just saw him disappearing out of shot there Lucian Smith well clear of the chasing pack but uh, Alvy J Stubbs cleared away at the front of this little fight for second place keeping the pressure on from uh, Jones in second place Beals in third so Stubbs making his way through Stowe for two minutes to go plus the one lap remaining at the moment the number 44 of Lucian Smith is well clear and there we see number 96 closely followed by the Finley Beals number 20 who's now moved up into that third position after putting number 73 Logan Stanley Jones under quite some pressure now clear in third there's the fight a little bit further down and there is the number 46 of James DeRose had a nice fight back here uh, looks like he has now got through into sixth position so a good comeback there from James DeRose there he is in the main screen there just behind Oliver Dawson in there as well uh, Dawson in fifth place, Joseph Davis and uh, James DeRoe, of course, in sixth. Seem to have uh, had an issue there for Joseph Davis, who's dropped down to the back of the field, so he must have uh, hit some trouble going down the inside of Logan Baker. One minute to go, plus the one lap remaining. Lucian Smith having a fantastic drive at the front, just setting the fastest lap of the race, 47.48. Still charging in second place is Alby J. Stubbs. In the meantime, Lucian Smith, we just saw him there going in towards the Kimbolton corner and we should see him going down towards the Stowe corner in just a few moments 40 seconds left on the clock as Finley Beals keeps the pressure on Alby J Stubbs in second place there's the race leader though number 44 Lucian Smith who has just set the fastest lap of the race 47.47 sometimes it can be difficult to control the race at the front on your own and uh, all Lucian Smith is doing really is just going as fast as possible keeping it nice and smooth looking for the smooth lines of course sometimes they say if you're so far ahead you should slow down but sometimes it's not as easy as that and that's where the mistakes can creep in sometimes as well so Lucian Smith I think he is driving within himself right now he's keeping it nice and smooth watch him as he makes his way through the corners here minimal inputs on the steering wheel keeping the actions nice and smooth not shaving off any speed takes the last lap board still that fight for second a bit further behind Alby J Stubbs still in second coming under a bit of pressure from Finley Beals as we move on to the final lap but Lucian Smith making his way through Stoke Corner for the final time and the Willows and again you see the cart very smoothly dancing around the corners there Smith has been on top four last time around 47.41 so another fastest lap of the race on the penultimate lap there for Lucian Smith he's certainly just keeping the charge keeping it pushing as he makes his way through Dan Weldon Corner for the final time down towards the uh, TKM straight through Kestrel corner he goes and Lucian Smith into the final corner one more turn to go for him and looking to take what has been a comprehensive victory Lucian Smith over the line to take the chequered flag in quite some style there with another fastest lap of the race just about 47.40 it's Alby J Stubbs in second place from Finley Beals Logan Stanley Jones Oliver Dawson number 95 over the line then we've got the number 46 of James DeRoe, Louis Williams Mabs, Mason Munzer, Teddy Higgs, Joseph Davis, well, Joseph Davis, and Logan Baker rounding at the field. And there you can see Joseph just shaking his head. They had some trouble in the mid part of the race, so not the uh, final he would have wanted. But nonetheless, he brings it home and grabs that 10th position as we move on to the final race of the day. It's the mini inter-final, race number 32, out of 32, which is about to get underway in just a few moments. We'll say, of course, at this stage, thanks, of course, for tuning in to this fourth round of the championship here at Kim Bolton. Of course, we skip a month from May because it's the British Kart Championships here at Kim Bolton. So the, the next round of the championship is on the 9th of June. Don't forget to tune in. And this is how they'll line up for the mini inters. We've got Finley Hines from Jensen Sale, Benjamin Lawn, Hayden Fisher, Sebastian Clark, Noah Moulton, and a bit further down the grid there, 
Ollie Thompson, Oliver Barton, Akil Nanjioni, Rian Townsend, Jensen White, Nathan Edwards, Noah Jefferson, Max Wheatley, Ruben Jenkins, and Alex Tukinchis rounding out the field as they make their way down towards the Kestrel corner. And Mini Inters, our final race of the day, is about to get underway. They get themselves into position. And you would say Finley Hines, Jensen, Sale, fairly closely poised. We could be in for a close race in this final race of the day. Here they come. Over the line. Final race of the day gets underway. The start's good, and they charge into the first corner. And Finley Hines guards that inside line. Oh, a bit of banging and buffing there. And number 42, Hayden Fisher, spins out, takes another couple of drivers with him. Everyone's okay. And gets back underway. So let's have a look. 23 and 151 also in there as well. So that's Sebastian Clark and Rian Townsend, who's had a difficult day as well. They're at the back of the field looking to charge. And I think uh, Hayden Fisher got away in the midfield somewhere. We'll have a look when they come back around at the end of the first lap. But none of that will be bothering the number 57 of Finley Hines. Hines leading, and it's a fight for second place here as they make their way over the line. Side by side, the number 40 of Jensen Sale, 85, Benjamin Lawn. Noah Moulton in there as well, That's, who's had a great start here. Number 28, Akil Nangioni, who's had a difficult start today in the heat races, but coming good in the final so far. The um, number 28... 42 recovering well there, Hayden Fisher up to 8th position now behind Max Wheatley who has been one of the informed drivers fighting his way through the field now. Wheatley having to really fight back here as uh, we've seen the number 12 there, Finley Hines though leading the way, number 57, the gap just under half a second between him and Jensen Sale in 2nd place, 54, driver looking at there, Noah Moulton fending off the number 40 of Jensen Sale, all very close in this fight for second position, so 85 now up to 2nd place now, Benjamin Lorne trying to close up on the race leader of Finley Hines, there's the number 128 in there as well we're at 28 of course on the uh, timing charts there, that's uh, Kilnan Gioni still there in 7th place, Hayden Fisher Max Wheatley's moved up to 6th position look out for the number 12, as he looks to fight his way towards the front, he's got past the number 31 of Ollie Thompson who's giving chase but uh, Thompson drops down to 6th uh, position, Wheatley up to 5th and Max Wheatley trying to get involved in this fight for the lead, Ollie Thompson in there as well there's number 54 then Noah Moulton who's dropped the position, coming under pressure now from Max Wheatley as they make their way out to the final corner, still headed by number 57 Finley Hines here they come, born just under 5 on the clock as they make their way down to the first corner, going for the pass there, number 85 Benjamin Lorne has he made the move stick as they make their way through Max Wheatley going through but no Finley Hines back into the lead here they come back towards the Derrick's corner Line of Stern as they make their way through no one going for a pass there as they make their way through the chicane possibly lining themselves up for the Dan Weldon corner at the top of the course here Hines still leading Lorne in second so Jensen Sale Max Wheatley in there as well here they come down towards the uh, Kim Bolton corner down the inside goes the number 40 of Sale makes the move stick on 85 and a nice move there from Wheatley out of the corner side by side down the straight the rest of the top 10 making their way through still Finley Hines that leads the way Max Wheatley parks the cart down the inside as he goes to the pass on the number 85 of Benjamin Lorne and he has made the move stick so Wheatley into third Hines leading the way although coming under some real pressure from Jensen Sale Max Wheatley, as you can see on your graphic, fastest lap of the race, 44.19, number 12. The driver now in third place as they make their way down towards the Kestrel corner. Still headed by Finley Hines, 57. Hines out to the final corner, then we've got Jensen Sale keeping the pressure on. Max Wheatley starting to look threatening in third place. Is he going to go down the inside? No one going for the pass as they make their way through into Stowe corner still quite a bit of way to go in this race three minutes plus one lap remaining nothing at all between the top three drivers and everyone just biding their time Wheatley with another fastest lap of the race 44.18 as uh, Sale goes to the pass there going into Derek's corner couldn't quite pull it off but remains in second place Wheatley just playing it cool in third position not looking to risk things just yet because he's still got Benjamin Lorne just behind him in fourth place number 85 Noah Moulton and Ollie Thompson not too far behind here they come 
down towards the bottom corner and Wheatley goes for the move into second place Max Wheatley into second position Finley Hines continues to lead the way and Wheatley having a peek down the inside goes for the move makes it stick and look at number 40 in second there Jensen Sale trying to follow into second position but loses ground Finley Hines recovers into second place but Max Wheatley has taken the lead with 2.14 yellow flags further behind there on the um, Stowe corner we're thinking nothing too serious out there the race still goes on a warning flag for Max Wheatley incidentally the new race leader so there must have been some contact out there that the stewards not happy with just going to throw a warning out to him when he makes his way through with 150 on the clock although he is in the lead now so he should be able to try and just control the race from the front over the line they go so it's Wheatley that leads Hines in second, Sale in third, Lorne in fourth, all very close, there is the number 40 of Jensen Sale, trying to put the earlier race leader Finley Hines under pressure, number 57. Then we've got Benjamin Lorne, Noah Moulton, Ollie Thompson, not too far behind. They make their way through Derek's corner, and Wheatley trying to break away with 1 minute 24 left on the clock. In towards the Dan Weldon corner goes Max Wheatley, your race leader. So it's Wheatley still leading, Hines in second, Sale, Lawn, Moulton in fifth place, Ollie Thompson, Hayden Fisher, Gioni in eighth position, White in ninth, and Oliver Barton rounding up the top ten from Sebastian Clark, Noah Jebson a bit further behind, Nathan Edwards, Rian Townsend in fourteenth, Ruben Jenkins and Alex Jokentius rounding out the field with one minute to go, plus one lap remaining, and it is still Max Wheatley that leads the way, just pulling a small gap of six tenths of a second out there, and 43.88 setting the fastest lap of the race Finley Hines still charging hard in second place there he is number 57 from number 40 Jensen Sale Sale trying to find an opening as he makes his way out to the Dan Weldon corner is anything going as he makes his way towards Kestrel corner just backing off the rear of the machine although Finley Hines has the line covered as he makes his way down towards Kim Bolton corner Going for the switchback there though, number 40, Jensen Sale, as they make their way down towards Stowe Corner. Wheatley still leads, Hines in second. Sale having a look, but nothing going as they make their way through. Back towards the leader there, number 12, carrying the speed quite heavily through the uh, willows there. Max Wheatley looking very strong at the front of the field, the fight's still on for second place. With Finley Hines, Jensen Sale and Benjamin Lorne all right in there. And there is number 57, Finley Hines. Still closely followed by Jensen Sale. Just a small gap, a little bit further behind there. The gap, the battle further down the field. Uh, Gioni, Jensen, White, Oliver Barton, Sebastian Clark all fighting away at the edge of the top ten. Meanwhile, the last lap of this fourth round of the championship gets underway. And Max Wheatley controlling the race at the front. A fight on for second place here, though. As Jensen Sale has a peek down the inside of Finley Hines. Can't quite find a way through. Jensen Sale and Benjamin Lorne in there as well. Noah Moulton, Hayden Fisher not too far behind. But at the moment, Max Wheatley controlling this race. He's fought his way through to the front. Now making his way up towards the Dan Weldon corner. And down the straight he goes for the final time. T came straight into Kestrel corner. The fight on still on for second place though with... Finley Hines holding on to that second place. One last look though for Jensen Sale as they make their way around the final corner. But Max Wheatley crosses the line to take the chequered flag. Final race win of the day. Great drive there for Wheatley. It's Hines in second place. Jensen Sale in third. Benjamin Lorne. Noah Moulton in fifth place. Hayden Fisher. Kim Langione in seventh. Ollie Thompson, Sebastian Clark. And Oliver Barton rounding out the top ten. From Jensen White in 11th position. Noah Jebson in 12th. Rian Townsend. Nathan Edwards, Ruben Jenkins. And Alex Kinchkiss making his way through as the final driver on track. There he goes over the line, number 15, to round out the 16 driver field. But a great finish there for Max Wheatley and a fantastic performance to bring this fourth round of the Hunts Kart Racing Club Championships here at Kim Bolton to a close. Thanks, of course, to all of our sponsors. Next round of the championship is on June the 9th, and so tune in here on TNL Sports. So from me, Chris Sora, it's been a fantastic day and we'll see you in June.